This man was thrown into a desert with a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius but was warned by the temperature alert system that the temperature would rise at a rate of zero. 2 degrees Celsius per minute he slowly stood up and at that moment the system displayed a notification saying he had been cooked to a third of the extent just like that. His back was scorched and his flesh torn by the hot sand but he was more curious about how he ended up there so he began to look around only to see nothing but dilapidated buildings he quickly discovered an old ruin. The notification system informed him that it was a public toilet with a history of 700 years. Rated three and a half stars in terms of danger by an authoritative organization. A rare find indeed although the composting toilet had long lost its function. But the average distress signal interference was present. There was a creature hiding in this ancient toilet. The danger level of this malicious monster this made him even more certain that he had been transmitted here and the pop-up window system was perhaps intended for time travelers with paths seeming fraught with danger. If he couldn't find a water source he would die. He hesitated choosing a direction. Bingo there was a water source ahead. He tried to stand up but suddenly realized that his hands were handcuffed. What about these handcuffs could it be that he was transmitted here as a criminal? His gaze stopped on the handcuffs for only three seconds. Then immediately more information appeared on the system indicating that outside were handcuffs. But in reality it is a monitoring device of the upper class. Next the system suggests that breaking the handcuffs would take a lot of time. The important thing now is to find a water source. The man knew his situation was very dangerous but he didn't have much time left. He could only bet whether this path had water or not. Meanwhile on the fourth floor of the tower. The Mont survival struggle was being broadcast live. Many nobles cursed. They had bet a thousand gold that the man would die but he was still surviving after several dozen minutes. The green zone was originally an extreme tropical world. But surprisingly the man showed no signs of suffering. Meanwhile as he walked he counted the time and began to link the keywords in his memory about the upper class. About monsters and about being monitored so the place he was in was probably just a survival bed among the upper class. Even the man had walked for nearly 50 minutes which means that the temperature had risen above 70 degrees Celsius suddenly. The man suddenly heard the sound of water splashing ahead. He scooped up a little water with his hand to try. Unexpectedly at such a high temperature the water was still icy cold. This means that the initial temperature of the groundwater was very low. So it had not had time to warm up therefore he began to quicken his pace. At last he found the entrance to the sewage drain at the bend. However the manhole cover seemed to have been blown off. But he didn't think much. A kick to dislodge the manhole cover now was the only way out of here. That is to climb down and find the way to the tower. At this moment the man involuntarily smirked. This was clearly a bet. Certainly some tycoons of this world were watching him. So in front of everyone's eyes. He raised his middle finger with a mocking smile. Indeed this scene caused quite a shock on the fourth floor of the tower. Immediately an angry tycoon smashed his wine glass. Thinking that this man was an actor hired by the casino owner. At the VIP stand. A woman wearing a copper mask reproached the other party for not checking the origins of the goods properly. The other side frightened explained that the goods were indeed from a beggar from the lower tier. With no special abilities whatsoever. After the phone call an old man with silver hair bowed his head and sighed continuously. Immediately ordered his subordinates to disguise as a demon to create a fake death for him. Making the tycoons believe that it was a demon who killed him. Meanwhile the man in armor before them possessed a 2-4 segment strength chain. His talent was ironclad armament 755. The silver-haired old man still reminded him to always control his emotions. Otherwise those creatures would smell the negativity and attack him like mad. The man tried his best to reach the teleportation spot outside the tower. He knew that even if he died, he couldn't let that bastard survive. Since childhood the man had lacked the ability to empathize emotionally. Even if the opponent threw a brick at him, he would not be afraid not even blinking. Even when attending his biological father's funeral, he never shed a tear. The mont's name was Bok Vu. A special police officer of the administrative team. Although he continuously solved serial murder cases. In the eyes of his colleagues he was always seen as a weirdo. Until the night they caught a suspect. The criminal pulled out a gun and shot dead Bok Vu who was standing in front. That's why he came to this world. Wow I didn't expect a beggar to be so handsome.
It's really unfair I want to have a sword fight with you. I am not interested Bok Vu continued along the tunnel. Thanks to his excellent analytical ability. He knew that no matter what kind of bet it was there were always people in control. He continued to walk a little further. Suddenly he heard footsteps ahead. Bok Vu sneered the guests have arrived. Meanwhile a man fully armored was approaching Bok Vu. Bok Vu was now hiding behind a corner of the wall. Silent but the system indicated that this person was cautious and suspicious. So as the man was about to reach the corner. Bok Vu's voice resonated through the pipe someone with a level 2 strength chain. Why are you moving so slowly section 4 steel armed? Could it be you're using Indian time? The footsteps of the man paused for about a second. Then hastened as Bok Vu continued to tease I guess you're wondering how I know about your talent aren't you? The man stopped walking again. Clearly his thought process had been disrupted Bok Vu laughed maniacally in such a dire environment. How can a beggar survive for so long? Don't you find it strange I bet many people wish for my death. That's why you were sent to kill me. But if a beggar survives to the end. And mocks everyone. Wouldn't the show be more intriguing. That's why you are the pitiful one arranged to be here. Upon hearing this fear welled up inside the man. And Bok Vu leisurely stepped out from behind the corner. The monster on his head had clearly smelled the scent of negative emotions. It crawled slowly towards the man ahead. A moment later the evil torment opened its massive bloody mouth, charging at the man who couldn't react in time. His body was torn apart as the mouth bit down fiercely. He kept screaming in excruciating agony. But the evil torment focused on tearing him to pieces. Fifteen minutes later the evil torment was sated and satisfied. The blood of the man dyed the area red. When the evil torment let go of the corpse Bok Vu leisurely approached the man. After searching him he found a disc the size of a palm. The system reported it was a device to return to the city. From whence you came return you shall but right as Bok Vu was about to leave. A dialogue window kept popping up the level of exploration increased by 4. 5 the number of evil torments remaining is 35. The apocalypse piece in this area is still not obtained. Bok Vu slipped out of the handcuffs. Smiled and then twisted the device to return. Wondering if the inside of the tower is more interesting. Really looking forward to it quickly the figure of Bok Vu disappeared on the spot. The scene switched to Camp 7 of the survey team outside the tower. A member hurriedly ran to report the name Bok Vu. Age unclear estimated 1819. Gender male at this time the team leader of Team 7 named County Tan Nok. Nickname New Ku was cleaning his weapon. He suddenly stopped furrowed his brow and asked is it over already. The team leader of Team 13 beside him named Lu Mo immediately laughed and leaned back your Team 7 has really fallen deep into the abyss. Ha 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 the interrogation head bowed weakly and explained that no matter what tricks were used on that kid. He always pointed out the weaknesses of the interrogation methods. In the end we became the ones being questioned. Hearing this Lu Mo was startled damn. What the hell did you guys catch? Ko Tan Nok's face immediately darkened. What exactly did he ask in the end? The interrogation head answered sincerely he asked very strange questions. For example how many floors does the tower have? How are the evil torments born? What is the power sequence what is the talent sequence? Questions a three year old would know. But he acts as if he doesn't know. Hearing this Lu Mo eagerly said this kid is really interesting. I am short staffed send him over to me. Ko Tan Nok thought he wanted to recruit him as an interrogator. And said isn't this like using a cleaver to kill a chicken? Lu Mo scoffed it seems you also pay quite a bit of attention to that kid. Ko Tan Nok recounted that five months ago. There was a usurer who came to report a debtor who owed him a large sum of money had disappeared. And it seemed that disappearances were not uncommon. Lu Mo was very puzzled this matter was completely out of his jurisdiction. Why get involved again County Tan Nok coldly said how could those noble tycoons possibly care about the lives of the poor. Here status determines everything. Only those above the third floor are considered masters. That's why I started investigating. Until I found a gambling case. It was a betting event organized by a casino owner on the fourth floor. Bringing the poor into the green zone. Upon hearing this Lu Mo was horrified what the hell are they doing? Are they insane County Tan Nok explained that perhaps the white area was no longer stimulating enough. Then he waved at the interrogation head saying only the extreme tropical world and the mutant torments in the green area could satisfy them to the maximum. 
Next, the screen displayed the image of Bok Vu. Ko Tan Nok said this tiny character had broken their perfect algorithm. Surviving nearly two hours outside the tower without attracting any torment. And even killing the assassin sent by the casino owner. After concluding, I received a mysterious phone call from a woman. Her voice sounded very young. Lu Mo was very curious. Do the people on the fourth floor always look down on our investigative team? But why not ask the military to protect the tower for help? At this point, County Tan Nok began to doubt the purpose of that woman. It was clear that she wanted me to save Bok Vu before the casino owner took action. Then he asked Lu Mo, right? Your interrogation skills are very good, aren't they? Why don't you answer him yourself? Lu Mo laughed heartily, fine, I will see what kind of fairy tale character he is. Ko Tan Nok said to himself, such a fine blade needs to be well preserved. 700 years ago, the world where humans lived welcomed the apocalypse. The environment also began to change rapidly. Creatures called the calamities kept emerging. Humanity faced unprecedented trials. But fortunately a tower suddenly appeared before everyone's eyes. Bringing the last hope of survival for mankind. No one knew about its past. Nor did anyone know the reason for its appearance. But in the decades that followed. Humans unexpectedly discovered the power to resist the calamities the chain of strength. This power could significantly enhance human aspects such as speed and physicality. The strength chain has nothing to do with training. To enhance it one must leave the tower. Simply put the longer one survives outside of the tower the more powerful the strength chain becomes. The objects on us also change when outside of the tower. The longer the time the stronger the effect. We collectively call that spiritual seals. The sequence of innate talent is again a tremendous capability. Currently it is known there are 1024 types. And the earlier the position the rarer and stronger they are. But most people are ordinary. Falling within the range of 1000 to 700. Those from 500 and above like County Tun Nok and Lumo. Are super members of the entire team. As of now the strongest warrior of the investigative team is County Tun Nok. Who has survived alone for 24 days in the green zone outside the tower. Even the Tower Defense Corps which greatly respects the tower guards on regular days has often extended an olive branch. Hoping that County Tan Nok would join the tower guards. Of course in this apocalyptic world status decides everything. Both the tower guards and the tower investigation team are established by the ruling class of the fifth floor. While the tower guards are all descendants of nobles. Therefore they never care about the lives of ordinary people. And they often refer to our investigative team as the refugee investigation team. After hearing the girl's introduction. Bok Vu had a preliminary understanding of this world. Actually this world encourages everyone to leave the tower. Only then can they become stronger. The female warrior excitedly said that the strength chain of Ko Tan Nok has reached a terrifying level. He is one of the few who can confront high level evil spirits directly. Right at that moment Lu Mo burst in. The two warriors were slightly surprised why is it you Lu Mo? Why have you come here Lu Mo didn't say much. Just ordered the two to leave first. While interrogating Bok Vu calmly swayed the glass of water in his hand. Like an emotional insulator. Lu Mo sat down with a flop let's hear it kid. It'll be straight with you before he could finish. Bok Vu interrupted I want to join your team. Lu Mo was taken aback the unexpected dialogue left him unable to react in time. Seeing no reaction from him Bok Vu continued it's just that I won't be joining your team. I want to stay here hearing this. Lu Mo eagerly responded wait wait how do you know about me? Bok Vu then explained that the interrogation showed they were unclear about my identity. Moreover you didn't eliminate me. Means you are not with those who threw me out of the tower. Because we are not enemies. This tedious interrogation. As well as my actions outside the tower. Apart from wanting to recruit me to join. Seem to have no other reason. Ultimately from the reaction of the two interrogators. Your coming here was completely unexpected to them. So you are not their team captain. Moreover your shield must have been damaged. Unexpectedly even spirit seals can be damaged. It seems the evil spirit you confronted is much stronger than the one you had encountered before. Lu Mo suddenly forgot his original purpose. And kept asking as per Bok Vu's words how do you know I use a shield? You have a scar 3 centimeters away from your wrist joint. It can be inferred that the evil spirit attacked aiming at a weak spot. As the captain of the investigative team. Your strength is surely not bad. 
Your body's healing ability also far exceeds that of a normal person. Inside the tower it's also hard for anyone to leave a scar on your hand. Moreover there's no reason to do so. The wrist joint of a normal person usually protrudes. But yours is the opposite only those who frequently hold shields have this characteristic. That the shield leaving a scar also proves it was damaged. Lu Mo immediately broke into a cold sweat. Even forgetting what he came here for. Bok Vu pointed out when you raised your hand to cover your face. The strike of the evil would accurately pierce three centimeters below the wrist joint. At this point Lu Mo clenched his fist tightly. Angry inside determined to capture this kid for team 13. Bok Vu pointed to the document the talent sequence chart that you introduced only starts from word 700. Now I need the complete chart. If you help me get it maybe I will. Before he could finish Bok Vu looked up and Lu Mo had disappeared. At this moment Lu Mo was hurrying back to the document room hurry up. Someone bring me the full talent chart. 15 minutes later Lu Mo returned to the interrogation room panting. You seem to lack basic knowledge about the tower. Bok Vu said I have amnesia. Lu Mo was stunned by your performance. You could certainly find a better reason. But Bok Vu said you'd best believe that those who captured me. Might have brutally erased my memories during the cleanup for convenience. Lu Mo replied that's fine but first I must declare. The person holding the highest talent below the third floor. The top person is County Tan Nok. Sequence 256 Extreme Shadow has not seen any new sequence ranked before it for a long time. You can look at talent sequence 76 Absolute Dissolution. That's the case of a miner from the lower floors who accidentally awakened more than 20 years ago. His life can be said to have gone from the bottom to the peak. But Bok Vu was not envious. He straightforwardly concluded I guess the end of that person was not good. Lu Mo also did not hide that's right. That miner did not only disappear. But the story was also quickly suppressed. The tower town and the core. Along with the total commander of the core at that time were all not proactive in investigating the incident. But blurred the information about that person. Bok Vu's gaze stopped at talent sequence 24 thunderous eye after focusing the gaze. One could see the notes and explanations hidden in the character. The upgrade notes were unclear Bok Vu just realized the dialogue windows he saw were not from the system but were his own awakened talent. But why does his body have such a high ranking sequence? The origin of this thunderous eye must be related to some extremely important news but having just arrived in this world. He could not yet investigate. Does the style of the notes match the hidden aspect of my character? Is my hidden side so petty? Looking at the increase in the power sequence to see. It does not seem like I have ever been outside the tower. Then he asked if this agency requires a check on the talent sequence. Lu Mo said talent sequence is personal property. Many people keep it secret and never reveal it. Bok Vu sighed in relief that's good news. He still had another question which is. A person's talent sequence can only be of one type right. That's right there can only be one but according to the legend of the sixth floor. It's also possible by killing some extremely strong evils. To receive another talent. But these types of evils even if they truly exist one should pray they never encounter them. Bok Vu also silently agreed because his strength was not suitable for fighting. Although it could also be upgraded. The chances are high that the upgraded talents are also not suitable for fighting. He must think of a way to get out of the tower to find some other talents. Lu Mo stood up and approached. I say little brother you can keep this chart. As for the intention to join that team then. Sorry you are a good person but I want to stay with team number 7. Lu Mo was extremely shocked after hearing that. Why is that in the 3 hours of interrogation before? I learned that squad 7 is the most frequently outside the tower among the 24 squads. But isn't it because squad 7 has already convinced you? And you want to go outside the tower. I will assign you to our squad 13's vanguard team. If you don't want that you can go to the interrogation squad. Every request you make is interrupted by a sigh. You are still single aren't you? You even know about this. Bok Vu when going out remember to choose someone who has a natural affinity with you. Like someone who definitely cannot operate on away ground. You lost because you made the first move squad 7. Moreover there's more hum 13 as an unlucky number. Lu Mo was petrified on the spot the scene shifts to the elevator. Bok Vu threw the fingerprint check before you had no citizen ID and no identity. But now that you have joined our team, 
A citizen identity from the bottom floor is certainly indispensable. Besides that, we have arranged accommodation for you. Of course, the rent has to be paid by you. The system announcement, you know. It's like many role playing games. In the newbie village, one might encounter an extremely strong NPC. This shorty, only 1 meter 59 tall, is roughly like that. There is a very interesting secret on him. Ah,、oh, forgot to introduce myself. My name is County Tan Nok. You can call me Captain. Nguyen Tian steps forward and says, "That's enough, new Ku." Ko Tan Nok turns his head and glares. His face turning pale. Surely these two have revealed my nickname. At that moment, Bok Vu says, "I have a small request." Ko Tan Nok seems to understand. Says, "It's okay. You don't have to go out and interrogate." Anyway, recently there have also been quite a few cases accumulated. But before he could finish, Bok Vu interrupts, "I want to go out of the tower tomorrow." The three people are stunned for a few seconds. Ko Tan Nok turns around and coldly says, "We have once checked your strength chain in the green zone for less than two hours. Currently at level one, phase three, but even at level one, facing a mild mutant scourge is also dangerous." Bok Vu interrupts again, "If you want to remind me that outside the tower is very dangerous, I won't be holding anyone back. It's possible to leave it to a veteran in the team. I am not committing suicide. Moreover, I think you also don't really want me to stay in the tower, right?" Ko Tan Nok frowns. All right. At 10 a.m. tomorrow, I will go with four people from Group One, including you, making a total of six people to the white area. Bok Vu takes the opportunity to ask further. Right. What else is there in the green area? The two people behind immediately show annoyance. This kid really doesn't know anything. At the lower area of the smuggling tower. Don't wait any longer. Captain Bok Vu has gone to prepare the necessary procedures. We will lead you to your accommodation first, and take the opportunity to hang out a bit too. Your belongings have been delivered to your place. Just that the clothes have been delivered to you in advance. So for now, wear this coat first. On the way, if you like something, just buy it. The captain has left some money in the coat pocket. Bok Vu puts on the coat, and the three of them walk down the street. This road in front is called the smuggling port. You can buy various kinds of goods, but remember not to trust the merchant's words. Thinking you can buy spirit binding items. At that moment, a man holding an iron shovel is live streaming an advertisement in a room, while loudly peddling this shovel, also called the God Mine Shovel. Spirit binding 17 hours outside the tower. You can mine good ore that others can't get even after a month of digging. If you don't join the investigation team, this miraculous item must surely be kept for oneself. Now, for just 998 tower coins, you can own it. Order now and get an additional discount of 300. Van Tu immediately stares in astonishment. The investigation team doesn't have this kind of person. He dares to deceive in the name of the investigation team. We can't let him tarnish the reputation of our investigation team. Let's go back and report to the captain, exposing everything about him. Seeing this, Bok Vu tells Tiet Tu to follow as well. If Van Tu gets angry, at least there should be someone to hold her back. So Tiet Tu also follows. Before leaving, he entrusts his backpack and money to Bok Vu, telling him to wander around the area. After roaming half of the smuggling port, finally Bok Vu stops in front of a store named. Half an hour later, Bok Vu returns to his residence carrying bags of various sizes he has bought. He finds a box and a piece of paper left by Ko Tan Nok on the table. He opens the box and reads the instructions carefully. We will equip newcomers out of the tower with an emotion watch. When your emotions fluctuate too much, the watch will alert all members of the investigation team to comply with the rules. Activate the teleportation turntable as soon as the watch sounds the alarm for the first time. Bok Vu puts on the watch. He thinks that this out of tower response mechanism is very well designed. The only thing is the number on the watch face always displays zero. It seems completely useless to him. Then he picks up a tube of emotion stabilizing medication with suppressants. When approaching the evil close enough, and the watch's hand points to the danger zone, this medication can be injected. The drug does not paralyze muscles. It will make the user enter a state of emotionlessness for about five minutes. After five minutes, the suppressive effect ends. Emotions will become excited. All negative emotions will be amplified. Therefore, except in compulsory situations, this drug should not be used after reading about the Polaris Eye. Bok Vu immediately injects the tube of medication into his right neck. After that, he sits on the chair, silently counting. 
waiting for the emotional reaction after five minutes. He recalls the most painful memory of his past life, but there's still not the slightest stir in his heart. He has not felt what is called sorrow and anger for a long time. 300 seconds pass quickly, but he still doesn't feel any emotion. There is absolutely no emotional reaction effect. He doesn't feel any excitement at all. Just a bit of sleepiness. I should have gone to sleep earlier, I should nt have had any expectations. The next morning, Bok Vu arrives early at the meeting point with Ko Tan Nok and the other members. In front of them is a rock that can be moved to the outside. The Polaris Eye reports that these rocks have the power to open up space. But in reality, they are to prevent that guy at the top of the tower. Bok Vu is slightly curious which guy. The Polaris Eye does not reveal any further information. The stakes involved are too great speaking of it would not be good for either of us. Just pretend you don't know and think nothing of it. Ko Tan Nok leads several veteran members over. This is the new soldier joining us for today's tower exploration. Introduce yourselves a strong man leading us Ta Vong the. Are you the brother who prepared the spiritual talismans in the backpack? This guy is from a wealthy third tier family. Who joined the exploration team just for a new experience? Though a strong man he likes collecting Barbie dolls. Bok Vu replies that's right. I plan to take them out of the tower to see if there's any luck. But the long-haired guy next to him coldly sneers don't drag your feet huh. Rookie I hope that this day next year won't be the day of your death anniversary. Anyway I am not acquainted with you. If you died I wouldn't bother to visit. He is a second floor resident more handsome than a girl. His words sharp as a knife or perhaps you try to conquer him. Bok Vu intentionally responds I only know how to cling to legs not how to drag them. But girl you are truly too beautiful. Lam Vo Nhu mutters this little brat. What the hell are you saying at this time? A bashful guy speaks up hello everyone. My name is Thuong Tiu At. She looks like a little girl but fights the most fiercely among them. Often dragged back to the tower by the captain for overkilling. Bok Vu friendly extends his hand to greet when suddenly a beautiful girl appears. She pushes Thuong Tiu at a side and grabs Bok Vu's hand. This girl named Don Suong is a revenger. Like a dwarf she also harbors the secret of the sixth floor within her body. Originating from the second floor she is the most ordinary among them. Bok Vu ponders the secret of the sixth floor has been mentioned twice. Wonder if it is a rare gift. After the introduction Don Suong turns away. Bok Vu asks a group of six people. Isn't there one more person missing? Ko Tan Nok pats his shoulder and coldly says he's already dead. You worry about yourself Bok Vu does not ask further. To him all members of Team 7 are evildoers. Ko Tan Nok starts walking towards the tower's entrance. The vanguard team is about to return. Get ready to depart immediately the investigation team's main task is to survey the areas. Ensuring there are enough green herbs. Mineral energy and a few evils for the tower. Then arrange for a large number of the poor to enter and exploit labor in those areas. At this moment Team Captain County Tan Nok walks slowly towards the White Rock. When his hand touches the rock. Immediately a sequence of numbers appears at the top of the left grid. Ko Tan Nok's figure is quickly swallowed by the white light. The remaining members also step into the light one by one. At this moment Don Suong stops. Once again checking the watch and the rotating disc with Bok Vu. Then explains in detail about the grid next to the teleportation gate. Each time someone departs the number automatically increases. Bok Vu begins to enter the 7 digit series. Meaning that in the past 700 years. The number of times leaving the tower has been over a million. Quickly his body begins to disintegrate. After a few seconds when Bok Vu opens his eyes. An abandoned hospital appears before his eyes. He and the other 5 people stand in the hospital courtyard. All are standing outside the hospital fence. Mental hospital number 9 if not entering the hospital. The difficulty level will be as expected. But once inside it's unpredictable. Who knows how many negative emotions a mental patient might harbor. This is a breeding ground for evils I naturally do not want you to go inside. But inside hold secrets that only you can decipher. After reading the notes of the Eye of Fu Loi, Bok Vu begins to guess that the mystery here might relate to the apocalypse piece. Vu the laughs heartily thinking that inside must be very interesting. Thuong Tiu at speaks tremblingly there are many evils inside. I am a bit scared Bok Vu glances at his watch. 
The fluctuation wave is at zero. This kid is really a good actor. At this moment, County、e、Tan Nock looks at the document. The temperature is quite comfortable, about 46 degrees Celsius. 46 degrees is called comfortable. They are really monsters, Bok Vu thinks to himself. Don Suong observes the surroundings. There is no green grass or minerals nearby. Perhaps it's an area near the city. Behind there is only this road. After hearing the report, Vu the is exuberantly excited. Go on and see this kind of scene is usually only in the green zone. Bok Vu from behind softly reminds, "Be careful. The movements must be gentle." But Lam Vo N H U immediately mocks, "You're as timid as a mouse. If you're scared, just go back. Don't cause the evils to appear." Unable to bear it any longer, the team leader steps forward. All right, let me open the door. He pushes the iron gates of the hospital carefully. Quickly, they discover four medical buildings, each about 19 stories high. Vu the asks, "This isn't a low-level hospital, is it?" Which of the four buildings should we explore first? Bok Vu scans the hospital. It seems we can only enter through the first building. On the outside, there are four buildings, but in reality, there is only one way in. The rest are completely sealed off. If you want to go to the second building, you have to go up to the 19th floor of Building One. Looking down from the high corridor, it's really like that. Lam Vo N H U coldly laughs. That's somewhat useful. Bok Vu guesses that the violation of the design must have a reason. Perhaps the hospital owner doesn't want anyone going to the second building. Thuong Tiu, at with trembling hands, tells the team leader this building has seventeen evils. It's truly terrifying. This kid is acting again, clearly suppressing his excitement. Ko Tan Nock orders to be on guard. Now enter the first floor. Then six people push the large door of the first floor of the hospital. Inside, it's filthy and chaotic beyond words. Blood is smeared all over the walls of the registration room. Some walls are covered with strange red blood writings. Bok Vu curiously approaches that wall, touches the blood stains with his hand. These blood stains and characters look very cruel. They seem to have not been old for long. He asks Fu Lois I if he sees anything, but only receives an incooperative refusal. However, I can tell you that these blood stains and medical records were created two days ago. On Vu the side, because there are too many rooms, he doesn't know where to start looking. Ko Tan Nock turns his head to look at Bok Vu. What do you think? Bok Vu says there are many rooms. Searching floor by floor might find some information you need. The deepest secret is in Building Four. Lam Vo N H U scolds a newcomer can say whatever he wants. What secret? Where Bok Vu sighs. I only explain once. Next time, please listen to me immediately. Don Suong, standing beside, suddenly realizes this guy is a bit domineering. But County、e、Tan Nock doesn't care about those words. Tells him to carry on. Bok Vu, explain everybody, pay attention. The first building ahead has an entrance. If the last building's patients need emergency care, they have to go from the fourth floor across. If you sequentially go through the buildings in front and reach the first building, then have to go up to the nineteenth floor to reach a certain floor. Then clearly, it's not built for saving people. Not long after, it's also discovered that this hospital structure is truly abnormal. Bok Vu continues, so this place is more like a prison. Just guard the only way out. Prisoners would not be able to escape. Thus, it can be seen that Building Four is the core secret of the entire hospital. At this moment, Thuong Tiu at trembles and points at the elevator door. Captain, that elevator is operating automatically. Indeed, the elevator indicator light suddenly turns on. Floor number nineteen is moving down. Ko Tan Nock orders to be on guard, ready to strike. Thuong Tiu at runs his fingers through his hair and laughs heartily. It seems there's no need to search randomly anymore. Bok Vu curiously asks County、e、Tan Nock, "The outside world has been abandoned for seven hundred years. The buildings of this city must have collapsed long ago. Why is the equipment still functioning normally?" Ko Tan Nock is also not very sure. Previously, we also visited some areas. For instance, the carousel in the park sometimes starts automatically. The Ferris wheel also spins on its own. The rules outside the tower are very strange. Not just the automated space alone. Bok Vu doesn't delve further into these unexplainable phenomena. Quickly, when the number above the elevator door changes to one, the elevator door opens. Vong the hastily pulls back Thuong Tiu at who is eager. At the same time, as the elevator door slowly opens, a grotesque and ugly creature appears. It has a human shape but a very deformed head. 
Its mouth directly morphs into a sharp proboscis like that of a mosquito. The demon used its brutal strength to tear the elevator door apart. Then lunges to attack County Tan Nok. Who stands closest to it but County Tan Nok leisurely draws his sword out. Accompanied by a strong gust of wind. The demon's head is severed and rolls to the feet of Bok Vu. The sword has a level of 190 spirit grade. Capable of causing weakening and armor breaking upon touching the demon. Of course this effect is only for fighting low level ones. Against the strong mutated demons one must rely on the skills of the swordsman. Bok Vu remembers that County Tan Nok once set a record for surviving 24 days outside the tower. And this sword has perhaps been mastered since the fifth day. At this moment County Tan Nok Vong the and the others headed towards the elevator. But Bok Vu did not hurry to follow. He observed the demon carefully. First he picked up the demon's head from the ground. Then leisurely placed it back onto the demon's neck. The demon's skin was cracked and the mouth had transformed into a sharp mosquito-like proboscis. Although it still had four limbs the arms were no longer arms but resembled claws. Bok Vu lifted its clothes and Fa Loi who was complaining said. Are you just going to grope around like that? Even though the demon wasn't human wasn't it a bit too much? Bok Vu felt around and noticed nothing protruding or indented. It seemed like it had degenerated unnecessary parts. During the search he found a fragment of a diary within the demon. The author due to a massive debt was tricked into going to mental hospital number 9. Now he just wanted to escape. He feared he would turn into like the girl on the 11th floor. Afraid of being transferred to building 2. From the tears and folds on the diary's corners. Bok Vu could guess that the doctors had hastily grabbed this diary and torn this page out to hide it. It's 2026 now it's the year 704 of the tower era. How long it has been he doesn't know but there's some rule protecting it. There are many items in this world. Even this diary seems to have not been destroyed after 700 years. Lam Vo Nhu impatiently called out to the fool. It's been so long everyone is waiting for you. Bok Vu stepped into the elevator and said go to the 11th floor. Ko Tan Nok was extremely surprised why the 11th floor. Bok Vu took out that diary the danger level on the floors above might exceed your expectations. The 11th floor conceals a stronger evil force. Which might help us prepare in advance. At the same time we might find some useful information. Having said that he pressed the button for the 11th floor directly. Lam Vo Nhu argued back it's just the white zone after all. No matter how strong there's a limit. Bok Vu smiled indeed if we don't enter this hospital there won't be danger. But I advise you to be careful. The 11th floor is very dangerous and it quickly arrives. The elevator door opened to a dark corridor. As they stepped out of the elevator. A terrifying laugh suddenly rang out are you guys here to play with me? I am right here the voice conveyed longing and pleading. Like a whisper in the ear. Bok Vu analyzed inwardly. The voice sounded like a little girl but also like an adult. Like two voices of different ages and emotions combined together. Right then the ceiling suddenly started leaking a pitch black liquid. Directly aimed at Don Suong's shoulder. When she looked up an overly long black arm reached down towards Don Suong. Ko Tan Nok appeared in front of her just in time. And calmly cut off the arm. Rookie stay as calm as possible. While saying this the ceiling continuously extended many black arms. It seems someone among you has let their emotions fluctuate. Causing this monster to appear. Moreover its level is not low. Why can't the captain cut it down immediately? At this moment Lam Vo Nhu's watch reads 11. Vu the as 9 Thuong Tiu at eagerly looks on. With a number of 7 Don Suong as the one with the greatest emotional fluctuation among them. With a number of 21 Ko Tan Nok continues to cut fiercely but the arms seem endless. He looks at the watch numbered 3 and says hurry up. Don't get carried away while at it. Bok Vu stands waiting in the middle of the corridor. Forgotten by the monster that keeps extending arms. He glances at the watch numbered 0 and yawns deeply. So boring I am getting sleepy the man who is 15 meters tall county Tan Nok can kill the evil spirit with one strike. But this time he encountered a rather rare evil spirit. These arms seem endless. Although the team is strong their response is a bit hasty. Lam Vo Nhu cannot afford to be unoccupied. But she is astonished to see that the foolish non-combatant guy is not attacked. Bok Vu rubs his eyes the little girl's voice just now seems to have the ability to influence emotions. 
But I am sleepy Thuong Tiu at is stunned what a monster. The number zero watch Hub Bok Vu can't wait for you guys to handle it. Il go ahead to scout but County Tan Nok doesn't allow him to wander around. Says to wait once they're done they will move together. Bok Vu looks up at the ceiling fearing that until they calm down. Those arms will still keep sprouting. Il go ahead to see if I can deal with the source. You guys follow behind Vu the is extremely indignant captain. Where did you find this monster? Ko Tan Nok frowns it's dangerous but Il follow behind. He's right we can't drag this on. Explaining that if his emotional fluctuation is only in the single digits. Then perhaps he truly has a natural talent. But if it's zero then either the emotion control meter is faulty. Or he has a problem meanwhile. Indifferent to the obstruction. Bok Vu steps into the room heavy with evil spirits. Bok Vu begins to focus his vision on the cage used for imprisonment. It has served its purpose well as a cage for confinement. From start to finish that poor girl couldn't escape. Until she was unfortunately released. His gaze then focuses on the chain lock. Which is also an object used for confinement. On the ground are many used syringes. Once containing tranquilizers and various strange substances. He observes around again. But the eye of Fa Loy warns him not to look randomly. The documents in the room have been destroyed. The room owner has also been released thanks to the imprisoned person. Now he should focus on the desk that used to contain many secrets ahead. It's one of the few things not destroyed in that girl's sight. Leaving the choice to those who come after. These three items will bring him three things the talent the friendship sequence the hatred of that girl consider carefully. Because choosing one out of the three will make the other two disappear. This is a file storing many details that he and company Tan Nok want to know. However when meeting that girl it will increase something for him friendship. Hatred or talent it's up to him to decide. This key isn't for the cage. It can unlock a pivotal place. It may be a shortcut or it could be an abyss. Choose carefully after reading the hint from the eye of Faloi. Bok Vu is considering the archives that I and company Tan Nok are interested in. Surely it's the historical truth. It may contain clues about a part of the historical truth. And this key has no hints at all. That is also very noteworthy. Perhaps it opens some door. Behind which may contain important clues. Just as Bok Vu is hesitating. The eye of Fa Loi unexpectedly warns that there's also this moment. Brain explosion haha you are also a person who loves to collect complete archives huh? He sighs and rubs his head really missing his past life. The system announces ha ha. A friendly reminder here. Like drawing lots the sign above is after meeting the demon. One will have a completely new sequence of gifts. The middle sign comes from the goodwill of the evil affliction. The lower sign is being hated and pursued to death by the evil path. Although it should be more appropriate for it to hate humans. I think so finally everything outside is finished. The emotional fluctuation level of everyone has decreased. The team leader ordered everyone to move towards the room to search for Bok Vu. Just then the door they had entered suddenly opened on its own. Bok Vu was forced to choose. Based on the information gathered. It can be confirmed that these last two rooms are laboratories. Besides what was seen the original laboratory had many other instruments but they had been destroyed. The test subjects were usually kept in cages. And all their actions were monitored. The experimental process involved injecting some substances. Observing the reactions this experiment might be related to the evil affliction. During that process the test subjects had been visited by someone. Or had come into contact with the consciousness of another. At that time his consciousness might not have been resentment yet. At this moment Lam Vo Nhu and everyone else had also completely calmed down. They approach this room's door how's your investigation going? Why is the room's door closed like this? Why isn't the kid responding at all? Team leader it's not that he died in the room is it? Bok Vu deduced based on information from the evil affliction on the first floor. The evil affliction died on the first floor before turning into the evil affliction. Perhaps they had never met each other because the hospital would not allow those monsters to meet. The system wonders how such an inference is possible. But the piece of paper mentions an experiment subject here. It's possible that he used his consciousness to communicate with someone else. Clearly it's a secret among the different experiment subjects. The evil affliction on the first floor once feared being transferred to the second floor. Indeed he was transferred. From this it can be deduced that the evil affliction on the second floor is stronger than on the first floor. 
At least it has the ability to attack with resentment energy. Or possesses some kind of superpower. When the experiment is successful, they will be collectively transferred to the second floor. As the man was about to step in, suddenly countless black arms burst forth from underfoot. Ko Tan Nok quickly appeared behind Lam Vo Nhu, slashing through all the black arms. But the unexpected event caused everyone's emotions to start fluctuating. Countless black arms swiftly surged out. Meanwhile, Bok Vu's gaze focused on the clueless comb. From the piece of paper of the evil affliction on the first floor, it can be confirmed that the experiment subject is female. But the question is why there is a comb in this environment. Bok Vu asks the Eye of Fu Lei doubtfully if he is sure that this comb has no information. But the Eye of Fu Lei emphasizes that this comb really has no information. On the other side, Don Suong is the one attacked the most by the evil affliction. Her watch count has reached 72 Vong that continuously charges to fight with the resentment energy. Why has the resentment energy suddenly become so heavy? Could it be that the evil affliction entity is approaching? Lam Vo Nhu suspects that Bok Vu has encountered the evil affliction entity in the room. He immediately orders Thang Thuong Tiu at to scout for the evil affliction's location. But at this moment Thang Thuong Tiu at is bursting into hysterical laughter. His face distorted with excitement. Completely oblivious to the conversation. Ko Tan Nok reaches into his sword bag. Getting ready to charge forward to clear the way. Pull the kid out and then retreat. His already extremely fast speed seems to increase even more. But just at that moment the door handle suddenly turns. This forces County Tan Nok who was charging with full speed to stop abruptly. Simultaneously the black arms behind also dissipate. At this moment Bok Vu steps out of the laboratory with a calm face. Everyone anxious scolds him for not making any sound making them extremely worried. Bok Vu holding the comb says nonchalantly waited too long. Let's go to the 19th floor Thang Thuong Tiu at no longer looking frantic. Asks why the resentment energy suddenly disappeared. Lam Vo Nhu can't believe it where is the evil affliction in the room. Could it be that you've dealt with it already? Bok Vu says he has temporarily controlled the source. They might meet again after this building no longer has value to explore. Bok Vu leads the formation towards the elevator. The members of the group look perplexed. Especially Lam Vo Nhu who glances with a look of disdain. While Vong the seems very happy. Thang Thuong Tiu at is still excited. Don Suong slowly regulates her breathing. Lowering the watch count to a manageable level. The elevator slowly ascends to the 19th floor. Without waiting for everyone to ask Bok Vu addresses the captain first. I have a question is the evil affliction a transformation from humans? Could it be that we too will turn into evil afflictions if we stay outside the tower for too long? As soon as he finishes speaking the whole group turns their heads to look at him. After a moment of silence County Tan Nok explains look at your watch. The dangerous path is 75 the limit of the emotional watch is 300. Have you noticed the color of the numbers on the watch face? Before 75 it's blue after 75 it's orange. And 175 is red he says up to this point. Ko Tan Nok doesn't continue because the elevator has reached the 19th floor. Although County Tan Nok doesn't finish his sentence. Bok Vu understands the implication if too much negative emotion accumulates. When the needle of the watch climbs to that range, it's possible that humans will transform into evil afflictions. In short, in a state of extreme anger, humans can be considered as evil afflictions. The corridor of the 19th floor of the patient building now has its windows sealed and turned into an old area. Inside its pitch dark county Tan Nok is forced to turn on the flashlight. Thang Thuong Tiu at searches around. Noticing that Thang Thuong Tiu at's whole body emits a blue light. Quickly sensing six evil afflictions outside the door. Higher level than the evil afflictions just killed. Before he could finish County Tan Nok interrupts. Telling Bok Vu to stand still and wait for orders. Then he draws his sword and pushes the door open slowly. The two evil afflictions closest to the door sense the movement. Turn their heads at this moment Bok Vu curiously asks the captain is it always like this. Vong the nods although I am at the forefront. The captain always charges ahead. But don't worry so far we have not encountered any evil afflictions the captain couldn't handle. Anyway he has always managed to escape. In that brief exchange of dialogue.
Ko Tan Nak had already sliced the two evil afflictions in front of him in half. Bok Vu realizes that County Tan Nak's speed is much faster than the other members. He asks Vong Ni about the direction of the power chain development is it different for each person. But Vong Ni says it's the same. Every level up is complemented by additional skills to expand strengths. The Fa Loi I suggests exactly like skill points in a game. Clearly Vong Ni enhances attack power and survivability. Lam Vo Nhu balances speed and attack power. Thuong Tiu at is for perception and attack power. As for Don Suong even the Fa Loi I can't make it out. It's strange but she's definitely not from the vitality boosting line. Apart from Vong the entire group focuses on attack without considering defense. Too risky what kind of game is played without support players. But Bok Vu has only just begun to think a little. When he sees County Tan Nak has already killed all the evil afflictions. He walks past the corpses to observe them. Level 3 evil afflictions with sharp scythe hands can cut through ordinary metal. But with the sword of Ko Tan Nak they have no opponent. They are the protectors of hospital number 9. After the dean was eaten. They only take orders from that girl. So before entering building 2. Bok Vu comes up with another question captain wait a moment. The evil afflictions of building 1 are no match for him. As long as we control our emotions. The evil spirits of building 2 won't be able to sense us. So why don't we stay outside the hanging tower wouldn't that allow us to become stronger quickly. Lam Vo Nhu sneers because you are new here that's why you ask such a question. The outside world is pushing us out of the tower. Every 4 hours additional side effects kick in. Like reduced speed slower reflexes. Emotional instability increased hallucinations. Decreased attack power reduced resistance to evil spirits. Or fear of light fear of darkness. I can't list all the negative effects. Because each time we go out they appear randomly. So it's not possible to stay out to grow stronger. Bok Vu nods in understanding a side effect every 4 hours really means you can't stay out. Now I understand the strength of our captain. 24 days in the green zone means 6 effects per day. Over 100 negative states. Still fighting the evil spirits as Bok Vu walks down the middle of the corridor. The Fa Loi I warns not to try to go around building 2. You must go down to the bottom of building 2 to get the key. Otherwise even if you go through the corridor you can't enter building 3. A friendly piece of advice as if a mischievous little thing swallows it. You may still use the power of Ko Tan Nak the dwarf to get through. But I suggest using the comb to activate a more abundant reward. Right then in a dark corner. A strange voice whispered welcome to my arena. Good heavens why would the captain use that thing. Rookie be careful this is a lamp with petrifying and slowing effects. The Medusa lamp all non-human creatures it illuminates. Will be slowed by level 40 although the light is not strong. But it's enough to clearly light up the entire top floor of building 2. At this time Don Suwang asks since the sky corridor is on the top floor. Can we not explore the lower floors? And go straight through the corridor of the top floor of building 2 to get to buildings 3 and 4. Bok Vu replied that the suggestion is correct. But unfortunately the key to building 3 is right here. It's best not to regard this as a white zone. Vu the is somewhat skeptical how do you know the key to building 3 is here. Although being careful isn't bad. We should still go over there to check it out should NT we. At this moment County Tan Nok leading the way stopped. Touched the wall next to him and realized that the door to building 3 is an unbreakable rule of the realm. The rules of the world outside the tower are truly strange. Ordinarily scenery can be destroyed. But as for the key locations you can't use the power chain. At this point Thuong Tiu had eagerly pressed the elevator button but there was no response. This building is very proud the owner didn't want to install an elevator so it pretends to have one. Moreover looking at the sign above. This is not the 19th floor but floor 0. Below you is negative first floor. Although you don't understand feng shui you surely know that this structure implies the hell level. Very bad the target you're looking for is at the very bottom of hell. Moreover you can't go straight down to the bottom of hell. Without an elevator you can only go down one floor at a time. Prolonging the exploration time. It's strange that they only went down one staircase. After turning the corner they didn't see the staircase continue down anymore. Ko Tan Nok thinks that the stairs up must be at the end of the corridor. 
This structure is designed to force one to pass through each corridor before being able to go up to the next level. At this moment Lam Vo Nhu discovered that they just came down from the 19th floor but suddenly it became negative first floor. Not only that you didn't notice one thing. That is it's completely dark here. If it weren't for the team leader's light it would be almost absolute darkness. Moreover around are the scattered corpses of the damned. But there are no intact bodies. It's as if something had devoured the flesh. This scene gives the feeling that someone has conducted a mad experiment here. Thuong Tiu it began to pretend to panic team leader. When going down the stairs I kept feeling an evil presence getting closer to us. It's the first time I've encountered an aura like this. It's truly terrifying Vong that thinks that the target is probably on even lower levels. We can feel it. Which means it can also feel us. At this time Bok Vu stopped in front of room 12. The eye of Fa Lei immediately displayed the text even though I am just your lover. But with a camera you can see more clearly. I and it are both your right hands. Picking up lost items is good but are you sure you want to give the camera to someone else? Bok Vu suddenly understood a camera huh? He took out a normal camera from the backpack. But it was mocked by Lam Vo Nhu as a stupid kid. I tell you very few items can be spirit possessed. Perhaps out of a hundred times not even one is successful. Fool don't carry so many things. It's very cumbersome when trying to escape. Bok Vu paid no attention just staring intently at the camera. At that moment the text changed all although this spirit possessed object is not as expected. But it can still help you if you continue to stay outside the tower. Maybe it will have additional functions. Now silently recite in your heart 202707021411525. Then direct it towards room 13 for a surprise. However, it can only be used twice in 7 days. Bok Vu guessed the actual number as a date 202772-1415. The flash startled Vong the. All technology outside of the tower loses its effect right. The fact the camera works means it can record images. Lam Vo Nhu coldly questioned what information a picture could provide. Bok Vu glanced at the photo it seems the camera might be able to capture images from the past. A young man as if staring intently into the lens. With a cruel gaze and an extremely terrifying demeanor. After viewing Bok Vu immediately asked the team leader. Do you think a high level evil spirit would possess intelligence? But County Tan Nok said only a few evil spirits retain some human traits. Such as language it's extremely rare for evil spirits to retain thoughts. One might say they are evolved humans. Bok Vu said the young man in the photo is very likely the guardian of the last floor. According to the team leader that is perhaps a very high level evil spirit. The reason they haven't encountered any evil spirits is because he has devoured them all already. Right then a giant spider suddenly roared above everyone's heads. On its head was still stuck half a human body. Ko Tan Nok placed his hand on the sword hilt and shouted a high level demon has appeared. Prepare for battle and leapt to slash at the demon. But the demon just leaned back to easily avoid the attack. Then it raised its scythe-like claws high and slammed them down hard onto the ground. Immediately the ground in front of it shattered. Vong the saw the floor collapse and shouted to Bao Don Suong and the others to back off. But Bok Vu couldn't avoid it and fell directly down. Damn it you can't fight at all. We're about to die in this critical situation. Ko Tan Nok took a risk and jumped down. Stretched out his hand and shouted to Bok Vu quickly grab my hand. Thus both of them fell in front of everyone's eyes. Bok Vu fainted amid the rubble. The eye of Thor displayed the message that the enemy is in front of you yet you lie there sleeping. How brave of you Bok Vu is slowly standing up my dear friend. Finally you are awake now. Do you realize if you keep lying there sleeping like this. We could be reincarnated right away. If it weren't for County Tan Nok's rescue. We would have been minced meat by now. At this moment County Tan Nok was carefully examining the surroundings as I checked. This is probably the last floor. The structure is completely different from the upper floors. The hole opens up into a single space. Except for the support pillars which can be said to be very rudimentary. Hey look according to my experience. A battle with at least 10 different types of demons has taken place here. But only the wall with the number 12 has no signs of battle. As if it was deliberately avoided. I suspect something strange here is related to the number 12. Indeed the captain has made a quick discovery. 
This is a number 12 fanatic he calls himself the 12th inner disciple. So he is very fond of this number Bach Vu pondered deeply after reading the clue from the Eye of Thor. The twelfth inner disciple Hu the inner disciple corresponds to the master. Meaning there's a teacher character existing. The ceiling structure is unstable. Be careful above your head Bach Vu turned back to look at the ceiling. An iron box suddenly fell from above. Ko Tan Nok said stuff from the upper floor falling down. This building is also not as solid as it looks. Bok Vu looked closely and realized it was the door to the 17th floor. After swallowing the spider on the 16th floor, number 12 was able to control them with spider silk. Now not only is it the most perfect creature, number 12 also has 23 obedient slave names. They are my trump cards. 23 trump cards can you defeat me? If you kill me I will immediately swallow the key to building 3. Bok Vu chuckled softly he even gives such a red flag warning. The outcome of the battle is clear now. The hint is not information about the room, but the thoughts of the demon living in the room at that time. Could number 12 be the one in the picture? Bok Vu closed his eyes and synthesized thoughts from the previous diary. The incident at the psychiatric hospital happened in 2026. At that time humans had not entered the tower. Perhaps County Tan Nok and everyone else were also unclear about the history before the tower era. Quickly he imagined the scene in the negative floors of number 12's hell most floors were both prison. And an arena where many monsters lived. Some were created some were sent by a masked man from the city. They fiercely fought only the strongest monster had the right to go down to the next floor. Bok Vu pushed the door open the feeling about this hospital was like the setting before the tower era. The hints on the door further reinforced his conjecture. On negative floor 3 number 12 I have swallowed all the premonitions of death. His feeling of impending death is very useful to me. About to go down to floor 4 hoping to meet an interesting opponent. Bok Vu imagines a scene where both sides are the doors of each floor. On negative floor 4 number 12 will not die. I have avoided all the deaths that I have sensed in advance. But the food on this floor is not tasty at all. They are not even worthy of me eating them. On negative floor 6 number 12 he 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 finally met an interesting opponent. Out of respect I will eat him cleanly. Leaving not a fragment on negative floor 9. Number 12 I can feel that no one is my opponent anymore. The director is afraid of me the dean is afraid of me too. But I am very obedient. I will pretend to obey them until I swallow all the monsters. On negative floor 10 number 12 indeed I am the strongest. On negative floor 13 number 12 the farther from the light the closer to the truth that my master spoke of. I am about to become the perfect creature. When I escape I will be the strongest weapon of my master. Tearing that tower apart on negative floor 14. Number 12 it cannot be it cannot be that I have lost. He is just trash from another place. How can he compare with a genius like me? I will swallow it Bok Vu contemplates. Realizing that the turning point appears on negative floor 14. It seems that the girl from floor 11 has been transferred to building 2. To create the ultimate monster. Number 12 has surpassed everything to floor 14. But his winning streak was ended by the girl temporarily transferred from building 1. How interesting the final boss of building 4 who once defeated number 12 of building 2 is here. On negative floor 15 number 12 with one hand two hands. 3 hands 4 hands 5 hands 6 hands. 7 hands 8 hands countless hands. About 8000 characters have been omitted here. Bok Vu guesses that this is one of the girl's attack techniques. Turning grudges into countless arms. The walls and doors of the room are unscathed. Perhaps the battle ended too quickly. Bok Vu sneers it seems number 12 was beaten into autism. He was once so arrogant. Facing a truly terrifying opponent he immediately became autistic. On negative floor 16 number 12 so it's not that I am weak. It's just that I haven't had time to swallow enough food. Floor 16 still has a lot of interesting food. As long as we have them we can surely defeat him. Because my pain is greater than his. Bok Vu thinks this is a boy who has been destroyed. The text content is very consistent with the frenzy of the kid. Combined with the hint on the door of room 12 on floor 17. It can be seen that the pitiful number 12 once again failed at the hands of the girl. His faith has completely collapsed. After that the girl who defeated him was perhaps transferred to a deeper place. Therefore not only has the girl become an obsession. 
The ghost that constantly haunts him he can't even boast to his master. Thinking so Bok Vu says to County Tan Nok the team leader. I have fully understood the meaning of number 12. The number 12 here refers to the 12th high level evil spirit. Which is the spider we just encountered. Remember the photo that evil spirit is the teenager in the picture. This entire hospital was once a place for researching and creating that kind of high level evil spirit. They fight here as a challenge. That's why the upper floors have so many evil spirit corpses. As for building 2 it's simply an arena for selecting high level evil spirits. Ko Tan Nok continues to ask so does that mean that 12 high level evil spirits were created here? Bok Vu replies at least 12. The eye of Fa Loi appears again no no no. It must be said that the master whom Elijah admires fervently has at least 12 high level evil spirits under his wing. Not created here. And it seems like that master is plotting something big. Ko Tan Nok is worried it's really troublesome. High level evil spirits are not something we can deal with. We must quickly find a way to regroup. Go see if there's a way up around here. At this moment a huge shadow suddenly swoops down from above. A high level evolved evil spirit is stalking and observing them. Ko Tan Nok immediately senses a murderous aura approaching. He passes the Medusa lamp to Bok Vu. Then places his hand on the hilt of his sword not expecting them to follow so quickly. It seems that regrouping will have to be postponed. In the darkness countless strange eyes are lurking around the two of them. Ko Tan Nok warns Bok Vu to be careful. Don't stand too close or too far from me. You might try using the Medusa lamp to slow down the evil spirits. But don't have too much hope. It's ineffective against high level evil spirits. At this moment the eye of Fa Loi appears that's right. The Medusa lamp doesn't work on those big guys at all. At most it can only cause a slowing effect. Moreover those evil spirits are not ordinary. Even calling them evil spirits is not quite accurate. If one had to explain they are things that once were evil spirits. At this moment the hand of a high level evil spirit begins to stiffen. Clenching into a fist of iron and punching straight towards County Tan Nok and Bok Vu. Almost simultaneously County Tan Nok draws his sword. Leaps up and swiftly slashes the stone-like arm of the evil spirit into countless fragments. Without waiting for the evil spirit to react County Tan Nok immediately activates his innate talent sequence Extreme Shadow. His speed surges only to see in the air countless sword shadows and afterimages of Ko Tan Nok rapidly slicing the evil spirit into small pieces. That is Extreme Shadow simply moving extremely fast to create afterimage illusions. Although the opponent is a high level evil spirit it cannot compare with Ko Tan Nok. Do not stand by emotionlessly watching the fight alone. These creatures are quite different from those mixed breeds. Having read the suggestion of the Eye of Fa Loi, Bok Vu immediately realizes these are the evil spirits eaten by number 12. Now they are just like a child with depression during puberty. Or it could be said they are summoned beasts. But instead of reacting based on emotions. They are like automated robots with simple spinal reflexes. Because they should not even have bodies. Only been created from thin air by him. At this moment Bok Vu is sitting next to study the body part of the evil spirit. But the eye of Fa Loi tells him to be aware that there are a total of three monsters here. I advise you to retreat immediately. Having read the suggestion Bok Vu immediately turns back. At this moment a high level shiny black evil spirit suddenly lunges to attack stealthily. Bok Vu holding the Medusa lamp runs forward. Creates a distance then lifts the lamp to shine. But the evil spirit is not affected at all. Continues to charge forward seeing this Bok Vu again dodges skillfully. But at this moment the evil spirit suddenly stops. Its body emitting a faint light. A high probability spatial danger sensor detects an attack within seconds. Ko Tan Nok immediately swings his sword to strike. But the evil spirit sensing the danger in advance. Steps back to dodge the lethal blow. However its shoulder is still grazed by a shallow cut. The wounded evil spirit quickly disappears into the darkness. Ko Tan Nok regrets that he let it go. Unexpectedly there are evil spirits that can hide in the darkness. Bok Vu says kill that big one captain. He'll find a way to deal with this one. Ko Tan Nok asks are you sure? Bok Vu replies I've figured out how to counter it. As for the other monster without a weapon I can't handle it. This is a high level evil spirit capable of spatial displacement. Its arm can disappear instantly. Replaced by a vortex. 
At this moment, the eye of Fu Loi reveals a warning of an impending wide-ranging overhead attack. It advises to quickly get away. Ko Tan Nok also realizes this at that moment, but before he can say anything, he grabs Bok Vu by the collar and throws him to one side before the giant fist of the evil spirit smashes down. Bok Vu's expression remains cold as he realizes that spatial displacement can also be used like this. Another troublesome ability. Meanwhile, that high-level evil spirit uses its spatial displacement ability to connect all its parts and attacks County Tan Nok from above. But County Tan Nok's speed is unimaginably fast. He rushes straight towards the evil spirit entity, dodging every subsequent attack. Ko Tan Nok stamps his foot down, draws his sword, and jumps up high, dividing into three segments, charging straight at the evil spirit's head. Ko Tan Nok coldly says, "Stop throwing your garbage flesh around." The sword pierces through, but the evil spirit's body dissolves like liquid. Then slowly reconstitutes. The spatial danger sensor detects that the weak point of the liquid creature is the heart of the eye. Information about the spatial shifting evil spirit appears in Bok Vu's eyes. But what's causing him even more of a headache now is that the evil spirit is still wandering around, not showing up even after a few minutes. The eye of Fu Loi warns of a potential attack from behind soon. Advising to dodge by leaning to the side, Bok Vu follows the instruction. But strangely, why does it keep targeting me? Could it be that there's something on me that triggers its defensive reflex? Bingo, you're indeed my good friend. Quick reaction there. So Bok Vu looks towards the Medusa light. Turns out what the evil spirit fears is indeed that. Indeed, there's no other choice. But the problem is how to win. After reading the information from the eye of Fu Loi. Bok Vu laughs and shouts towards County Tan Nok, not far away, Captain. Hearing this, County Tan Nok immediately stands up straight. At this moment, Bok Vu throws the Medusa light straight over. Its weakness is the eye. County Tan Nok immediately understands, grabs the light forcefully, and opens it, illuminating the area with a blinding light. The darkness is temporarily pushed back by the light. Bok Vu is inwardly pleased. What the lurking creature fears most is indeed the light. And under this light, the best hiding place is right under the light. Ten minutes ago, Vong Ni as the vanguard temporarily withstood the giant spider's attack, while Thuong Tiu at and Don Suong attacked from both sides. But when Thuong Tiu at thought he could take down the spider with one strike, the spider's arm hard as armor swung out quickly, easily blocking Thuong Tiu at's full force slash. Then it spat out a huge web from its mouth. Faced with this sudden situation. Don Suong's mind went blank. At the critical moment, a rope wrapped around her waist and pulled her away from danger. Lam Vo N H U coldly said, "Be careful. Don't get caught by the spider silk at this time." Thuong Tiu at sarcastically asked, "Why didn't you save me?" Lam Vo N H U replied, "Take care of yourself. It's fine." But just after a brief exchange, Lam Vo N H U suddenly felt a chill down his spine. The giant spider had circled behind him at some point. Fortunately, Vong the leapt in time, once again blocking the attack. At the same time, he also punched off one of the spider's legs. Elijah angrily said, "With just a few people, do you think you can defeat me? The one who had perfected so quickly." The arm resembling a snake behind him began to slither and move. Next, it stretched out strangely, attacking Vong the from tens of meters away. Lam Vo N H U immediately lashed out with a leather whip towards the snake's tail. Restraining it, and then Thuong Tiu at and Don Suong simultaneously rushed up to attack. Right after they chopped off Elijah's arm, but before they could rejoice, everyone was shocked by the next scene. Elijah calmly grew back a complete arm at the severed spot. Just give him a little time to breathe. He can continuously regenerate limbs. At this moment, Elijah laughed strangely, then struck the spider's abdomen behind him. In an instant, several strange objects were shot out from within. Lam Vo N H U immediately broke into a cold sweat. Damn it, for real! Just when the captain wasn't here, the strange objects began to crack open, releasing a lot of liquid and several ugly high-level demons. Everyone stood petrified on the spot, facing three high-level demons at once. On the other side, County Tan Nok smashed the Medusa lamp, creating a temporarily blinding light that illuminated the entire area. At this moment, the demons were quickly triggered to react by the light. Ko Tan Nok stood right at the center of the light, becoming the first target of its attack. 
The extreme shadow of Ko Tan Nok was once again activated. His speed surged in an instant. A sword strike from Ko Tan Nok had annihilated the lurking evil. At the same time, Ko Tan Nok also realized that the weakness of the space shifting evil was its eye. In the blink of an eye, County Tan Nok thrust his sword straight into the evil's eye with extreme speed. The eye of thunder couldn't help but sarcastically mock Bok Vu, you even calculated the short ones. How cruel at this moment, County Tan Nok coldly said, if it weren't for me. Others probably wouldn't have been able to react to that strike just now. Bok Vu replied, I know it's precisely because it's you that I was so decisive. Ko Tan Nok changed the subject, let's not talk about that anymore. Those few evils seem abnormal. They don't even leave behind a corpse when they die. Ko Tan Nok explained, they don't completely disappear. A trace still remains. These things are more like spider silk. Perhaps the few large evils just now were just abilities of the spider on the upper floor. They can't be considered true evils. Ko Tan Nok said what a hassle. If the summoned beings are already this strong then their original form must not be an opponent for Lam Vo Nhu and the person above. We must quickly go up and meet them. After annihilating the evil while the two were planning to meet the group the Eye of Thunder warned that a level 6 evil was rapidly approaching from above. At the same time Lam Vo Nhu and his friends were being chased by many high-level evils to the brink of the collapsing floor. Bok Vu looked up. His face still calm telling County Tan Nok they're here already. Instantly four people dubbed down from the sky. Bringing along four evils in pursuit. The extreme shadow of Ko Tan Nok disappeared from its original place. He used his shadow extreme talent to rush towards Lam Vo Nhu and Wang the. Lam Vo Nhu immediately understood snapped his leather strap towards County Tan Nok then threw him towards Wang the who was jumping down. Seeing County Tan Nok landing stepping on Wang Ni's arm for a boost. He charged straight at the four high-level evils. At this moment County Tan Nok slowly drew his sword. His speed unimaginably fast to the naked eye only several afterimages quickly flitted among the four high-level evils. In the blink of an eye the ones in pursuit were chopped into pieces. The flawless spatial formation and this seamless coordination were truly a sight to behold. After finishing County Tan Nok landed. Seeing that there were still spider silks scattered around. It proves that those evils are also just summons. Suddenly an extremely terrifying face appeared behind him. So it's you who is the master of them. As soon as he finished speaking County Tan Nok reacted instantly. Turning around and swinging his sword towards Elijah. Wang the shouted a warning captain be careful. This one is very strong estimated strength equivalent to a level 5 evil. Elijah became even more excited I've said they are so weak they don't deserve to be my toys. But you are quite good yet County Tan Nok remained calm. He stomped hard on the ground and used his sword to move quickly among Elijah's spider legs. Finally under Elijah's horrified gaze. Ko Tan Nok chopped off his arm. Purple blood sprayed out profusely but his expression did not show pain. Instead he laughed maniacally. Elijah grabbed County Tan Nok's ankle and slammed it hard on the floor. Mutation information iron beheading. Acid corrosion spider web imbued with toxins. Stretching of limbs extremely fast reflexes. Ko Tan Nok swallowed hard coldly. Never before had he been at such a disadvantage in the white zone. Quickly the severed arm of Elijah began to regenerate. Mutation information external limb restoration. Perfect he's blocked the eye of thunder Fuloy comments oh. This guy is so strong that he can fight on par with Elijah. No he even has the upper hand. So cool should we ask County Tan Nok to handle it with violence. In any case I also have to warn you. Killing him with your surprise method will cause that arrogant brat to lose a talent that you want like very much. At this moment Elijah's legs were continuously chopped off by Ko Tan Nok. But County Tan Nok was also repelled by a strong force. When another member stepped forward to support. Ko Tan Nok just coldly said it's okay. You guys don't come close then he continued to step forward. At this time Bok Vu stepped forward two steps captain let me deal with him. This man with no combat power was calmly walking towards a level 6 evil. Teammates immediately cursed under their breath at how fierce he was acting. Clearly seeking death with no knowledge of his own strength why charge in. Ko Tan Nok also stopped Bok Vu Lam Vo Nhu as right. Everyone prepare to fight Bok Vu.
step back but Bok Vu pressed down County Tan Nok's sword captain. I know what I am doing please let me handle it. Then turning to everyone everybody don't say anything. Try to appear as nonchalant and arrogant as possible. Take the usual captain's demeanor as a model. Ko Tan Nok immediately felt all the strange glances converging on him. He coldly asked what are you all looking at. Everyone quickly turned away nothing at all. Nothing at all Bok Vu continued regardless don't attack before the evil creature makes its move. Then he walked towards Elijah. Despite facing a disgusting creature assembled from various monsters. Bok Vu remained calm Elijah sneered so you are my next opponent. Whatever everyone is the same all are prey within the tower anyway. Having said that he thrust his giant claw into the floor next to Bok Vu. And then extended his serpentine arm to wrap tightly around Bok Vu. Who had no combat power. But Bok Vu strangely smiled my dear child. I am not from within the tower. Elijah suddenly widened his eyes. The arm that was about to tear Bok Vu apart suddenly stopped. Bok Vu smiled gently don't you remember anymore. You are my most precious perfect creation. A wonderful work of art. And the most obedient child of all my children. Upon hearing this Elijah unconsciously released his serpentine arm. The claws also retracted. The purple eyes of Elijah showed a moment of confusion and shimmered. He spoke stiffly you are the master. Elijah stared intently at Bok Vu. Trying to find something in the other's eyes. Bok Vu sneered jokingly. Don't be so gullible you're just a failed product. As a top TA evil creature Elijah felt no emotion from this man. In panic Elijah felt like his head was about to explode. You're not the master it can't be. If the master is still alive why haven't you visited me all this time? At this moment everyone standing behind was even more puzzled. How could just two sentences from Bok Vu make the evil creature collapse mentally like this? Even County Tan Nok didn't understand at all. Perhaps Bok Vu had grasped some information in the room earlier. But what was this familiar feeling about the dark power behind this? Bok Vu gently patted Elijah's claw. With a tone mixed with a bit of pity and disappointment. Do you think I was dead so you didn't come to see me? Perhaps I should visit you so it would remind myself that. You are a bigger failure than those at that hospital. They created a semi-successful product that is quite good. You are even more of a failure than a half success. That is a level 6 evil creature created from many types of monsters. But now in front of a man with no fighting power. Elijah could not stop the tears. I cannot accept a stain like you in my perfect life. These words seemed to stab into Elijah's heart. He went from anger to panic. Trying to justify for himself that it wasn't so. I am the most perfect work of the master. Bok Vu curled his lips his eye mocking as he clearly intended to poke at the other sore spot. Your character is really cruel. Bok Vu jumped down and walked towards the members and said do you know why I left you here? Because this place has things that can train you. But you have been a disappointment to me. This is why I intentionally came back to see you. You are afraid to face the girl in building 4. So in the end I have to clean up the aftermath myself. You are not only useless but also cause more trouble for me. On the other side Thuong Tiu had whispered to Lam Vo Nhu there is something not right. Why does he seem to understand the evil creature so well? As if he has seen through its soul. While this is the first time coming to the white zone right. Lam Vo Nhu's mind couldn't catch up for a moment staying silent. Too much information let me calm down first. Bok Vu continues to provoke Elijah during this time. Your admission of failure is irritating to me. Until now the tower still stands firm. I have created many children like you. But all are more capable than you. Excellently completing my mission. 1202 you will forever just be my stain. Elijah even hugged his head and wept bitterly apologizing to the master. Give me another chance I am not a failed product. Fa Lois I commented now it's over. You have completely destroyed the child's psyche. Pity but I am curious. How can you so accurately simulate the character and tone of the master like that? While we have no information about him at all. Bok Vu thought to himself I am just simulating the character of my father. From the hints on the door he analyzed Elijah's arrogant insecure honest and unloving personality. Along with mentions of the director and the master on the 9th and 13th floors. Elijah only pretends to obey but is fanatical about the master. Even wanting to become his weapon. From this it can be concluded that the evil in this hospital is divided into two factions. One side is the director of the mental hospital 9. 
The other is Elijah's mysterious master. He brought Elijah here because Elijah has the ability to absorb other evils to become stronger. Therefore the purpose of the mysterious master is perhaps to have Elijah pretend to be the evil of the hospital. Then use that guise to continuously devour the hospital's evils. Aiming for evolution but unfortunately. The hospital has created a more terrible monster. That is the little girl from the 11th floor three times in a row. She has overwhelmingly defeated Elijah. Elijah who was extremely self-deprecating gave up on himself and accepted that he's a failure. And I also have a strong intuition that I will meet Elijah's master. A truly evil entity. Somewhere thinking thus Bok Vu pulled out a comb from his pocket. Elijah recognized it immediately and screamed out master. Master have you destroyed it yet Bok Vu pretended to be kind my perfect plan ultimately failed unjustly because of you. But I have not given up on you. So I decided to go find you knowing you won't disappoint me again. This made Elijah extremely eager to prove his master's trust please give me another chance. I will definitely complete the master's mission. Bok Vu drew a large circle to create the perfect creature. We need a part of your body. Half the value of the artwork displayed in the museum comes from the public. The other half comes from history and the story behind it. To help it endure I also want to grant you that permanence. They become a part of you. Making you closer to perfection. I hope you also become a part of me. By my side forever your body will be immortal here. But before that you must escape from your own will. Elijah nodded continuously saying he was completely loyal. Yes master what should I do? Bok Vu whispered some instructions into Elijah's ear. Quickly Elijah's expression froze for a moment. Under Elijah's worshipful gaze. Bok Vu slowly stood up then left without looking back. Elijah curled up and then his bizarre body began to make crackling noises. It seemed like something was about to burst forth. The next moment four gigantic arms suddenly sprouted from Elijah's back. Laughing and crying crazily. Finally under the bewildered gaze of everyone. Elijah used those four arms to tear his own body apart. Half a minute later the lower jaws of everyone still dropped. Incredulous that Elijah had committed suicide. Meanwhile on Bok Vu's side. The eye of Fa Lei that appeared had annihilated Elijah. Receiving the gift 76 Thou Theot which could absorb the opponent's traits by devouring them. Additionally something had to be taken out from the belly of the evil calamity before proceeding to building 3. Lam Vo Nhu immediately asked wait a minute. What exactly is going on why did he commit suicide? What is your perfect plan? Who is the master county Tan Nok also really wants to know. Any dialogue developments require supportive data. So where do you get your data from? Bok Vu couldn't explain about the hint from the eye of Fa Lei and also didn't want to lie to anyone. He shook his head I've already told you. I only say it once from now on believe what I say. Don't ask for reasons anymore Vong the laughed loudly this is the first time I see an evil calamity committing suicide. It's also quite novel Thuong Tiu at wondered because the evil calamities we encountered before were just ordinary predators. At this moment Lam Vo Nhu reminded absolutely do not regard the evil calamity as human. That's a lesson from hundreds of years of venturing out of the tower. Bok Vu changed the subject back pointing at Vong the the matter of searching through the belly of that evil calamity. You seem the most suited for this task Vong the immediately pushed Lam Vo Nhu aside no way. Bok Vu has just arrived so he doesn't know. This job is more suited for this person. All one could see was Lam Vo Nhu coldly scoffing. Then he pulled out 11 different sized knives from his surgical belt surgery as an art. Don't think it's done with just a chainsaw. Unless you like blood splattering everywhere. These knives help you dissect the body as delicately as if you're eating French cuisine. But our girl is quite unlucky because this set of knives hasn't been spirit signed yet haha. Back to the main issue you must be very curious why the doors in this world can only be opened with a key. Think about it a bit and you'll understand. A friendly hint the events happening in this hospital are from before the era of the tower. So before the era of the tower. The hospital was still a normal hospital. But now the hospital is just a location outside the tower. And Ko Tan Nok once said that locations cannot be destroyed. It seems like the world outside the tower is limited by some strong rules. That's why the city is still intact after 700 years. The sewer system is still functioning. So this hospital after 700 years. The evil calamity inside still can't destroy it. 
Perhaps some doors in the world outside the tower also cannot be opened by force. One must find the key at this moment. Lam Vo Nhu has finished cleaning the knives. The dissection is complete. One could see all of Elijah's body parts neatly arranged. The internal organs, the arms behind. Then he produced a key. I have obtained the key. Can we go now quickly? Everyone walked through the sky corridor of building 2. Bok Vu recalled the story of Lu Mo. That the person with the talent number 75 disappeared after reaching the sixth floor. While the new talent I received is 76. And the eye of Polaris is talent number 24. For now it's best not to tell anyone. Suddenly County Tan Nok stopped in his tracks. Turned back to look at Bok Vu what's the matter. Bok Vu found an excuse I was just thinking. Why don't the evil spirits choose to leave this place? We can enter freely so it seems reasonable for them to leave as well. Ko Tan Nok answered no one knows the reason. At least the current documents on expeditions outside the tower do not mention a mass migration of evil spirits between regions. We can consider that a temporary constraint. Bok Vu somewhat understood a constraint. That may explain why Elijah did not leave. So the places that cannot be destroyed. The creatures within them also find it difficult to move to other locations. Ko Tan Nok continued but those constraints. If the cause is not found. Cannot be considered absolute laws. During the exploration one must maintain a high level of vigilance. At this moment Thuang Tiu it was perceptive. Discovering that building 3 seemed to have no evil spirits. Ko Tan Nok did not act hastily. Turning to ask for Bok Vu's opinion what do you think? Bok Vu looked towards the entrance of building 3 my previous guess was correct. Of the four buildings of the hospital. Only this one was a human dwelling. But they have all died leaving behind a lot of tasteless records. The alarm system poor girl began to take notice. It has left behind a few small puzzles in building 3. You have a talent that allows you to choose the moment to leave. At least you will not die or you can continue to delve deeper. Don't choose to go in right Bok Vu took it as a joke. With Ko Tan Nok here we will surely not be trapped. So he said open the door Lam Vo Nhu holding the key. Opening the door to building 3 at the end of the aerial corridor. There hung a sign that forbade entry. Bok Vu thought there was something mysterious. So he observed carefully but the suggestive content had no value. See I told you not to choose that. The sign forbidding entry had four words as an adult one knows to follow the rules. I trust you will respect the regulations. Bok Vu didn't care and went straight in. Because this is a floor for human habitation naturally building 3 has an elevator. They walked along the long corridor and the dining area. Then came to the elevator door the suggestion appeared again this is the first choice the girl left for you. The entire floor was filled with its resentment. Don't think this is just a small joke in building 1. I can suggest first go up to the third floor. After that it's up to you also pay attention to your friends. Getting lost on this floor you won't be able to return. Bok Vu was intrigued by the warning in the suggestion. The power of Ko Tan Nok was not so weak that he couldn't escape. But to go back one must use the turntable to return. Without that step. Naturally you won't be able to go back. Now the girl can't escape from building 4. He guessed the method of it. Then Bok Vu pressed the elevator to go up to the third floor. Lam Vo Nhu asked why go up to the third floor. Bok Vu said the clue is on this floor. Ko Tan Nok began to doubt feeling like he had been here before. That is not a conclusion that can be deduced. I need an explanation. Bok Vu also predicted that later there might be actions and choices that others cannot understand because of the suggestion. He said I don't like to explain much. But since the team captain earnestly asked I reluctantly tell. At the 11th floor of building 1 you guys heard the call of the evil spirit causing psychological fluctuations summoning its resentment. Meanwhile I went into that corner room. Then you continued to ask if it was indeed that room. Ko Tan Nok pointed at his wristwatch perhaps because my emotions were stable. So I heard a sound different from you guys. Immediately everyone's eyes widened. Ko Tan Nok frowned so in that room you discovered what? Bok Vu raised three fingers one question three choices a key. The file the comb the evil spirit's voice echoed in my head but I had to choose two out of those three. I chose the file and the comb Lam Vo Nhu wondered why not choose the key. And why not choose all three Bok Vu continued half truth half fake it's impossible. Because if you choose two things the remaining one disappears entirely. 
The reason for not choosing the key is because it unlocks the door to the outside of the tower. Regardless of good or bad, there are risks involved. Ko Tan Nok became more serious, so the information you knew afterward all came from that file. Bok Vu replied exactly the file recorded a lot of things, such as the setups in Building 2, some tactics in Building 3. I could talk to the evil spirit named Elijah thanks to knowing information about him from the file. Ko Tan Nok asked where the file is. Bok Vu answered the file disappeared right after I finished reading it. Only this comb remains but thinking back. After completing the mission, it will also disappear anyway Lam Vo Nhu anxiously wait. Wait you went in there not long but have memorized the entire contents of the file. Bok Vu laughed heartily remembered it all. If I am not mistaken we are the elites of the exploration team right? Memorizing after just one reading is the standard operation of our group. Isn't that right Lam Vo Nhu falls silent. The whole group falls silent on the third floor of the abandoned hospital building. On the walls everywhere are strange bloodstains. Ko Tan Nok stands at the elevator door. Asking if the file recorded anything else. Bok Vu answered the hint as to find clues on the third floor. Follow me closely don't stray from the formation. Ko Tan Nok glanced at him that's it. Bok Vu said of course there's more. But it'll tell when it's necessary to use them. Moreover a formation without blind spots requires everyone to have their own position. Everyone should do their part well. My position is the eyes of the observer. So don't doubt what I say. The habit of demanding explanations is very good. But it should end TB in a team that entrusts their lives to each other. Furthermore overlooking doubts will enhance team efficiency. As everyone stepped out of the elevator door, a gentle voice rang in Don Suang's ear are you looking for me? I am outside here come find me. I miss you so much the voice was enchanting. Like a long lost sister calling her. Only to see Don Suang turn around. But there was nothing behind her. She thought it was a hallucination due to psychological fluctuations. But when turning back Don Suang broke into a cold sweat upon finding herself in a long corridor. Without a trace of her teammates anywhere. The ground quickly began to ooze black gas. Then the smooth voice rose again have you come to play with me yet? Don Suang wanted to run but couldn't move. Even her breath was being stopped. Then a hand gently patted her shoulder. Don Suang immediately came to her senses. Panting she seemed to dreamily say to the captain that she heard a voice. Ko Tan Nok said Don Suang there is no voice. Take deep breaths to stabilize your emotions. Then tell everyone the moment you hear any voice you must speak up immediately. It might be a form of psychic attack. Vong Thi and Lam Vo Nhu also suffered psychic attacks at various levels. Bok Vu said the captain is right. Near the evil lair there won't only be physical attacks in building 1. Its forms of attack will be more diverse. Furthermore the archive room ahead may be just files. But absolutely do not read or you will be pulled into the patient's memories. Feeling what they went through. Vong the looked around so the most dangerous is still this building. If not for the information Bok Vu previewed, we would recklessly open various files that would be really dangerous. At this moment the eye of Polo appeared these are documents about evil experiments. Best not to open them carelessly because the girl has turned them into experiential records. Reading the files will experience the painful sensations that the experiments caused. Ko Tan Nok asked if these files are worth reading. Bok Vu replied this is also a part of history. Although it's on a micro scale the hospital researched evil afflictions. Even if it doesn't record their origins. The crazy experiment files might still reveal some research about the nature of evil afflictions. Hearing this Thuong Tiu at wondered what about that. The file says the clue is on the third floor but the clue can't be read. Lam Vo Nhu laughed and said only the bravest. The most indifferent can dare to open and read these medical records. There was someone who just proudly showed off their watch that's all. Right Bok Vu said lightly everyone just stand still. Don't wander around I will start reading the files. If you hear any noise be prepared to defend yourself. And try to stay as calm as possible. This is a file that records the process of becoming an evil affliction. Reading it will experience the painful sensation of becoming an experimental subject. Bok Vu began to read on day 742,025 the blood serum exchange experiment between Din Ku and at Luke encountered a malfunction. I and Dr. Lu decided to seek secret help. 
Before finishing the passage Bach Vu fell into a hallucination. The surroundings also began to change. Even though the director strictly forbade it we all knew his research on evil afflictions was far beyond us. But first I have to make Din Ku stronger so he would recognize me. Bok Vu realized he was lying motionless on a hospital bed. While a doctor was mixing something. He could not understand and simultaneously felt hot and cold in his body. It turned out these were the memories of an experimental subject in the file. Regrettably he could not feel the emotions of the evil affliction at that time so the information gathered was very limited. The scene changed again after the doctor injected him with a higher level evil affliction serum. Day 942,025 before meeting him. I really wanted to use my synthesis ability to give Din Ku the sense of smell of Bin Tu. But the damned secret serum made Din Ku grow scales. All my conclusions were wrong. The transformation into an evil affliction is completely unprincipled. Uncontrollable and in the end it's impossible to know what power turns them into evil afflictions. After reading this passage the evil affliction memories appeared again. This time Bok Vu felt anger and fear because of the scales growing. Continuously plucking the scales off his body. He tried to persuade himself not to pluck anymore. That growing scales wasn't scary. But clearly the consolation was ineffective. The other person continued to pluck scales from their hand. Because the reader is only in the memories of the owner. Feeling the same pain but unable to communicate with the person in the memory. Meanwhile Bok Vu has actually been deep in thought for a long time. Despite several flicks of the hand he still couldn't be awoken. Vong Ni immediately said to County Tan Nok he truly can't hear us. Lam Vo Nhu the team leader was interested. This young man is quite interesting. Where did you find him County Tan Nok spoke gently you guys still remember the survival betting case last time right? Lam Vo Nhu replied survival betting. Ah the one that the inspection team investigated. The one organized by those with power privately. Ko Tan Nok said exactly. And Bok Vu was a slave in that survival game. Everyone was shocked County Tan Nok continued that was the first time Bok Vu went outside the tower. This time is the second on the first occasion. He survived alone for nearly two hours in the green zone. And it was also an area with extremely high temperatures. Vong Ni's eyes widened the first time and he survived two hours in the extreme heat zone. Then he frowned not done yet. The bookie wanted Bok Vu to die quickly to make the betting more exciting so they even sent an assassin to kill him. But what's more surprising is that the assassin was emotionally provoked by Bok Vu's words. Causing the nearby evil spirits to smell him and kill him. Eventually Bok Vu snatched the return spinner from the assassin. Lam Vo Nhu was startled wait a minute. Why didn't the evil spirits kill him during the survival game? Could the assassin before not sense him? That was the extreme heat zone totally different from this deserted hospital. How could that normally be possible? Suddenly Don Suwang spoke up being able to survive in that environment and remain absolutely calm. Bok Vu might lack some emotions. That's the most reasonable explanation. Lam Vo Nhu wasn't too concerned with the explanation. Saying as long as he's not an antisocial element that's fine. This kid is a sharp weapon for our group already. Vong Ni asked but why didn't the nobility find him and cause trouble? Team leader how did you know his return point? I remember the investigation of the betting case on the fourth floor we searched and found no clues at all. Team leader County Tan Nok explained that at that time a woman called and informed me of some matters. Requesting me to find him before the bookies got to him. That's how I was able to save Bok Vu. Everyone was very curious about who that woman was. Ko Tan Nok continued speaking this case is still under investigation. There's no clear lead it can only be determined that she's a woman from either the third or fourth floor. At least a noble after returning to the tower I will ask Bok Vu. Meanwhile Bok Vu just woke up from the illusion. He overheard everyone discussing him so he listened quietly. Ko Tan Nok said seriously just lacking emotions isn't enough to survive in the extreme heat zone. The ability to utilize the surrounding environment. To find the most effective combat strategy for oneself. That's what I see in him. Thuong Tiu at strongly agreed that's right. That's right I feel Bok Vu is similar to me. Seemingly interested in evil spirits Lam Vo Nhu immediately objected not at all. You're completely just a homicidal maniac. Always thinking about killing. Moreover you use excitement to suppress fear. While Bok Vu doesn't feel fear at all. 
Vong the wondered if there's a possibility that one day, a noble lady comes asking us if we want this person or not. What should we do then? County Tan Nok remained calm, he's my person. Nobody can take Bok Vu after listening to the conversation. The corner of his mouth slightly raised and his eyes revealed a ha ha. You're really mean, clearly awake yet eavesdropping. Although they are not quite normal, the monsters also have their own cuteness. About 30 seconds later, Bok Vu finally closed the medical record. Then asked County Tan Nok how much time had normally passed. Ko Tan Nok replied 40 minutes already. Any findings? Bok Vu said there were some findings but they were not important. Still haven't found the key information. He will continue reading everyone just wait. Having said that he took another medical record from the rack. When Bok Vu opened it the hallucination continued to overwhelm him but he remained calm. Unshaken on day 622,027 Tet was approaching. The process of fitting the helical arm for Project A3 was largely completed. Next is to put it into testing. The earliest medical record dates back to the year 2023. Belonging to the period before the Tower era. At that time evil spirits appeared both inside and outside the city. This hospital wanted to research methods to control the evil spirits. Moreover some medical records also mentioned the existence of a mysterious figure. This person seemed to have profound knowledge. Solving many questions for the people in the hospital. Could this be Elijah's teacher? At that time the tower had not yet appeared. But Elijah mentioned him. Thus the two towers are definitely not the same tower. The current tower where workers reside is extremely huge. It couldn't have appeared suddenly like that. So where do the evil spirits come from and how did people come to the tower? Everything is still a mystery clearly this medical record has no useful information. Let's go look at another record book but right at that moment. Suddenly there were light footsteps behind. Although he couldn't turn his head. He guessed for sure that it was the girl from building 4 appearing. Bok Vu wanted to escape from the evil spirit's memories but couldn't. I have been noticed and now cannot move. The girl suddenly asked a strange question why need scales. Aren't you afraid you won't find a girlfriend? Bok Vu hesitated for a moment then laughed and said I was just kidding. I just think he doesn't need to be afraid. Sad about growing scales but the girl said you're lying. Bok Vu was very calm in an environment where you can do anything to me as you please. I have no reason to lie. My name is Bok Vu and you the girl did not answer. Just repeated the previous statement with an angry tone you're lying. Bok Vu wasn't at all scared the evil spirit although extremely radical was still human before. Every emotion has its own reason. He must find out the cause of the girl's anger. Perhaps he needs to be a bit more humble I am not lying. Although not meeting the doctor's expectations. But if in danger scales might help him live longer than others. Becoming ugly is inevitable. So at least don't let oneself become weak. Bok Vu silently thought he needed to find out the cause of the girl's anger. So he must put himself in the position of the girl a normal girl who has been brutally tortured. And finally became an evil spirit filled with hatred due to resentment. He can't be fooled by this harmless appearance. The girl could be a super evil spirit that even the team captain has to deal with carefully. In the archive on the third floor these medical records make the reader directly fall into the memories. Because the girl wants them to feel the pain of the experimental subjects. Bok Vu has found a solution. Without waiting for the girl to speak he took the initiative to attack you leave me with a choice question. Choose between the brief profile and the key. So in fact the profile does not exist right. As soon as Bok Vu finished speaking the scene in the memory started to distort. At the same time the entire real hospital also shook slightly. Bok Vu was delighted to have found the key in the illusion. The girl began to approach him. Asking why he chose the comb. Bok Vu lied that it was just intuition. Perhaps that is the key to the cage imprisoning her. The file records the hospital's cruel actions against her. All bring back bad memories. Of course not entirely excluding. A comb is not a torture instrument. Nor can it harm unlike the syringes on the floor. The surveillance cameras and shackles on the wall. Its existence here is too gentle. Irrational perhaps it never existed in that room. Perhaps as a child she once had a most beloved person. Who gently combed her hair and talked with her. Carefully protected and loved her. In the eyes of her grandmother she was an energetic grandchild. Obedient but now. She has been taken to be experimented on. Turned into a monster that everyone looks at in horror. When people encounter the inevitable. 
They will turn back to remember the beautiful memories. So I think perhaps the comb symbolizes a desire of hers. I don't know what you've been through. But I can feel from the previous medical records the inhumane torture. At that time, you must have felt extremely desperate. You remember the person who combed your hair, but that person never appeared. In this hospital, there's also no one like that. Only monsters and humans more cruel than monsters. The girl interrupted him still with that same phrase, but her tone clearly changed your lying. Bok Vu softly said, Lying. You think I just want to survive? Originally afraid that you'd think I made up those words. The attitude of humans towards evil cannot be unafraid like me. Not hateful, I came here not to kill, but to investigate the truth about some events that happened. You can feel that I am not afraid at all. Upon hearing this, the girl was a bit surprised. This person seems to know her thoughts very well. Bok Vu continued, Perhaps you don't know. We've been hiding in a tower outside in the world, it's hard to survive. Not long ago, I was also thrown out of the tower. The temperature reached 70 degrees, I almost died. Perhaps if I die now, I'd be like you. If you think I am like the others who want to kill you, I can't resist. But at least let me die clearly. My name is Bok Vu, may I ask you a few questions? Having said that, Bok Vu waited for the reaction of the girl. The girl appeared as a 15, 16 year old young lady and said her name was Hong An. Bok Vu secretly rejoiced, he started to believe that at least she would not kill him immediately. But there were talisman scripts on the girl's neck. Bok Vu couldn't help asking what about the talisman scripts on your neck. I met someone with similar talisman scripts in building 2. Hong An looked at him strangely you want to know why I don't kill you. And want to know how the others are right. Bok Vu nodded this hospital has too many mysteries. Up to now I have found 4 clues but haven't found any solutions yet. Hong An seemed a bit disappointed you will be afraid of us. I will prove everything you said is fake. You are deceiving me you are not afraid of me. Just because you haven't seen my true nature. Then come to verify if you are right then my death wouldn't be regrettable. If not at that time there was a flicker of doubt in Hong An's eyes. After that she decided to let Bok Vu delve deeper into her memories. The scenery around instantly distorted before Bok Vu's eyes. In his vision darkness gradually enveloped. He appeared on the 11th floor of the deserted hospital. Looking down at the floor covered with cold syringes. All radiating the aura of the girl. There are no longer any files or combs on the table. Only a medical record book and the record is not the same. But it's also considered a bit of a harvest. It seems the clue about the girl in this mysterious notebook is here. But as soon as he opened it a myriad of wronged souls and pitiful screams poured out. Numerous fragmented images appeared in Bok Vu's head. The sounds in his ears were full of tearing screams 259 Uncle Kiyu cried out in pain. I told the doctor not to torture Uncle Kiyu anymore. The doctor asked who Uncle Kiyu is then I remembered Uncle Kiyu was nobody. For them the name Uncle Kiyu no longer existed. Now he is called at new. Uncle Kiyu started to beg me for help. Although his voice was getting weaker I could still hear clearly. Uncle Kiyu really wanted me to take him away but I couldn't. 279 today I heard that the patient on the third floor of building 2 lost control. Completely turned into an evil spirit. It turns out that now Uncle Kiyu doesn't even have that name anymore. But is quickly called an evil spirit. My hand sprouted a black patch. A small crack appeared on my forehead. The doctor does not know the cause. I also don't know I just feel a bit sad. Uncle Kiyu has left he can no longer tell me stories about his daughter. I met Little and again he was curled up in a corner of the room all black. I once promised Little and to leave behind a colorful room. But gradually I forgot my world now only has three colors black. White read Little and said his bones were like sharp thorns piercing through the body. Now he has also become a monster. I can't bear to see Little and in that form. I want to tell him not to be afraid. Sister will protect you finally I met Little and again. But he came to say goodbye to me. He begged me to take him away smiling in the dark room. I was so sad that I started to cry softly. The doctor saw that I was troubled so he gave me a sedative. By evening I heard the doctors talking that Din Thap Nyat had turned into a malevolent spirit. Din Thap Nyat had completely lost human reason. Meanwhile the black spot on my hand grew larger. Another crack appeared on my forehead. Even Gulu didn't want to stay anymore. Even when meeting me he could no longer speak. Every day he has to fight with the malevolent spirits from above. 
Each time I see Gulu he has new injuries. I feel so much pity for my Gulu. Let me take you away even though it means I won't see you again. But I will miss you greatly the doctors began to panic because they couldn't understand why more and more test subjects were suddenly completely losing their minds. Inside their mouths the true Gulu had turned into a malevolent spirit. Although Gulu always considered himself useless. I know he is the strongest person in building too. I really wish Gulu would appear in my dreams. Now the black spot on my hand is still spreading. Half of my arm has turned black. My forehead is in pain it seems like another eye is about to sprout. It seems like the test subjects are originally half-human half-malevolent spirits. After turning into malevolent spirits no longer have reason. Only driven by a surge of desire. However all this seems to be related to Hong An. Before turning into pure malevolent spirits. Each subject met Hong An in their dreams. Perhaps they had known her from before. In their foggy dreams Hong and used her abilities to create a refuge for these test subjects. That was the only consolation in their miserable lives. But what Hong and could do still had its limits. The comfort she provided was completely inadequate for them to survive. The feeling of despair seems to stretch on endlessly. Most of these subjects began to give up. At that time Hong and would take them away which means absorbing their resentment. Bearing their pain in exchange. The test subjects would completely lose their own will. A series of medical records were documented by Hong An. Recording the final pain of the subjects before they gave up on life. She remembers them 98 I dare not look in the mirror because now I have turned into a black monster full of eyes. I have no regrets I just want to protect everyone. But it seems I also cannot bear it much longer. Who will take me home the malevolent spirits begin to rage. Am I about to become one of them? My hair has all fallen out although I begged the doctor to comb my hair like grandmother. But they don't bother to notice their eyes look at me as if looking at a monster. I am a monster a monster that no one loves. 108 no one can leave thousands of voices in my head scream demanding me to seal off this space. Kill them all I am a monster. All of us are monsters. So what are those who created us? 118 the doctors keep calling for help. Outside the hospital the noise is unusually loud. But those outside cannot come in. Those inside cannot get out. Iron cages and chains can no longer contain me. I want to go find them to play. I really want to play games with the doctors. I used to love playing hide and seek with grandma. Now they're all hiding how wonderful. For the first time I feel a connection with the doctors. Come find me to play come find me to play. 158 what have I finally become? Everyone who sees me trembles and weeps. It's strange when they weep their bodies emit a strange fragrance. I really 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 want to eat their flesh. 168 I met Elijah again he is so strong. Even though he always loses to me he never wants to leave here. He doesn't want me to take him away. Because he is waiting for his teacher to meet him. He told me that even in a cruel environment. He can still endure. I am so envious of Elijah. I also wish there is someone waiting for me outside. Only grandma loved me but I know she has been gone for a long time. I hope Elijah can wait. I have granted him a part of my power. Although he resists it seems because of me his teacher no longer wants him. I am sorry Elijah I am sorry more and more doctors. Because of despair their bodies emit an increasingly intense fragrance. Some have died some are becoming a part of us. I should go eat their flesh all the voices in my head are screaming at me to tear the doctors apart. But I don't want to I just want to play games with them. I don't want them to die but they're all afraid of me. Because I am the ugly monster yes. Everyone hates monsters like me. But I don't hate them I just want to play with everyone. More and more journals in the form of memories pour into Bai Wu's head. Now he understands why Hong An is called the pitiful girl. This poor child bears the grudge of everyone. The pain hatred and loneliness of one person are enough to make an ordinary person fall into intense negative emotions and turn into a wretched being. Not to mention the accumulation of all the test subjects. What a terrifying monster it would create. Later Hong and began to turn into a wretched being. Even in that state she was still kindhearted like a child towards the doctors who once tormented her. Hong An's intention was still not to kill them. Unfortunately here the Fa Lei Ai cannot be used. At this moment the Fa Lei Ai appears my dear friend. Do you remember me my goodness I was almost strangled to death. The girl's will is too strong I will disappear after a little while. You should observe something else during this time. So now start the countdown. Do not hesitate to stare at the red that has completely turned into the unnamed. 
Utterly malevolent level 9 calamity. Level 12 mental mutation perfect resentment manifestation. Perfect mutation super resentment manifestation. Congratulations you have seen the true form of that villain. I cannot explain to you what level 9 calamity is. Especially when you are already within his attack range. Do not think about defeating him. He is like that dwarf both are players specialized in one aspect. But I can suggest three things for you lick his shoes. Lick his shoes or lick his shoes. Quickly his power disappears. The dialogue box in the eye is also immediately erased. At the same time in the real world. Bai Wu has fallen into a meditative state. It's been a long time since Lam Vo Nhu has been restless how long has it been and this kid still has no reaction. The captain looked at the watch and said you guys should adjust your mood. There are four more hours before it's time to leave the tower. Just one more minute and everyone is startled. Immediately begin to adjust their state. Outside the tower every four hours some strange negative effects are imposed. Because this world is repelling humans. A brief minute quickly passes by. The girl's legs are as if weighed down by lead she lifts her feet several times. Trying to adapt as quickly as possible. Peripheral limits are sluggish. Vong the feels his arms losing strength. Difficult to move peripheral limits reduce attack power. Lam Vo Nhu is more serious. Like those with depression. Sadness gradually wells up inside. Crying sadness becomes a river peripheral limits negative thoughts. Tiu at is the worst everything in her sight disappears. Unable to see anything. Peripheral limits blindness county Tan Nok frowns. Troubled and blind most new symptoms appear on the third or fourth day. The two of them are really unlucky. The effect that County Tan Nok suffers when leaving the tower is fervent evil. Which can increase the attack speed of the surrounding malevolence. This is not a big problem for him. Anyway he can easily resolve it. After that he ordered Lam Vo Nhu and Vong the to return to the tower first. Lam Vo Nhu is very sad combined with negative thoughts it makes him even more desperate captain. I am an old member but withdraw before the new members. Maybe I am really not suitable for this job. Now thinking back the great distance between people is like cold water drowning me. Making me agonize over being born human. I'd rather leave right away County Tan Nok also feels powerless losing teammates due to injuries is still better. But losing intelligence is too much. To you it immediately interrupts the negative state captain take care. Vo Nhu and I will return first here. Having said that he activated the turntable to return. A beam of light quickly took the two away. At this moment Vong the asks the captain if we can still endure. But what about Bok Vu he is still there. No one knows what effects he is suffering from. Right then a lot of resentment suddenly appeared in the storage room. The resentments that gathered in building 2 now appeared in the hospital in the form of gas. Ko Tan Nok immediately ordered everyone to approach Bok Vu. Prepare to fight it is clear that Hongan has started a fierce attack. Especially under the influence of the frenzied evil on County Tan Nok. The speed of the monster summoned by resentment becomes even faster. It charged at Vong the even though the strength of his arm was diminished. But the flesh was still solid and strong. Vong the only needed one punch to knock it away. But upon closer inspection Vong the realized that this evil creature was the same one that the captain had destroyed on the first floor of building one. Not just that one but a few others he had also encountered before. Perhaps a high level evil spirit had mimicked them. Yet their speed was also too fast. Possibly influenced by the captain's frenzied evil. Ko Tan Nok was silent for a moment. Then suddenly a streak of light flashed by. With a speed that the naked eye could not keep up with. Ko Tan Nok moved nimbly among the evil spirits. The light moved swiftly slicing all the resentment transformed evil spirits into fragments in an instant. Vong the tremblingly said I knew the captain was very strong but this is too terrifying. Don't tell me the captain thinks I am relying on the frenzied evil right. At this moment County Tan Nok crushed the remaining writhing part. And then ordered the two people to protect Bok Vu well. Leave these evil creatures to me. These resentments are not flesh and blood. Ko Tan Nok is just too strong so he can sever them. Therefore the resentments quickly reconvened. Ko Tan Nok guessed that Bok Vu had activated something dangerous. Meanwhile in Bok Vu's area. The scenery changed countless tiny memory cells suddenly enlarged. Pieces of memory like puzzles now appeared as doors. Lined up in rows within the deep red space. 
At this moment, the Eye of Thor appeared this place as the Great Hall. Each door connects to a memory space in the records. Oh, right, the first four hour effect outside the tower is chaos. Bok Vu waved his hand powerfully but only saw the scenery in his field of vision shake. Yet his consciousness was not at all confused. The direction recognition is off by 65 degrees. Bok Vu thought to himself that this negative effect is the misperception of directions. Not too serious, he just needed to figure out the corresponding relationship with the previous direction. The Eye of Thor appeared again, still pretending, ha.、Huh? Now it's a multiple choice question, there are hundreds of entrances to memories. But only one leads back to reality. Hang in there, I can't hold on much longer. After that, remember to kneel and lick, kneel and lick, and kneel and lick. Then the Eye of Thor disappeared again. Bok Vu focused on finding a clue. It was time he made a choice. He reluctantly stepped into one of the entrances, with the aim to erase Hong An's suspicions about him. Bok Vu entered that room again, but the cute girl was no longer there. Instead, there was a creature covered in black ooze, dozens of eyes full of resentment and fear. That was the evil spirit that absorbed all the resentment of the hospital and transformed. Its only desire was for the person who once combed its hair. So Bok Vu took out the comb and slowly approached Hong An. See, I am not deceiving you. I haven't been in this world for long. My understanding of evil spirits is also different from others. Until now, I still don't hate or fear the eyes in you. Their eyes are restless, wary, resentful, and suspicious. Quickly, a doubtful voice emerged from the black ooze as if a combination of many voices, you're really not afraid of me. Bok Vu said truthfully, it's a pity no one can comb your hair. And no one can take you away. You've lived too long in this hospital. Thinking that way is probably normal. But the world is not limited to just buildings one through four. The human heart is not confined to doctors and patients. Do you know why people in the tower despise and fear the evil spirit? Because until now there has been no research proving that human will can overpower the evil spirit's desire to kill. Elijah can be seen as an exception. He is led by an almost blind faith in the teacher like a disciple to a cult leader. As for you, you accept most of the experimental subjects in the hospital. Treating them as friends, I can't imagine the pain you feel when the will of so many people is poured into you. But the fact that you still retain your own will proves you are still human. Not a hateful monster. Meanwhile, on County Tan Nok's side, everyone could feel the resentment significantly lessen. Clearly, Bok Vu had made positive progress. Bok Vu continued to persuade Hong and not to turn herself into a monster. The world is vast outside the hospital. There are still many places you haven't set foot in. Many good people you haven't met. The voice of Hong and became clearer, purer. But I really can't leave. Bok Vu knelt in front of the girl, although he can't do it now. But I will find a way to get you out of here. If you trust me and are willing to wait for me. Eventually, Hong and couldn't hold back her tears. But quickly, numerous overlapping voices rang out beside her. He is lying. Wanting to deceive you, kill him, Hong, and immediately refuted. No, perhaps I can trust him since understanding Hong An's situation. Every word of Bok Vu has been very sincere. Perhaps in some aspects they are similar. Hong An asks, how can they be similar? Bok Vu looks at the scenery changing around us. Are all thrown into this strange world? Everything here is new. If each journey has its own mission, then my mission is to decipher the mysteries of the world outside the tower. Why are there evil spirits? How did the tower appear? How many levels does the tower have? What is at the top of the tower? Why can't the evil spirits leave a certain area? What are the sequences of power and the order of talents? For me, all are intriguing puzzles for me to solve. They are the meaning for this journey of mine. When I find the answers to those questions, I will find a way to take you with me. Hong and asks, with a somewhat doubtful tone, but why would you do that? Bok Vu continued, "You are not alone." At least from today, you have a friend who wants to play with you, a friend from the outside world, from the mental hospital on Earth, and he is telling you about the things there. Hearing this, Hong An's tears overflowed. She asked my friend, then she stood up to thank him. But don't come to Building Four anymore. If you and your friends come too close to me, it will be very dangerous the next time you see me. Perhaps I will not be as lucid as this. So you should become stronger, strong enough to match me. Then you can come visit me. Bok Vu's words truly awakened the pure soul of the girl. Bok Vu patted his chest. When that time comes, I will definitely awaken you again, and then continue playing with you, no matter what the end will be for you. 
Hong and suddenly thought of something before leaving. It's best if you go to building one. Two days ago, someone came here and left something at building one. Bok Vu pondered what the next developments would be. At building one, hints mentioned the bloodstains on the walls and the medical records scattered on the floor. All arranged by someone two days ago. Could it be Elijah's teacher? He asked Hong and what that person was doing there. What is your feeling about that person? Hong and replied that it's not very clear. Only that the object is very similar to the device used to return to the tower by you guys. Bok Vu wondered why that person would leave a turntable at this hospital. Or is it just something that resembles a turntable? How interesting he continued to ask Hong and if she could take him there. But immediately Bok Vu escaped from the illusion. Waking up in reality at this moment, the voice of Ko Tan Nak rang out. Still very calm, you've been reading the medical record for quite a while. Suddenly, the archive became empty. Not only the black and evil plague, but even the medical records disappeared. Ko Tan Nak asked Bok Vu what this was about. Did you discover anything? Bok Vu replied that he found the medical file of the experimental subject in Building 4. The process was a bit complicated, so it took a lot of time. But it's best not to stay in Building 4 for long. It's very dangerous, perhaps, even the team leader is not sure how to deal with that experimental subject. Hearing this, County Tan Nok didn't say anything but still looked calm. However, Vong the seemed to disagree with this. Don't underestimate our team leader. Captain Liu of Team 13 is called the Shield of the Investigation Corps. And our captain is the sword of hundred battles, hundred victories. There is no evil spirit that he cannot handle. Bok Vu nodded. I just want to say building four is much more dangerous than the previous three basements. The whole hospital is a breeding ground for evil spirits. Many powerful evil spirits have appeared here, but all combined are still not equal to the evil spirit of building four. Ko Tan Nok was still curious. How do you know so well? What did you experience in the file? Bok Vu turned and walked towards the door. It's a piece of memory. Let's talk on the way. Then he realized two people were missing. Turned back and asked where are Lam Vo N H U and Thuong T U at. Vong the replied they're too unlucky, affected too greatly by negative influences. The captain has already sent those two back to the tower first. Vong the asked Bok Vu what is your obstruction effect. Bok Vu said my luck is still good. It's chaos, not some troublesome obstruction effect. Ko Tan Nok seemed unusual. You seem to have adapted already, haven't you? How long did it take? But Bok Vu said, "Why do I need to adapt? Just need to change a little habit is enough." It was his first time at a simple level, but he treated it as a trivial matter. Captain County Tan Nok thought he had taken quite some time to adapt. Hearing this, all three were stunned for a moment. Vong the was the first to break the silence. If we're not going to building four, where are we going now, Bok Vu? Bok Vu said they would go to retrieve an item from building one. According to the medical records, someone had been there and left something like a roulette wheel. They would go take a look and then prepare to return. Hearing this, Vong the still asked for Captain County Tan Nok's opinion. Are we really not going to building four? Ko Tan Nok answered very decisively, "We're not going." Actually, County Tan Nok could also feel that Building Four harbored a terrifying monster. If he went alone, it would be fine. But if he took the team members along, it would be dangerous. Along the way, Bok Vu recounted the memories he had gone through in the medical records. Before the era of the tower, many evil spirits appeared to find their origins and weaknesses. Many facilities researched evil spirits. This hospital injected evil spirit serum into people to create evil spirits that could continuously slaughter. Vong the didn't understand they created evil spirits. I thought they were researching the weaknesses of evil spirits. Bok Vu also wasn't clear. Perhaps this method was also considered research, or there might be some reason the medical records don't mention much about this issue. Anyway, it seems that there is now a semi-successful experimental subject. At this moment, County Tan Nok suddenly spoke up. That damn spider is one of them, isn't it? Bok Vu replied, "That's right. The success is the big spider we encountered in Building Two, Elijah, and the semi-success is in Building Four, Hong An." Vong the asked, "Hong An is the Black Plague and the imposter we encountered earlier, right? Why is it called a semi-success when she's stronger than that spider?" Bok Vu explained, "Actually, Hong An was a random experimental accident." To lessen the suffering of other patients, she absorbed their resentment, which eventually led her to turn into an evil spirit herself. 
Although she became an evil spirit, the goodness inside her hasn't been completely erased. Immediately, County Tan Nok interjected, "An evil spirit is still an evil spirit. Remember this: the nature of an evil spirit is to eat humans, no matter how pitiable or kind-hearted. As long as there is malice in their soul, they are the eternal enemies of mankind." Bok Vu didn't argue further. He said, "The captain is right. I will remember these words. Actually, I understand too." If we can't completely remove the killing instinct in Hong En, then we can't consider her an ally. We need to be thoroughly cautious with her. Suddenly, a red shadow appears in front of everyone. Bok Vu instinctively stops as a phantom of resentment appears before the group. Bok Vu immediately stops upon seeing this. Ko Tan Nok asks, "What's the matter?" But Bok Vu says, "It's nothing." Thinking perhaps only he can see Hong En, but it seems she's a bit angry. Could it be because she heard the dialogue between him and Company Tan Nok just now? How careless the entire hospital is! Almost a part of Hong En. He needs to be careful with his words for the next few minutes. The four of them arrive at the third floor of Building One. Hong En goes straight into the clinic in the back. Upon opening the door, Bok Vu sees a round plate placed on the table. Quite visible, its position is too conspicuous. Clearly intended for someone to find it. Ko Tan Nok observes the plate, very sure this is not the turntable to turn back time. He has never seen this before. Bok Vu learned from the Eye of Thor that this is a very complex guiding turntable to manufacture. Currently, there are only seven left. This spatial movement device far exceeds human technology. Its effect can transcend the three-day rule, returning to scenes from the past or leading one to a specific scene. In essence, it is an invitation from someone. Then the eye of Thor advises him to look down at the floor, specifically at the medical record at his feet. Bok Vu looks down and realizes everything has been carefully arranged. Hey, investigator, I want to play a game with you. I believe you know the past of this hospital, but with my understanding of humans, humans have yet to step foot into the red zone. Therefore, you still do not know the origin of the evil and the truth about the tower. I want to invite you to participate in a game. If you can get through all the areas I have arranged, I will answer all your questions about this world. Take this plate with you, and don't let the person on the sixth floor find out. Okay. Bok Vu secretly thinks the owner of the plate has left him a series of invitations. The hospital of Hong En is just the beginning. It's getting more and more interesting. County Tan Nok notices him smiling. What are you smiling at, Bok Vu? Bok Vu does not hide his smile. Nothing much. Just happy thinking about going home soon. This clearly isn't a roulette wheel to turn back time. How about giving it to me as a souvenir? Ko Tan Nok glances at him, then succinctly says, "Okay, you take out the roulette wheel, saying there's nothing left to search for here. Let's withdraw." Then he automatically activates the roulette wheel. A beam of light shoots out, and quickly all three people disappear from that place. Bok Vu is the last one to activate the roulette wheel. He tells Hong, "And I have to go first. We'll be back just like the last time." When Bok Vu returns, the summary diary appears stating the current area exploration level is 61. Evil torments remaining one. The apocalypse puzzle pieces have been transferred. Unable to collect rating. Temporarily okay at this moment. Hong En is crying and waving vigorously, along with the image of Bok Vu fading away. She returns to that warm memory. Now she is like the old Elijah. In her heart, there is also someone to wait for. At the bottom floor on the eastern side of the tower. The green teleportation stone flashes. The blindness of Thuong Tiu Ad and the depression of Lam Vo N H U disappear immediately upon returning to the tower. At this moment, the recording staff beside is surprised. You guys came back from the green stone. Why not start from the white area instead? Both of them quickly reacted. It seems Bok Vu's words are correct. From building two onwards, we entered the green area. The recording staff hurriedly reminds them, although you know well. I still have to repeat: Do not go out at will. The body cannot endure two teleport stone transfers within 12 hours. So if you want to go out again, you have to wait at least 12 hours. Lam Vo N H U turns back and answers, "Rest assured, we are just here waiting for the team leader." As soon as he finished speaking, Bok Vu's voice rang out loudly. Isn't this Lam who dislikes being hindered? Senior, there really is no hindrance. After all, everyone has already left early. Ah, I see. Now this is the return strategy. Lam Vo N H U coldly snorted and turned away. 
Indicating that he does not care about him this made the recording staff extremely surprised it's the first task and he has been outside the tower for more than four hours. Considering the entire investigation core. Ko Tan Nok suddenly speaks up it's okay. Next week you don't have a mission. Afterward come with me to the investigation core to deal with some matters. Once it's settled you can move freely. Bok Vu immediately asks why he doesn't have a mission. Ko Tan Nok explains that this mission is just a test. You have passed next there are some procedures to be done. After that you will officially join the core and receive further missions. Bok Vu nods thinking that inside the tower he has a lot of work to do. Moreover the tower is a survival area. The most important thing now is to find a way to make money. The scene shifts to County Tan Nok's office. He writes a detailed report about the activities of the team members on this outing from the tower. Unlike other team leaders. His reports are always very detailed. These combat evaluation reports are divided into six different attributes. Ko Tan Nok attentively looks at Bok Vu's evaluation chart and falls into deep thought. Besides the poor analytical ability. The other indices of Lam Vo Nhu and Vong the are all very outstanding. Ko Tan Nok quickly spins a pen toy in his hand. He realizes that the combat points of the team members are nearly equal. Only Bok Vu's psychological stability is abnormally solid compared to an average person. Apart from the survival and combat ability being zero. The remaining indices are absolute. Ko Tan Nok leans back in his chair. Closes his eyes and rubs his temples. I have led many soldiers but this is the first time I've encountered such a strange person. If he can maintain this state. Perhaps a new player will emerge in the core in a few years. Therefore the bed involving Bok Vu is certainly not simple. Thinking so he took out a matchstick to light and burn Bok Vu's evaluation chart. It seems I need to prepare to make a decision to revise the report. This version seems much more mediocre than the previous one. After that he turned on the headset to make a phone call. A woman's voice rang out saying hello. This is the detective office how may I assist you? He replied coldly it's me. Ko Tan knocked the woman joked oh it's the famous ninth master. He remained indifferent go away the woman pretended to weep when you need me I am a treasure. When not you tell me to go away. He said nothing more but switched to now I have a long term request. I need you to protect someone for me. The woman expressed doubt have you fallen in love. He immediately clarified it's a member of my team. I will send the relevant information later. Warn your staff not to be complacent. His detection ability is unusual. His words made the woman even more suspicious just to protect one person. Can't the core investigators do it themselves? He offered no further explanation. For some reasons the core should not intervene in this matter. Upon hearing this the woman realized the seriousness of the case and asked directly about the remuneration. Ko Tan Nok said each time I leave the tower I will bring something for you girls. The woman happily agreed to the condition he proposed. I agree immediately because it is too beneficial. But to make him propose such a condition. The person needing protection must not be simple. On one side in front of a store at the smuggling port. Bok Vu stood there still calmly watching the noisy scene inside. There were sounds of a sentimental argument between two men and a woman. The shop owner's eyes were red and teary. Saying and Nyan listen to me explain this. It's all just a misunderstanding. The man named Anyan almost collapsed are the solemn oaths we made in the past all meaningless now. Tell me the truth who is that man. The other man then raised his head crying I eat instant noodles every day to save money for you to have a better life. But why why does he say he is your boyfriend? Anyan continued that's the very question I want to ask. The girl sat down on the ground playing the role apologizing. It's all my fault both of you are too excellent. I couldn't bear to hurt you so I've kept it hidden for so long. I can't choose she said holding both men's hands. Outside the door Bok Vu was still expressionless. The Fa Lois eye appeared do you want to go in now? To stir things up further. After a while the two men walked out comfortably. Even draping their arms around each other. Bok Vu thought to himself heavens is this also possible? Is this the charm of a girl? He stepped inside and saw Lu Chan Tu still leisurely singing. In an unusually good mood. Bok Vu whispered perhaps I came at a wrong time. Lu Chan Tu laughed ah Bok Vu. Unexpectedly you came early to witness this scene. I am sorry even though I am knowledgeable in many things. Bok Vu is still unfamiliar with matters of men and women. Lu Chan Tu said I didn't do anything. 
It was mainly those two who kept wanting to cross the line. They are like hunters who lack focus, not concentrating on their core work but always wanting to be promoted. Moreover, my preferences have changed. So that's why I called both of them here to resolve things once and for all. She looked calm as if nothing had ever happened excessively nonchalant indeed. Lu Chan Tu suddenly closed in on Bok Vu. Are you looking for me for something, Bok Vu? That wasn't the real me just now. I only like people like you, that's why I acted that way. Bok Vu did not respond but rummaged through his pocket and took out the camera he got from here last time. He said this camera has succeeded in becoming a spiritual object. Last night, after splitting from the group, he went to Lu Chan Tu's store. Not because the store has real stuff, but because the stuff here is different from other places. A woman wearing a provocative outfit welcomed the handsome boy. Do you want to buy anything? The full Lois eye appeared. These slim thighs are worth my day today. 19 romances, a pond with a hundred backups. Currently dating six people, recently likes a male god. Really dangerous, good thing it was discovered early. Otherwise, I a pure boy. Would have been mired. Bok Vu glanced over the goods in the store. Now at the level of capability 25h, this cup can boil water immediately. It can be refined into a water purifier. And the rice cooker might have the ability to seal evil spirits, but not the big ones. For them, the Ma Fong van is useless. With a price of 139 dong before, it's definitely a counterfeit electric rice cooker. However, if connected successfully, it will become a pot that can transform food. Creating delicious dishes that will surely generate huge profits. Seeing Bok Vu silent, Lu Chan Tu asked again, Do you like any item, young man? Bok Vu tapped the electric rice cooker and said coldly, I want both this pot and that cup. Lu Chan Tu stood up and said, Not a bad eye. The cup is good, but this pot is useless. It's only here to trick fools. I advise you not to buy it. I am not a fool and I don't want you to be one either. Hey, my name is Lu Chan Tu, but Bok Vu still insisted I said I want both. Lu Chan Tu assessed him, Are you about to go outside the tower? Bok Vu glanced at her, not expecting this girl to be so astute. But he didn't answer and asked for the price. Lu Chan Tu smiled earlier, there was a 50 discount. But now I've changed my mind. 10,000 dong or for free. You choose one, by the way, let me tell you. I am the only one selling electric rice cookers on this whole floor. The Fu Lois I commented, I bet she saw through his intention to buy the pot. Bok Vu was silent for a moment, then said, I am just an ordinary person. Then no more discounts. Sell it to me at the original price, but Lu Chan Tu said, Would an ordinary person insist on buying something I've already said is rubbish? There's no era where rice cookers are still used anymore. It has never been bought by anyone. Unless you encounter a spirit phenomenon. Moreover, this cup is also useless in the tower. Unless you go outside, Bok Vu felt surprised by the girl's sharp eyes. He had to admit, then I choose to receive it as a gift. Seeing her purpose achieved, Lu Chan Tu immediately smiled, All right. Let me pack it for you. Gifts are always the most expensive. At first, he just wanted to buy the rice cooker. But the store owner deliberately gave it as a gift and secretly put an old camera into the bag. Bok Vu called out, Hold on, what's this? Lu Chan Tu smiled brightly, Don't worry, young man. You haven't said anything to me and I don't know anything. I just accidentally left this camera in your stuff. The Fu Lois I commented, This is interesting. I understand why she became the queen of the sea with her school of fish. Lu Chan Tu continued in a few days. You will accidentally discover the camera and return it to me because you are a good person. Just by looking at your face, I know you're about to leave the tower and suggest a deal to help me carry the camera. At least observant and knows how to seize opportunities. This camera has captured quite a few secrets before it was broken. She probably wants to review the scene she has taken. Bok Vu asked, But what if the camera can't become a spirit? Lu Chan Tu shook her head, Never mind, young man. Anyway, I've already given you the pot and cup. Let's start over. My name is Lu Chan Tu after Bok Vu introduced himself. He left when Bok Vu turned back from outside the tower. The camera successfully became a spirit, which delighted Lu Chan Tu. She hastily asked, What is the effect? Bok Vu explained, Just silently recite the moment and shoot the scene, and it will capture the scene from that moment. Lu Chan Tu immediately went from happy to stunned, really. You're not tricking me, are you really not tricking me? Hurry up, let me try seeing Lu Chan Tu rush over. Bok Vu immediately took the camera away, hold on.
First let's discuss the reward. Lu Chan Tu acted coyly what reward do you want? Lu Chan Tu said Mr. Bok Vu. I am a girl can you make it cheaper? Or give it to me as a gift I will be grateful. Bok Vu sneered as he held out his hand you girls should check yourselves. There's no such good deal in life. As soon as he finished speaking Lu Chan Tu puffed out her chest. And pressed close to Bok Vu's arm handsome guy. I really have no money left. If not can I offer my body in return. But Bok Vu immediately felt that this girl was just an empty shell. Girls like to deceive themselves. Thinking the image in the camera is real. Breasts may be padded to look big but they can't stand being touched. Bok Vu did not fall for the trap and stepped back perhaps you have misunderstood me. I don't like girls your price will be higher. If you can produce something right now. Ill lower the price to women want to use their beauty to get the magical camera. But unexpectedly he is not interested in women and proposes such a condition. Lu Chan Tu was somewhat afraid. She felt powerless in front of Bok Vu and sighed all right all right. But I want to check the goods first. Bok Vu handed the camera to Lu Chan Tu just set the year month day hour minute second. Leave only the number and silently recite it. Lu Chan Tu took the photo while reciting the number from 10 minutes ago. She was curious to see the wrong expressions of the two men when they confronted each other. Seeing where Lu Chan Tu aimed the camera. Bok Vu guessed what she wanted to capture. He curiously asked her if she wasn't afraid that one day she would truly be exposed. Lu Chan Tu replied sincerely I just want more children to experience the happiness of love. Is there anything wrong with that not long after? The image showed two men who had just left. The two men had angry expressions on their faces. Expressions of disbelief. Lu Chan Tu trembled with excitement so just by continuously shooting like this we can know history. This ability is truly fortunate. Bok Vu was suddenly stunned he hadn't immediately reacted that the camera could still be used like that. Just by continuously shooting each photo like pieces of a puzzle. It's possible to piece together history. Lu Chan Tu pointed at the camera why can't it take pictures anymore. It's definitely not my fault. Bok Vu then explained that because the ability only lasted for less than 3 hours the efficiency was still low. It can only be used twice a week. He had already used it once outside the tower. She would have to wait another 7 days to use it again. Lu Chan Tu bowed her head contemplating the camera's value. Even if the usage frequency is lower than expected. As long as you know how to use it and in the right place. It's still a precious source of information gathering. Negotiating with someone like Bok Vu who doesn't care much about beauty and always appears calm is very difficult. Initially she intended to try to see. But hearing Bok Vu speak in a calm tone about an equal exchange. Trading things of equivalent value. Skipping the bargaining process don't try to devalue me to force the price down. Doing so will only make me feel that you are cheap. You can choose goods or services of equivalent value. Or combine them if I find it acceptable. Lu Chan Tu really wanted to complain even though she sensed that Bok Vu was not easily fooled by beauty. But the items of equivalent value he mentioned were completely absent from her store. She felt powerless but still wanted the camera so she asked so what do you want in exchange? Bok Vu immediately asked about those live broadcast devices. Lu Chan Tu replied honestly it's that live commerce thing. It said that it has existed since before the tower. Bok Vu nodded I know it's a scam. I want to ask if the live broadcasting outside the tower was originally to scam or if it ever was real. Lu Chan Tu was very smart. She caught the real intention of Bok Vu are you interested in live broadcasting? Bok Vu said if I am not mistaken. Those live broadcasts can't always be fake. Because the people are not that foolish. There must be a few times when it's fake before mixing in a few real ones. Otherwise it won't last. I want to research some data. Lu Chan Tu immediately showed interest can this be considered information to compensate for part of the camera's value. Bok Vu said let me know some details about the real live broadcasts first. Lu Chan Tu giggled you're asking the right person. Come into the room and let's talk slowly. Most people living on the lower floors only go outside the tower under the protection of the investigative core to mine minerals and blue line herbs. They go out every day but their understanding of the outside is very limited. Because the core cleans up the scourges in a certain area first there are few who have actually seen the scourges. People fear the scourges but you might not imagine they also yearn to see them. 
Bok Vu was not surprised that is not hard to understand. The betting games of the third. Fourth layers take the poor out of the tower precisely to watch the scene of scourges devouring people. Da Vinci once said he believes every person has a mutant within them. That is the source of his creative inspiration. Lu Chan too was stunned who is Da Vinci. The atmosphere became tense for a few seconds. Then she continued in general everyone really likes to watch the things that happen outside the tower. People enjoy watching bloodthirsty and thrilling things and are eager to learn about the vast world outside the tower. The tower is very large but compared to the vast territories of humanity before the tower era it is still too small. For all those who dare not leave the tower. The outside of the tower is a mythical land. Whether rich or poor noble or commoner. Everyone is curious about the things that happen outside the tower. But if you ask them to go outside. They will resolutely refuse Bok Vu understands. The huge demand for sensation creates a huge market demand. And people do not refuse risks. He asked why not ask the investigative corps. Lu Chan too explained that only the commander-in-chief and the 16 squad leaders can apply to leave the tower. No one else can Bok Vu saw that it made sense. The core is the weapon of those in power. Nobody wants their sword to be borrowed by the merchants. In some sense this is also to maintain order. If the army became privatized the factions within the tower would be in chaos. He silently thought that all one needs is to hide their identity while operating freely. Lu Chan too continued anyway. Because so many people want to explore the world outside this industry was born to meet that huge demand. To solve the problem that technology cannot be used outside the tower. People have also come up with many ways to livestream. Hearing this Bok Vu continues is it the spirit contracted items right? Lu Chan too snaps his fingers correct. Only spirit contracted items can operate outside the tower. This process is said to be quite long. People carry a lot of stuff but almost none have the function of recording. Even if they have they can't livestream. About 7 years later an entertainment company spent a lot of money. Lu Chan too continues after hiring people to carry various items outside the tower. Finally a bracelet was successfully spirit contracted. Before she could finish Bok Vu replied essentially it's a surveillance camera isn't it? Lu Chan too with delight exactly. You're really smart this type of bracelet looks like a bracelet on the outside. But after being spirit contracted it becomes a surveillance camera. Bok Vu had once destroyed such a bracelet. He asked Lu Chan too how the merchant ensures that subsequent bracelets also connect successfully. Considering that spirit contracting relies entirely on luck. But Lu Chan too says it can't be guaranteed. However that time the person going outside the tower did not bring just one bracelet. Because people thought like this if the connection probability of one item is very low. Then what about the result if you bring a heap of items? All 13 bracelets were successfully spirit contracted and all had the same ability. This phenomenon is called the spirit transmission phenomenon. Similar to some people who are proficient in using twin blades. When spirit contracting both blades connect. But the phenomenon of widespread connection is very rare. Bok Vu roughly understands that during the spirit contracting moment there is a certain law that causes the same type of items to connect as well. But this law is very mysterious. He continues to ask so after that. Was there a bracelet that could connect to the screens inside the tower and act as a surveillance camera? But why doesn't the investigation corps use this wonderful thing? Lu Chan too answers because they couldn't buy it. The person with that bracelet has no intention of selling it. Bok Vu is slightly skeptical just because they couldn't buy it. It seems like the identity of the seller is not simple. Lu Chan Tu says that's right people from the core dare not openly confront him. Some guess that he might come from the fifth layer. Bok Vu falls into deep thought the ruling layer ha. Huh? It seems like I underestimated this bet. From the attitude of Ko Tan Nok towards the previous bet. It can be seen that the identity of the betting organizer is not simple. So who really informed the investigation corps to come and pick me up? Surely the other party has a noble identity. But who would anger this casino owner for a beggar? Moreover the owner has a not insignificant power. If my identity is exposed. Would County Tan Nok be able to protect me or not? The most important thing is if I want to live stream outside the tower. Will it attract the attention of the casino people? Bok Vu continues to ask so to really live stream. I must contact that owner right. Do you have a way to get the live stream equipment? 
Lu Chan Tu says I have a boyfriend who has connections. Con Mat Fu Loi comments others say I have a friend. While Lu Chan Tu directly says I have a boyfriend. It cannot be denied that this is also her strength. Bok Vu does not want to beat around the bush too much I need the following items a spirit contracted mask that can change the voice. The type of mask that smiles or something like a clown. If it cannot change the voice. At least it must be hard enough the livestream equipment you have to help me get it without using my identity. And make sure no one can find me. Lu Chan Tu interrupts wait a minute. Your request is a bit complicated. But Bok Vu quickly raises the price the camera can only be used twice a week. But if carried continuously, its spirit contracted level will increase. A higher level means it can be used more frequently. And even evolve further. If you help me the camera is just a part. Later if there are other suitable spirit contracted items. I can also consider taking them out to help you. Hearing this Lu Chan Tu immediately shakes hands with Bok Vu in agreement. I will get the live stream equipment for you. I have a way to ensure no one can find you. Then I'll be your business partner. With me you just need to focus on live streaming. I'll take care of the operations. But in fact she has other intentions. As long as Bok Vu is strong enough he will be a stable tool for producing spirit contracted items. At that time money and the pinnacle of men's lives will fall into her hands. She must seize this good opportunity firmly. Bok Vu asks how soon at the earliest. Lu Chan Tu replies do you need it urgently. Probably about three days Bok Vu did not expect it to be quite a lot faster than anticipated. After discussing some details, Bok Vu leaves Lu Chan Tu's shop. Arriving home he takes out the roulette wheel and considers whether to go to the area arranged by that person or find another random area. At this moment there is a knock at the door a girl asks from outside if Bok Vu is home. I am Van Tu the captain of the interrogation team. Ordered to find you Bok Vu guessing it must be related to the interrogation team. They are responsible for interrogating criminals. Holding information from the lower levels and investigating cases. Perhaps after opening the door to what seems to be a case. Bok Vu asks what's the matter. Van Tu says the captain says you seem too idle so he's assigned you some work. Just so happens our team captain also sees your potential. Thus the eye of Fu Lei comments on a pretty little sister but she's no good for anything other than running errands. Look at that heavy chest there. Bok Vu raises an eyebrow you said yesterday I had 7 days off. Today you've already arranged work for me. I guess the people from the casino have started to make moves. Then he steps outside closes the door and leaves. Led me to the interrogation team as it happens I am free the next 2 days. But Van Tu seems embarrassed actually it's like this. We have a backlog of many cases. According to the team leader you should be in charge of everything. Meaning the workload is very large. Seven days definitely won't be enough. Bok Vu is stunned Fu Lei's eye comments ha ha. It seems the shorty has already anticipated that you wanted some time off. How smart to use a large workload to limit your free time. While also being able to supervise and protect you. However he forgets one thing. You have a great ally. Bok Vu turns back to Van Tu saying I understand now. Let's check it out first at the second floor of the tower. Interrogation team number 7 of the investigation corps. As soon as he steps in Bok Vu glances around and asks Van Tu why there are no computers here. The man lying on the table smoking responds those are only available from the third floor upwards. We haven't been equipped with them here yet. Then he stands up to greet Bok Vu I've heard about you for a long time. This time we have to rely on your help. All the unresolved cases from the past year are here. Dean the team leader of the interrogation team. An extremist who only likes the process and doesn't care about the results. Especially when next to women. Bok Vu thinks it seems that technology on the third floor is equivalent to his own time in the past. So the fourth floor's technology will be even higher. And floor 5 must be the pinnacle of the future. Then you ask the interrogation team what the commonality of these cases is. The interrogation team feels the question is somewhat odd the cases are different not serial cases. However these cases also have in common that most have identified suspects. But the method of the crime the motive and the evidence are still unclear. You know on the lower floors the common people often do not cooperate. We cannot collect evidence. Bok Vu understands the interrogation team meaning you all have investigated all these cases and are at the evidence collection stage right. The interrogation team sighs that's right. We follow each case closely. 
You must know that every day on the lower floors an incident occurs. 16 interrogation teams each team is too busy to breathe. To be honest, some cases we also do not want to handle. But who told us to encounter such a boss? Right, Bok Vu Bok Vu asks, is it Ko Ngu Ku? I mean the team leader, right? The interrogation team casually responds, that's right. The team leader is very concerned about these issues. Below the order is chaotic, but the more it is so, the more the team leader wants us to do something so that the people understand they are not abandoned. Not just existing as labor tools. Bok Vu flips through the documents. Looking at the list of main suspects of the cases, he asks the team if they have the right to make temporary arrests. The interrogation team replies, Of course we do. Although our status is not equal to the tower guards, the higher UPS have granted us quite a lot of authority. At least when dealing with the people from the lower floors, we can directly arrest them and have seven days to gather evidence. Even if we arrest the wrong person after seven days, we release them and the higher UPS don't ask. Bok Vu thinks to himself that this isn't because the higher UPS trust them but because they look down on the people from the lower floors. It seems that the changes County Tan Nok wants to make are very difficult. Then he coldly says to bring all suspects related to the cases here. If your manpower is not enough, call more people from other groups. The interrogation team Van Tu and others thought they misheard him. What did he say? All of them Bok Vu asks again as if it's normal. Is there a problem? The interrogation team is stunned. A problem, no problem. That's hundreds of people. Can you handle it? These are cases that have been unsolved for a year. He thinks Bok Vu cannot manage that many people. But Bok Vu says that when outside the tower, even the team leader or Lam Vo NHU, that little girl never doubted my word. I hope you all do the same. The interrogation team chuckles. Oh, your really strong Lam Vo NHU isn't someone who curses at people. Not friendly to the rookies, right? Bok Vu starts flipping through the files and says, Coldly do as I say. Hurry up, only four hours. Dozens of criminals from the lower floors have filled the interrogation room, nearly becoming a complete mess. The interrogation team sits taking notes and muttering, That's a lot of people to bring in. Can he really handle it? At that moment, Lu Mo puts his hand on the shoulder and asks, Why so many people? The interrogation team answers to investigate the case. On the orders of the boss, Lu Mo is puzzled, What's the situation? Is there a big battle happening on the lower floor? The interrogation team explains no. These are all suspects from previous unresolved cases. Now being called up, it seems like they want to solve all the cases at once. Hearing this, Lu Mo is stunned, solve them all at once. Ridiculous as County Tan Nok, a detective. That kid must be really bored. Anyway, never mind, you go ahead and be busy. I have to rest after completing the mission. Completely exhausted, he said and then left. Then the man came to the surveillance room and asked the clerk how the situation in the interrogation room was. The clerk immediately greeted the interrogation team, That's great. You've arrived just in time, Bok Vu is about to start the interrogation. The interrogation team signaled everyone to sit down. Then looked up at the screen and recognized that the person being interrogated seemed familiar. I remember this is a murder case. The victim is the husband of the suspect. Both are from the lower floor, but the woman looks quite classy. Seems to come from the third floor afterwards. The investigation team leader found out this woman had an illicit relationship with another man. Moreover, her relationship with her husband was also not good. It could be said that it was like a hound dog making an utmost effort to pursue the girl and then marry her, but only in name, not in reality. Therefore, the team leader was very suspicious of this woman but couldn't find evidence. In the interrogation room, the woman seemed a bit annoyed, young man. The day my husband died, I was at the casino. At that time, the casino staff could testify for me. Bok Vu's eyes focused on the woman. Khan Mat Fu Loy noted that she was not the murderer but an accomplice. A business person who lives by sharing orders. Born on the lower floor but trying to appear like a lady from the third floor. Having a close relationship with the casino manager. Every day she shares luxury items with others but has no savings. But that has no effect on how she looks down on her husband. Making money by gold digging. It's best to have the little sister call that corrupt casino manager here for interrogation. Bok Vu guessed the nature of this case. In short, she colluded with her lover to kill her husband for money. The motive is money after all, she is a businesswoman having an affair with a casino employee and complicit in murdering her husband. 
Bok Vu just needs to look at her once to know the whole affair. He gestures with his hand towards the camera in the surveillance room. The interrogation team leader in the surveillance room immediately orders the clerk to go to Bok Vu's room immediately. Bok Vu also picks up the file and steps out calling the clerk that's great. You've arrived just in time go to the file archive to find the casino manager I've written about. Then bring them for individual interrogation. Apply the interrogation techniques just ask according to the information I've noted. Their confidence will soon be shaken. Hearing this the clerk freezes on the spot. Bok Vu continues to another interrogation room I'll interrogate the second case in another room now. This case I leave to you guys just 5 minutes later. The second case is also resolved. The thunder eye directly points out the location of the weapon for him. Bok Vu informs the young man that the weapon is hidden in the crevice of the bookshelf. Which is a smooth patch. Then Bok Vu starts the third case. After an hour the speed of Bok Vu's case solving is so fast that the interrogation team's manpower is insufficient. He has to borrow people from other teams. Hurry up lend me some people from team 3. The 9 people of my team are not enough already. The boss brought this guy over he's too strong. The case solving speed is so fast that I have to mobilize team 7 and still lack people. I had to borrow from you guys. Of course that person doesn't believe how fast the speed is. Hey Tham don't exaggerate too much. The interrogation team coldly replies with a sound resolving 10 cases. Hearing this that person is stunned. The interrogation team continues that kid acts as though he has read the criminal script. Terrifyingly effective due to pinpointing the exact criminal evidence. Having said that he rushes outside let's not talk anymore. I have to take this file and go urgently. You guys quickly lend someone to help out. Oh right when you see old Quatch and Captain Lu ask them to pass the message. I also need to borrow more people from team 11 and team 13. Then the interrogation team returned to the monitoring room and told Van Tu and Tiet Tu to take this file to Bok Vu. I will coordinate with other groups on the issue of borrowing personnel. Now which case is Bok Vu interrogating? Tiet Tu replied the 12th case already sir it's too fast. With this speed the interrogation team started to worry Tiet Tu. Turn off the surveillance cameras quickly archive the recorded tapes of the previous interrogations delete everything for me. Tiet Tu was puzzled not understanding the team leader's intention. The interrogation team explained I have a premonition with this speed. The kid might create a record by solving 100 cases in one day. With the characters of those team leaders who like to lure talented people. They will definitely not pass him by. As long as no one knows what happened in the interrogation room. They won't be able to pinpoint exactly who it was. In the office of Team 13's captain. Lu Mo pondered over the personnel loan request. What's going on why does Team 7's interrogation claim that all the pending cases are now closed? And need manpower to help arrest the related suspects. Even the people from Teams 3, 9 and 11 have been borrowed. Lu Mo smirked coldly don't joke. I am well aware of Team 7's capabilities. Those long-standing cases would have been resolved long ago if they could be. Unless there was external support. Thinking of this the smile on Lu Mo's face gradually disappeared. He remembered that the short guy County Tan Nok had found a treasure two days ago. The rookie named Bok Vu Lu Mo angrily slammed his hand on the table several times. He felt very frustrated Lu Mo cursed under his breath. Why is my team numbered 13? In the surveillance room of Team 7's interrogation. The team leader sighed not expecting that after resolving our cases. Bok Vu also resolved all the pending cases of the interrogation groups within the investigation corps. This month the case closure report we submit will surely receive many high-level rewards. However the workload that the team leader assigned to Bok Vu this time was definitely beyond 7 days. Now that he has completed everything in just one day it's too outstanding. I am worried that it will cause some unnecessary trouble. At this moment Van Tu led Bok Vu into the surveillance room to report to the team leader. Bok Vu has some matters to discuss with you. Earlier team leader Dean Moi just heard you mention supplies from above. The team leader wearily said that the interrogation team is different from other teams in that it needs to submit monthly case closure reports to be supplied with items from higher UPS. Before County Tan Nok arrived. The team leaders often made fake reports to deceive the superiors. But since team leader County Tan Nok took charge, 
Nobody dares to do that anymore, which led to many cases not being concluded before clarifying the truth. That's why there are so many backlogged files. Reward items from the superiors have not been provided for a long time. In fact, these cases being backlogged for so long is ultimately a delay of justice. Then he handed Bok Vu a cup of coffee, just speak up about what it is. We now have enough manpower. Bok Vu spoke frankly, there is nothing. The sooner it's resolved, the better. The sooner to be free to act, it's just that I need to remind you guys about today's matter. I don't have the talent for solving cases, I just happen to be fairly good at interrogation. As an off staff member of the interrogation team, team leader Tham has given me the opportunity to train. The interrogation group gets your point now in this situation, even if you say you have no talent, others won't believe it. I understand your awkward feeling. Like a good student who finishes the test and says they guessed randomly. It's not convincing. Bok Vu continues after the interrogation of the criminal. I will detail the case for you guys and then you guys can add it to the file. The resolution of this series of cases has nothing to do with me. I just happened to participate. The reason they could be resolved is thanks to the officers closely following the cases. They had found clues a long time ago. In fact, the cases were solved beforehand. It's just that they are only concluded today. There might be doubts, but I will let you guys fill in the details of the investigation process. The progress of the clues into the file. That way, when someone asks, you just need to take out the file to be able to answer smoothly. The interrogation team leader asks, Do you mean to tell us to rely on the case results to supplement the investigation process? And you just play the role of checking the process at the end. But why must we wait for all cases to be solved before concluding them at once? The interrogation team says this reason is not convincing. Bok Vu's eyes became deep, it's to attract the attention of the superiors. The interrogation team is stunned. Attention, what do you mean? I thought you wanted to hide yourself. Bok Vu explains what I am about to say only represents a personal viewpoint. I have no affection for the three upper layers. These past two days, I've also come to understand the lower layer well. Where crime runs rampant just because the upper layer doesn't care. The lower layer will continue to commit crimes. Everything needs to combine macro and micro perspectives. From a micro perspective, crimes are committed due to moral degradation. Compelling life circumstances from a macro perspective. We need to understand how society creates an environment that causes them to continually commit crimes. This is not something that we, the insignificant members of the interrogation team, can change. To change that environment, upper level policy support is needed. Upon hearing this, the team leader was extremely shocked. This reason is too correct. I bet you if the team leader hears this reason, even his cold face will smile. Then he takes the file, you're right. Submitting several cases at once might really attract high level attention. Van Tu and Tiet Tu announced to all members of the interrogation team that we will be very busy in the next two days to ensure that the case details in the file are accurate. And to coordinate the story carefully. At the same time, it is also necessary to manage the criminals well. Then the interrogation team asks Bok Vu if the criminals have been imprisoned one by one. Do you remember the details of their testimonies? Bok Vu just sneers as a member of the interrogation team isn't remembering after one look the lowest standard. This attitude makes the interrogation team want to vomit blood. A few days later, in the office of the team leader, Ko Tan Nok is still as cold as ever. The interrogation team says, Did you solve all the cases? Bok Vu does not deny but just nods slightly. Ko Tan Nok asks, It seems you're very eager to go outside the tower. Hastily dealing with all the tasks I assigned. But Bok Vu says the investigation corps is not allowed to leave the tower at will. Ko Tan Nok says, That's right. So you must act within limits. If I catch you, I will punish you severely without leniency. Moreover, you need to be aware of your own abilities. Do not engage in activities beyond your limits. The Eye of Polo notes to Wai Lun don't leave any evidence behind. And be careful with your safety. Bok Vu finds this team leader more and more interesting. Not long after he sighs, I have already submitted all the reports to the higher UPS. Managing the lower levels is a long term task. But this time, with a large number of cases at once, we will face pressure. But those who oppose us will feel even more pressure. As among them are many cases related to their enterprises. Ko Tan Nok walks over to Bok Vu. Pats him on the shoulder. You've done very well. Then he hands over a merit badge for recognition. If you want to go outside the tower, you can go to the armory to choose some things. 
Some require access rights, but just wearing this. They will let you pass. Bok Vu focuses his gaze on the badge. The Eye of Polo notes that the Corps often goes outside the tower for investigations, so they will pick up many good things. However, most are equipped for themselves. But there are also not a few strange items with unknown uses. Stored in the warehouse with this badge. You can go in and pick them up, trust me. There are more items in the store than even the smuggling port. Bok Vu asks County Tan Nok if there is anything else he needs to be instructed on. Ko Tan Nok says in four more days. A high ranking official from the main tower will come to inquire about details. It seems that the higher UPS are very concerned about the content of this case. Especially since the high level malevolent ones still retain their sanity. They will ask for some details that Bok Vu's response will be able to handle. But he further asks about Lam Vo Nhu and Thuang Tiu at they will also be questioned right. Ko Tan Nok replies indeed everyone will be questioned. Bok Vu has one more thing he hopes County Tan Nok can keep secret. Finally about the spinning table I found. Don't tell them okay County Tan Nok raises an eyebrow is that spinning table something special. Bok Vu says I am still researching it. When I have results I will report to you. Ko Tan Nok agrees immediately I understand. I will have a private talk with the others. No one will mention the spinning table at all. Additionally this is the agreed statement. You take a look then he hands over to Bok Vu an investigation report detailing the entire process of exploring Hospital 9. But there is one change. That is the role of leading and guiding everyone by Bok Vu has been changed to Don Suong and Bok Vu. This is not to steal the merit of the rookie but to protect him. Ko Tan Nok looks at Bok Vu and finally remembers to pick a few self-defense items from the weapons warehouse to bring along. After Bok Vu leaves County Tan Nok starts to have a headache. Unexpectedly the task of seven days the kid handled everything in one day. And even brought unexpected surprises. It seems I need to reassess the capabilities of Bok Vu. Ko Tan Nok thinks the main task of the weapons team is to research and develop weapons. And the preservation of the spiritual items is just secondary. One of the young members of the weapons team named Kin So. When reading Bok Vu's notes he just knew this was the third person in a love triangle. Van Tu likes him but he likes Tiet too. After that the two step into the weapons warehouse. Inside although messy it contains various items that the 16 investigation teams brought back. All of which have been spiritualized. Bok Vu silently observes and notices many items that are useless or not useful for exploration outside the tower. For example someone's coffee cup. Found in the rubble of a city. Using it to contain coffee will retain the best flavor of the coffee. But it's limited to coffee only. There's a voice changer machine that can change your larynx. And automatically choose a deep voice. A high voice or a male female voice as you like. Lam Vo Nhu would probably like the iron blade catching gloves 100. No need for a note to know its feature. Although most items are strange. Bok Vu still finds something necessary for himself among the weird items. The indestructible mask. But it will gradually reveal your true face as blood and health deplete. This mask seems to have a fate with you. You once saw a note related to it in Mental Hospital 9. Bok Vu finally remembers that he once saw a document in Mental Hospital 9 about a man wearing a mask in the neighboring city. He captured the evil spirits and sent them to Mental Hospital 9. Bok Vu suddenly finds it interesting that someone had previously been to that city. It seems that the world outside the tower although random the areas might have hidden connections with each other. His thoughts are interrupted by Kin so you're only choosing the mask. Bok Vu nodded Bok Vu said the rest here are daily necessities without known uses. Compared to them the mask is more useful. But you're not choosing anything else. But Bok Vu had decided he didn't need more. That's enough the next day Bok Vu brought the mask to Lu Chan Tu's shop. Lu Chan Tu was excited as this a psych team spirit item. How unusual ordinary people have hardly ever seen this. She chattered asking Bok Vu to lend it to her for a few days. But Bok Vu didn't pay attention. Only asking if the equipment and procedures had been arranged yet. Lu Chan Tu patted her chest proudly look who I am. If I can't handle such a small matter I am worse than a foolish dog. By Monday noon I had arranged the equipment. Without revealing your identity. However my boyfriend hasn't agreed to let me use it regularly yet. We have to see the program's effect first. If it's good he will let me use it long term. 
Then Lu Chan Tu took out the handcuffs. These are the handcuffs prepared for the live stream on the lower floor. In total, there are only three. The other two are at other live stream companies. The recent live stream merchandise is fake because outside the tower is too dangerous. People daring to go are getting fewer by the day. This year, there are a total of six live streams outside the tower. But in five instances, the live streamer was torn apart by a demon. You can imagine the scene inside and outside the tower then. Despite the fear, the viewers below found it very thrilling. Therefore, the real sponsors of the Pirate Port are very much looking forward to your first show. Movies with live streamed deaths were a hit once upon a time. But films are fake while live streaming outside the tower with these people is like the underground fights of old times. Truly stimulating the senses. Bok Vu thinks based on past experience, my survival rate is only about 16. But anyway, now below, there's no longer any decent way to make money. With a physique immune to the demon. I might as well try it first. If it really doesn't work out, returning to the tower is also fine. At this moment, Lu Chan Tu cheerfully offers him an outfit to try on to see if it fits. This is the outfit worn while live streaming outside the tower. It's even been enchanted. Bok Vu couldn't help but be startled. It was a tight fitting superhero suit from 700 years ago. Extremely ugly, the system advises to reject it. Because it's really too terrible, despite indeed being an enchanted item. Capable of withstanding some attacks. After resolving the clothing issue, Lu Chan Tu just remembered the last missing step. You are a person from the investigation team. You are not allowed to leave the tower on your own. But you can register as a freelance mercenary. A freelance mercenary is also equivalent to a bounty hunter. Having this identity will make it easier to leave the tower. The two of them went straight to the decadent street to register the mercenary information. But the owner said for humanitarian reasons. A mercenary team must have at least six people to register. However, young friend, you know. For every policy from above, there is a countermeasure below. As long as you are willing to pay 500 tower coins. Even if it's just you alone, you can register as a mercenary. The identities of the other five members will be falsified by the higher UPS. Seeing Bok Vu spread his hands, Lu Chan Tu immediately took out 500 coins from the backpack and handed it to the boss. The boss told Bok Vu to set the names and nicknames for the team members. But Bok Vu had already thought of it, Constantine. The boss found the name quite cool. If considering the demon as a type of monster, then Constantine the demon hunter also makes sense. The second member, who is he, Bok Vu, replied Bok Fu. Hearing this, the boss was stunned. This second name was too casual. He continued to ask the name of the third member. Bok Vu said, There will surely be a next time. The fourth is next time there will be this moment. The boss looked confused. Behind Lu Chan Tu was trying not to laugh out loud. But right after that, she stiffened her face because the name Bok Vu set for the fifth member was Lu Chan Tu. And the name for the sixth member was twisted into next time. Surely there won't be. The boss had met many people. In the past, there was even someone who took the nickname Very Fast Road. Very Meaty Road, Forest Road, even more bizarre ones. But this time he was also taken aback on the spot. After all the procedures were completed, Bok Vu led Lu Chan Tu back to his place so she would know how to contact him later. Lu Chan Tu was slightly angry, feeling that Bok Vu was too rigid. Anyway, now they were partners. She also demanded to have one use of the camera for herself. Bok Vu agreed, of course it was possible. But I want to know why you care about the camera so much. What's so special about it? What has it photographed? Lu Chan Tu wanted to hide it. Her attitude somewhat awkward, who told you there is something about that camera? Bok Vu said, because I think the camera has taken some sensitive images. So, of course, I have grounds to guess. And her expression has already given it away. As partners, we should explain clearly what has happened. Of course, you have the right to refuse. Two years ago, two of my friends disappeared. In the tower, there is a clear distinction. The ones above oppress those below, it's a common occurrence. Three years ago, beautiful girls from the lower floors began to disappear one by one. About one a week, the commonality being that they were all beautiful. When people from the lower floors go up three floors, the outcome is mostly the same. Men will be arranged into fierce life and death matches. Women also face a bad end. But beautiful women usually go through some other things first. As for what, there's no need for me to say you understand. Saying this, Lu Chan Tu bowed her head. 
Clearly disheartened, Bok Vu thought to himself. In the era where the tower social system is outdated, such things have a very high probability of happening. The fate of those girls is surely not good. After the upper floors have exploited and grown tired of them, they don't send them back down but arrange for them to leave the tower. I've heard that all the evil outside the tower are humans transformed. I wonder if there will come a day when you investigate outside the tower. Will we meet someone from the tower again? This statement made the atmosphere become heavy. After a while, Lu Chan Tu broke the silence with a laugh. It seems this question cannot be answered. Actually, I used to do another job. I and two friends opened a clothing store, so that even the people from the lower floors could wear fashionable clothes. Don't look at me like that. I also once had big ambitions, but then they disappeared, and the goal the three of us pursued obviously disappeared too. The store closed, which could be considered as me escaping disaster. I also lost the interest to continue the old path, wanting to accuse the nobles of the upper floors to the tower's guard squad. You need to have convincing evidence. If only they would not interfere in other people's affairs. How good that would be. Bok Vu gave an answer close to the truth about Lu Chan Tu's friends. They might have tried to investigate the kidnapping of young girls from the lower floors by the upper floors. That is not something the people of the lower floors are allowed to meddle in. Most of the missing girls are isolated and have no place to rely on. Lu Chan Tu's two friends, who might have opened a shop on the lower floor, perhaps also show that all three of them had certain capabilities and relationships. The theory is that the nobles from the upper floors, when they want to have fun with women, will not choose such people, but they still went and actually captured dangerous images. But that also led to serious consequences. The film in the camera was finally destroyed, and its owner also disappeared. Lu Chan Tu continued to associate with many different men. Her relationships became increasingly wide. Perhaps it was also for precaution. Now I also understand why registering as a mercenary was so easy. To allow those above to easily do things that cannot come to light. Indeed, this is a world of the tower from top to bottom like that. Having a just heart is good. But they did not properly assess their opponent. Bok Vu's sudden words made Lu Chan Tu startle. It seems you have guessed it already after so many years. Perhaps they were discarded by those above and thrown out of the tower. Bok Vu, if my friend has become a demon, meeting me outside the tower, would he eat me? Bok Vu is also not sure anymore. The world outside the tower is vast. One should not think about things that have not happened. However, if I meet them, I will convey your memories to them. Hearing this, Lu Chan Tu, who was immersed in sorrow, suddenly lifted her head. Her eyes briefly touched with emotion, but before she could feel moved for a few seconds, she was chased out by Bok Vu. I have to change clothes to prepare to go outside the tower. Go out after that. He put on a cloak and wore a V mask. Thus, Constantine was born. Their faces pale, breathing heavily. The captain reminded softly everyone to stay calm. Don't think about what just happened. The blue-haired boy's face was panicked. He spoke stutteringly, but Captain Tam Jia and the pockmarked face. The captain immediately covered his mouth, warning him to calm down. Otherwise, he would throw him out of the tree hollow for the evil spirits to eat. Evil spirits come after human negative emotions. The second and third elders are already dead. Do you also want to die? But the bald guy next to him is also in despair. The roulette wheel back was destroyed. Maybe now we can only wait to die. Inside the tree hollow, it became silent again. There is no roulette wheel back, even if the evil spirits outside no longer exist. Four hours ago, a group of five bounty hunters entered the world outside the tower. Among them, the one with the sharpest senses was this bald guy. He realized that in this strange forest, there was only one very weak evil spirit. The captain sneered, thinking that this expedition was very simple. They felt no need to avoid confrontation. They could face it head on after four hours. Only then did they realize how wrong their assessment was. One of them paid with his life for that stupidity. The attack power, speed, and defense capabilities of this humanoid monster were as weak as those of a rushed evil spirit. But its unique feature was its regenerative ability. The captain immediately shouted, "Old third, turn the roulette wheel back immediately. Return to the tower. Hurry up!" But as soon as he finished speaking. The evil spirit seemed to know the function of the roulette wheel. Immediately killed the person carrying the roulette wheel back and stole it. Then it bit the wheel into pieces, seeing the only path to life being cut off. 
The three had no choice but to find a tree hollow to temporarily hide in. Either way, all three of them would slowly die due to the many negatives overwhelming them. The captain said gingerly, Now it seems. That evil spirit had pretended to be weak from the start to lure us in. We've fallen into a trap, moreover. If I am not mistaken, it has a not so bad intelligence. Otherwise, how would it know the function of the roulette wheel and prioritize destroying all of our roulette wheels? Having said that, the four hours of the three people outside the tower were up. Gradually, negative effects began to appear on their bodies. The captain felt very helpless initially, we had no means of resistance. And now we're burdened with even more difficulties. It's terrible, the blue haired boy asked the captain with tears. The evil spirit is eating the corpses of those three. If we can keep our calm, Perhaps we can still escape death. Perhaps due to the influence of the effects. The bald man was very desperate, don't hope anymore. It's certain death in the world outside the tower. The chances of someone accidentally seeing us are very low. Or let's just reminisce about the beautiful past. But the captain became spirited again, old four. Stop talking, we may die. But at least let's not wait to die. You two regain your spirits. He noticed that the rain had stopped and thought they might try to run away from this cursed place. But just then, the sound of footsteps outside the tree hollow startled the captain. How did the evil spirit arrive so quickly? Suddenly, a male voice resounded outside Can all three of you come out so I can see you? The rain will pour again in another 300 seconds. It's urgent timing if you want to survive, then come out quickly. So we can survey the terrain and exchange information. Is it a human, meanwhile? At the smuggling port in the lower level of the tower. Lu Chan Tu used the walkie talkie to order a change of channel. As soon as the voice stopped, the low quality fake live stream suddenly switched to another live stream. The audience saw it was a live stream from outside the tower, and immediately became interested as it had been a long time since anyone dared to live stream from outside the tower. Meanwhile, the four people outside the tower finally met each other. The eye of Poloi noted why are there only three left in a group of five? Why does the evil spirit keep counter attacking? Why is the roulette table destroyed and shattered? Behind the bald mont's head. What kind of personal story is there? Under the tough exterior of the orange haired one. What unknown secret is hidden? Is everything behind the distortion of human nature? Or the collapse of morality? Welcome to the world of disciple number seven. After reading the note, Bok Vu was quite surprised. This time the evil spirit seems to be a fellow disciple of Elijah. The bald man asked, When did you arrive? Are you a demon or an evil spirit? The eye of Poloi Luang knock a string of strength. A level 3 entity was revealed in a state of negative fallen decay. He truly had contemplated death, but now his will to live is even stronger than the other two. To the extent that he could do anything, you should remember my words. Because at the final challenge, you will have to make a choice. Bok Vu still casually asked, Am I a ghost or a fiend? Both choices are not good. Do you really want to die that much beside? The captain cautiously asked who are you? The eye of Poloi Duong Chan a string of strength. A level 3 entity was revealed in a state of negative chaotic decay. This person speaks in an antiquated manner. Too bad Hong and Wood has been closed for 700 years already. No more filming X-Men otherwise with such a standard tough image not to film would truly be a pity. I need to warn you he just had the thought of killing you. And robbing the roulette wheel however. He is very chaotic right now Bok Vu gently pushed the sharp knife to one side you have lost two teammates. Dead because of your underestimation. A string of strength at level 3 is already very weak. Furthermore you seem not very familiar with the way. If I am not mistaken you've been here for over 4 hours. Hearing this Duong Chan felt a jolt in his heart. Could this be an expert of sensation level 4 or above? Otherwise how could he instantly recognize the level of the strength chain? It's not right that only a person with sensing abilities could come to this area is it? This person is profound and unpredictable. Having said that he retracted his knife Bok Vu introduced himself you can call me Constantine. If you want to survive it's best to put aside some petty thoughts. Hearing this the blue haired boy suddenly had hope can we really survive? The eye of Poloi Tan Lam a level 2 6 segment strength chain is currently in a state of negative sluggishness. You are the most timid and compliant among the three. Also the most ordinary you have an interesting talent chain the talent chain 777 the roulette wheel of joy and sorrow. 
At that moment Duong Chan spoke up sir. Why not let us use the roulette wheel to return? Then I can bring more people to rescue us. My name is Duong Chan in the world of freelance mercenaries I also have some reputation. You can trust the words of Duong Mo. Hearing this Bok Vu's gaze continued to focus on the three men. The eye of Poloi in this instance. All three must be present if one is missing there will be bad consequences. The three correspond to eight different outcomes. Each outcome will have different rewards money. Fame information spirit signed items. Or a sequence of talents or wanting it all. Or you should carefully consider each choice. Bok Vu thought carefully about this note. The eight outcomes seem to be related to the number of survivors. With these three sick names indeed there are eight combinations where all three survive. One person survives or two people survive totaling exactly eight cases. Perhaps this copy is really interesting. Thinking so Bok Vu rejected Duong Chan's request. Duong Chan was dissatisfied why. Should NT the one with the best reputation be the one to spin the wheel and use the team code to bring reinforcements to rescue us? Bok Vu calmly explained have you ever thought why it doesn't kill you? But instead destroys your roulette wheel. Duong Chan replied in fact I have also deduced that the monster has a certain level of intelligence. Bok Vu coldly said that's right. It deliberately allows you to escape. Not in a hurry to capture all of you at once. It is amused by your fear and despair. To the demon the more you fear. The more you despair the more negative emotions you will have when you die. And it will like that taste even more. Destroying your escape roulette wheel. Playing with you all just to make the meal more delicious. The blue haired boy collapsed on the ground. So the monster has just been toying with us all this time. Bok Vu continued however. This is also good you no longer need to try to hide the fear in your hearts. Because now it's not necessary if at this moment a prey runs away. I can assure it will go crazy. Finish the rest so now. Do you still want to send someone back to the tower to bring reinforcements? Luang Nok asked in return if that's really the case. It can sense you then would you be scared and run away. And let it eat us. But Bok Vu said unfortunately it can't sense me. Duong Chan startled impossible. Bok Vu slowly approached if we want to survive here. We must discover the secret of this area. Then kill it Duong Chan turned back to look at him. Feeling like the person in front of him was even more superior than that monster. The man looked at his watch. Two and a half minutes left until it's his turn for the rain. He put the watch in his pocket and told the other three survivors we must find the next shelter before. The conversation will continue on the way. Duong Chan felt strange hold on. How do you know for sure that there is another shelter here? But Bok Vu replied do you know in what state mutated hunters like their prey? Not negative waiting to die. But still hoping struggling incessantly. The three people pondered and seemed to understand Bok Vu's point. He continued to explain in other words. Since the forest has only one fiend. Why hasn't it filled up all the shelters over the centuries? Perhaps it's all intentionally left by it. Look carefully around the distance between the trees is completely even. The area of the canopy is also exactly the same. Duong Chan woke up that's indeed devilish. I should have realized it sooner. We are facing a beast that likes to torment its prey. Bok Vu asked you were taking shelter from the rain just now weren't you? Is it acid rain Duong Chan replied that's right. It looks like rainwater but in fact it's a corrosive liquid. However it has no effect when it falls on plants. Mainly targeting us. Initially there were five of us. One person went out to scout in normal rain. But in just a moment a layer of his skin was eroded by the acid rain. He died right out there. Bok Vu also guessed so the negative emotions of you guys fluctuate strongly. Attracting the monster to come right. Duong Chan remained silent bowing his head. That's right but that fiend is very weak. Its speed and strength are not strong. Bok Vu sat down and rummaged through the branches and leaves on the ground. Responding so in the first four hours you guys felt confident that you could win right. Duong Chan intended to explain further but was interrupted by Bok Vu. His gaze focused on a mysterious deep hole. The eye of Fu Loi noted that inside there is no fiend. Just the carcass of an animal we could find clues from. But we should hurry Dandelair is already searching for the next meal. There are 400 seconds after finishing reading the notes. Bok Vu thought to himself Dandelair must be a fellow disciple senior of Elijah. Disciple number 7 then he ordered the bald guy above to keep watch. While the other two accompany him down the hole. 
The bald guy reacted naturally. Why do I have to stay behind? Duong Chan also thought he was suitable. Someone has to keep watch, and you have the feeling that old fourth. Follow the arrangement. Then Bok Vu turned back and instructed, "I will lead shortly. You guys remember not to leave the formation." But Duong Chan stopped Bok Vu. Wait a minute. How about letting Tan Lam go first? It's safer. Seeing them taking the initiative like that, Bok Vu recalled the 777 talent string of Tan Lam's Wheel of Fortune. The effect of the Wheel of Fortune is that there is a 67 probability of encountering misfortune 77 times the norm in a day. If not hitting misfortune, but the remaining 17, that person's luck will be 777 times the norm. The man had sacrificed two teammates. Now his luck had increased 777 times compared to normal. Therefore, team leader Duong Chan wanted him to lead. Perhaps there would be good fortune in the tunnel. Bok Vu kept silent, guessing that today might be Tan Lam's lucky day. Who knows? There might be some transformation. When everyone entered the rock cavity, inside was not too dark because the rock walls were covered with strangely red glowing mushrooms. The rock cavity twisted like a tunnel, but there were no branches. In other words, if you hide here, there is no way out. At this time, Tan Lam tried to talk to reduce fear. Hello, friends. My name is Tan Lam, but Bok Vu coldly interrupted. You should move faster. If not, the bald guy will sound the alarm soon. Bok Vu began analyzing the surrounding environment. There are special mushrooms. The cave is winding, along with acid rain falling from the sky. The ecology here is similar to that. As he was thinking, Tan Lam, leading the way, stepped on a bone, making him stumble back a few steps. There are bones here, human bones here. Bok Vu told him to step back and then move towards the human skeleton. His eyes focused on it. The eye of Fu Loi noted the human skeleton of a woman who died more than 200 years ago as one of the collections of Dandelier. Other collections are elsewhere. Moreover, he left behind a dying message that is hard to discern as true or false. The monster can regenerate infinitely, even if badly wounded, it recovers quickly. But if it comes into contact with rainwater, it will be in pain, needing a period of time to recover. What Bok Vu paid attention to was the note describing the dying message as hard to discern as true or false, meaning that while the dying message could be the summary of experiences from predecessors, it could also possibly be mistaken in that belief. Bok Vu asked the other two, "Tell me about the evil beast. Did you guys notice anything else when fighting it?" Duong Chan said, "The evil creature has a human mind, but its whole body is decomposing. Its speed and strength are not outstanding. The most troublesome is its ability to recover. No matter the injury, it recovers immediately." Bok Vu wants to confirm something. Is it that every attack is like that? Duong Chan hesitated for a moment, then replied, "Not exactly. When the evil creature was about to carry Lao Tu's body under the rain, it seemed to be partly burned by the acid as well." After hearing that, Bok Vu thought of a possibility. Perhaps what can kill this monster is the world outside this tower itself. Just trapping it in the rain might kill it. But how to keep the monster always in the rain? Now Bok Vu understood the terrain. Each area has an equal size. Arranged like a chessboard, the dark areas will be attacked by acid. White areas might avoid the rain. However, the acid rain is not always. There are also winding caves underground and a few safe havens. Bok Vu sighed, regretting that time is almost up. With the current information, it's still not enough to find a way to break the situation, and he felt something was not right. Why do the notes deliberately suggest that the information is difficult to distinguish between true and false? The information extracted from the dying words of the human skeleton really matches what Duong Chan said. Is this 100 authentic or a lure? A ring has caught Bok Vu's attention. This lady skeleton beside has a key item. Marked with a high level of importance, just like in an RPG game, Bok Vu picked it up to examine the Eye of Thunder noted the day before. When Dandelier visited this lady skeleton, he left behind this ring a small detail like that he should not have overlooked. But you can't blame the little friend beside him; he's too lucky. This is a wedding ring. Whoever wears it will temporarily love the person helping them wear it, being enveloped by the intense happiness of marital bliss. Even if it's a corpse, but only limited to outside the tower, you figured it out already, haven't you? Wait, you're not planning to do something strange with the ring, are you? So you're that kind of person, interesting indeed. I feel the same. Right then, there was a sound of stones falling outside. 
Both of them realized that was the secret signal of Luang Nok. Hastily calling out to Bok Vu in that pit that's the signal of Lao Tu. Constantine we must leave this place quickly. At least move to a more spacious area to avoid the rain and fight. It's too cramped here being cornered will be like a trapped cat. The atmosphere suddenly became tense. Bok Vu put the ring into her pocket and followed them. Up to now the women of this world still haven't interested him. But the ring might be of use in future situations. Acid rain quickly approached. Colorless tasteless droplets fell onto the forest. All three moved very swiftly. Thanks to Luang Nok's cooperation they quickly escaped from the cave. He asked if the three people found anything down there. Luang Nok replied that it was a dead end down there. Other than the human skeleton there was nothing else. Bok Vu intently looked into the fog. The Eye of Thunder noted again that in the human body there are many fluids including a white fluid from ancestors. The red fluid is blood and the green fluid is bile. Although this is transparent I suggest to you this is not saliva. Bok Vu thought it must definitely be stomach acid. Luang Nok and the other person were at a loss now what should we do? Only to see Bok Vu point ahead it's coming this way. You guys look at this moment under the giant tree not far away. The evil creature pursuing them was staring at the four through the hazy mist. The evil creature's eye of thunder is a level 4 mutation. Dandelaire's mutated mental force. Perfect mutation infinite regeneration. Mutation error speed and strength significantly reduced. Bok Vu was slightly surprised just a level 4 mutation and yet so weak. It seems that the possibility of a counterattack and defeat is not Duong Chan's and the other person's delusion. However this term mutation error is the first time I've heard of it. It seems to be an attribute that is advantageous for our side. Furthermore the mental force is also noteworthy. The Eye of Thunder continues to note that it's regrettable Dandelaire is serious. He doesn't keep a diary otherwise. On each twisted page of his diary you would see the words healing and saving lives. Causing you to be unable to sleep having to sit up and look carefully at midnight to see the words between the lines. The whole written answer correct gets 3 points. If wrong then death this is a 3 point multiple choice question for a correct answer. Answer incorrectly then Dai Bok Vu couldn't help but pout even coming up with a fill in the blank question. Combining the information previously provided by the Eye of Thunder. Plus what Elijah encountered earlier. The gathered information all relates. Except that cannibalism is a normal manifestation of the evil creature. Why is Dandelaire's cannibalism being especially emphasized? This must certainly be important information. This mutated evil creature is staring intently at the four people. Making Duong Chan tense all over. What should we do now? Bok Vu answers that currently under the influence of acid rain. The evil creature on the other side is also not acting. We're the same right now we can't do anything. Before the rain stops just stare at it temporarily. Be vigilant about it Duong Chan continues to ask but when the rain stops it will come right. By then we haven't finished discussing. Luang Nok suddenly remembers something this Constantine is originally an expert. Facing an evil creature not as strong as this isn't it easy to overpower. Bok Vu naturally guesses his thoughts. But he doesn't want to fight with the evil creature. At least now is not the time. He evasively says a few words about the fighting ability of this evil creature being very mediocre. In this game of chess it can't catch up with us. We just play a game of cat and mouse with it. We will explore the hiding spots. But in the process of going to hide. We will send one person to stay behind and restrain it. Duong Chan is stunned who will do the restraining. But as soon as Bok Vu finished speaking he patted Duong Chan on the shoulder. You stay behind okay hearing this Duong Chan was slightly surprised. Damn it if it doesn't fall into a negative and chaotic state. I can still hold back the evil creature. But seeing Duong Chan wanting to refuse. Bok Vu emphasizes even more I am talking to you. The roulette wheel in my hand is our hope for survival. The other three of you no matter who holds the wheel will attract the evil creature. Only I want so unless you guys don't want to go back anymore. The task of restraining must be handed over to you guys. Then he raised a finger. Telling Duong Chan that chaos actually just changes your perception of direction. Among you guys it's the easiest state to deal with. You just need to find the level of deviation. Identify the current level of directional error that's all. The rest is just letting your eyes and brain coordinate. The other two people's eyes widened. Feeling like this guy seems to know everything. 
Five minutes later, under the guidance of Bok Vu, Duong Chan realizes that he seems to have really found the pattern. He put on the mask and then turned around, go on hand over the restraining task to me. But I don't know how long I can hold it back. All I can say is do your best. But Constantine, can you really get us out? Bok Vu immediately asked back, or do you guys still have another choice? Not long after the acid rain completely stopped, the evil creature rushed forward as soon as the rain stopped. Almost at the same time, Duong Chan charged forward. In an instant, he severed the right arm of the monster. Meanwhile, Bok Vu led the other two to the next shelter. The two hurriedly followed, not daring to delay at all. While leading the way, Bok Vu pieced together clues. All three of them cannot die here, especially since there is an important step remaining behind. The survival of all three is related to the information provided by the Eye of Thunder the first time they met. Perhaps both hold their own secrets and represent a certain variable, but that's what makes it interesting. In a square structured battlefield like this, I really feel intrigued. At the illicit port Nan on the lower level of the tower, Bok Vu's outside tower expedition is being live streamed. But this live stream has no sound, making the audience unclear even though the scene seems much more real than before. But it's not interesting at all. A live stream without a storyline is completely boring. Especially since the main character Bok Vu can dodge dangers, which makes the live stream effects far inferior. Therefore, the audience raised their hands in protest, demanding to change the channel. I'd rather watch low quality fake live streams instead. At this moment, at the second floor, Lu Chan Tu watches anxiously. She also doesn't know what Bok Vu is doing, which is completely opposite to the initial imagination of the scene where Bok Vu slaughters the evil creature. Clearly, the reason for the live stream's failure is because this evil creature did not rush to attack upon smelling as usual. That makes the show's effect very poor. Right then, a staff member of the organizing committee comes up. You're the person responsible for the live stream this time, aren't you? Lu Chan too became flustered, turning back stiffly. Yes, that's me. Meanwhile, in the crowd, a boy about 15, 16 years old squeezed through the crowd, his small frame being blocked outside the inner circle. He came under the huge TV wall and began to observe the expressions of the staff members. The audience was irritated. The organizers were disappointed, and the live stream team is the most worried. The boy quickly realized that Lu Chan too was bowing her head in apology on the second floor. At this moment, Lu Chan Tu kept bowing her head, apologizing and asking for five more minutes. I assure you, this live stream will definitely be worth it. But the organizing committee member presented a report, Miss Lu. We also hope this live stream will be successful. But these numbers aren't good. Look at the audience in the square; they're shouting and demanding to change the channel. We're also under a lot of pressure. Lu Chan Tu kept pleading, "Please give me five more minutes." Right then, outside the door, the sound of an employee cursing could be heard. Both turned around to look. Turns out the employee was stopping a guy. This kid, stop right there. This isn't your place. But the blonde-haired guy was still excited. Miss, let me help energize this live stream. It'll get everyone excited right away. Lu Chan Tu snapped to attention, not knowing who this boy was, but he spoke very truly. The blonde-haired guy continued, "Give me a chance, sister. The live stream is already bad now." The organizing committee is about to find you to discuss changing the program. You don't want the program to fail, right? The staff member was stopping the little guy, and he was still saying something. Clear out all of you, so I can take care of this. Let the blonde-haired guy give it a try, sister. My name is Deep V Min. I will do the voiceover for free. And surely after that, the program will be better. Lu Chan Tu quickly seized the opportunity. That's a good idea. Voiceover. It must be said that it's not a bad idea. All right, it'll give you a chance, but there's a condition. That strange masked guy there, Constantine, must be emphasized very prominently. Deep V Min responded, "Leave it to me." Immediately afterwards, from the giant TV screen, which had been silent for so long, a dialogue of great malice was heard right behind us. Now we must find a place to hide quickly. The audience shouting to change the channel suddenly fell silent. There's sound now. What happened earlier? The voice continued according to the current information. This place contains a priceless treasure. All three of you follow me. I can sense it's nearby now. This voice is completely different from the previous voice of Deep V Min. This made Lu Chan Tu extremely surprised. A person who can produce so many different voices interwoven like that is indeed an astonishing skill. 
The key point is that throughout the process the malice was never seen. But his language created an atmosphere of tension. Worrying for the audience how fortunate to have found you. When understanding that this area is a belly, you will see the tree hollows the tunnels. The mushrooms all have their own roles. Constantine the tree hollow ahead has no exit. The entire book filled with magic is completely unreadable. Do you want to see it? The eye of Fa Loy records the symbols on it are actually the Bible of Dandelaire. But to decrypt the detailed content, perhaps you need to unlock the previous copies first. Bok Vu shakes his head, no need for that. Keep going, the information in this tree hollow is very limited. But in his heart, he knows. This book is just like the dossier. Surely we must face the final boss before we can read it. He quickened his pace, we must hurry. The rain is coming soon, but Tan Lam hesitates, Constantine. Boss, he's okay, Bok Vu spoke while walking, no problem. Hurry up, we must find a safe shelter before the next acid rain comes. In Bok Vu's heart, he continuously pieced together clues. Previously, he had been to two areas the dilapidated streets and the abandoned hospital. Those places are very similar to the real world. Only this forest made him feel it was arranged meticulously like a chessboard. Which area will have acid rain if this is a belly? Then what role does Dandelaire play? Meanwhile, Luang Nok becomes more in control of himself as he fights with the evil torment in a state of chaos. He realizes it's time for the acid rain, so he quickly runs to the prearranged shelter. Leaving Dandelaire alone in the rain. The acid raindrops fall on his skin, causing smoke to rise and him to scream in pain. Tan Lam looks back as that scream described by Yu Bok Vu. It seems your team captain is fighting quite smoothly. Using acid rain to maximally weaken this monster with infinite regenerative abilities. But Bok Vu still doubts whether acid rain is really the best measure to control Dandelaire. However, it's not rare for elite hunters to intentionally leave vulnerabilities. The truth still needs to be verified. On the other hand outside the tower county Tan Nok from the investigation department receives a call. The person on the other end of the line calls him Xiao Ju. Saying that the task he asked for has been arranged. With the help of Xiao Dai Tu. That kid will surely become a famous star in the lower levels. However she couldn't arrange for protection outside the tower. Ko Tan Nok responds coldly is there anything else. If not I will hang up the phone. I'll contact you later I am still busy. The woman afraid he would hang up immediately says there is a matter. It's important Xiao Dai Tu is one of my potential successors. How will you compensate if it's revealed too early? You really allowed me to take Xiao Dai Tu out. To support his startup in live streaming. Even spending money to arrange relationships with the organizers. How long have you two known each other? That you are so good to him don't tell me you like men. Ko Tan Nok says when my person comes back. I will have him contact Deep V Min. That kid is very smart. But my person can help his talent. The woman insists on your person. Hearing this county Tan Nok immediately takes off his headset. And says coldly human tool. Having said that he coldly hangs up the phone. This is a tree house built on the branches of trees. But in the eyes of Bok Vu this shelter is like a target. He walks slowly up the stairs. Intentionally avoiding the bald man you stay down. Prepare to support us or Duong Chan okay. I will keep watch down here. Hurry up the eyes of Polo note a welcome to the outdoor home of Dandelaire. Inside are the essential items to get through phase 1. You'd best open your eyes wide as the two of you push the door and enter. Inside it's very clean and empty. On the table there are only 3 items different from before. You can take all 3 things but 2 among them will give misleading directions. Only one thing can truly help the 4 of you escape the difficult situation. A syringe with a drug to erase negative states. An umbrella that can shield against acid and that round object there is a roulette wheel that can be used. Seeing the roulette wheel Tan Lam immediately becomes excited. But Bok Vu falls into deep thought. Another puzzle there is only one thing that can lead them to the next phase. The other two are misleading directions. The note continues but that's not all. If you try to use the other two it's very possible it could lead to the death of one of the three people. Bok Vu recalls the saying of three people. Eight outcomes information from the note seems to imply that the number of survivors will affect what happens later. And there's a big question here why are the three of them here? Is it due to the random rules of the outside tower that accidentally brought them here? Or has everything been arranged in advance? It's as if it had been prearranged at hospital number nine. 
Moreover, there's a bigger question will I be passively choosing one of the eight outcomes? Or will I actively make a choice? These two cases have a big difference. Choosing passively means I will try to protect the lives of all three. But in the end, due to many mistakes, it leads to the death of one, two, or all three, whereas actively choosing means I deliberately choose a certain outcome. For example, deliberately sacrificing one or two people. Or I think all three should die so I don't save anyone. But if it's the latter case, it means at least one of these three people has a serious problem. Harboring bad intentions, thinking of this, the corner of Bok Vu's mouth slightly raised. How interesting, he asked Tan Lam, do you want to leave this place? Tan Lam replied, want to, of course, I want to get out. Bok Vu continued, but what if only you are the one who gets out? And the other two die here. Hearing this, Tan Lam immediately panicked, can't you save all of us? Bok Vu said, maybe I can't save that many people. To be honest, if I can only save one, I would choose to save you, however, in my heart. I think differently, let me borrow some of your luck today, all right? Tan Lam sighed, Mr. Constantine. The things you're saying are just possibilities, aren't they? Bok Vu didn't answer, but asked him to answer his own question first among these three things, the revolving table turning back to us. The tube of medicine for erasing negative statuses. The acid resistant umbrella, which do you think is the most important? Tan Lam bowed his head and thought you ask which is the most important, huh? But I find all three very important. The captain is in chaos and Luang is misled. With the medicine, we could help both of them get rid of their conditions. And I am just guessing here, maybe the monster is afraid of rainwater. If we have the umbrella, can we try to lure the monster out into the rain and destroy it? As for the revolving table, if there were three of them, that would be good. But having just one doesn't seem too important. Bok Vu thought to himself, that's basically what I was thinking. Now all the clues to this strange maze are missing only the final piece Dandelaire's notebook. Which will explain everything this is a logic puzzle. If of the three items only one can help me escape and achieve one of the eight outcomes. Then surely it's not the revolving table. Because once the revolving table is activated. I can be certain the worst evil will definitely kill the remaining two people. But if the revolving table is the wrong choice. Then the highest probability is. At this point Tan Lam suddenly spoke up I think the umbrella must be the most useful. If we are to choose only one most useful thing then it must surely be the umbrella. Bok Vu continued analyzing correct. The umbrella is the most useful but on the condition that rainwater can indeed kill the evil one. Clearly Dandelair is different from the other low level evils. Though he only has a level 4 muscle distortion. He possesses perfect mutation. Perhaps that is the weakness that the professor created to distinguish Dandelair from the others. Which made him possess intelligence so the question arises Bok Vu continued to ask Tan Lam how do you feel about this room? Compared to the previous hiding places. Tan Lam scratched his head what do you mean sir? Bok Vu said don't you find this room unusually clean? Tan Lam replied now that you mention it. Indeed that's true Bok Vu continued the evil one's whole body emits a rotten smell. But this room is exceptionally clean. Compared to the previous hiding places. This place seems as if it has never been visited. Do you find that reasonable Tan Lam said absent-mindedly perhaps it has never come here. Or it doesn't know what's in the room. But Bok Vu said perhaps it's all just a facade. The safest shelter to avoid acid rain seems to look like this. But this place shows no signs that match his evil preferences. Which is to enjoy slowly the air of desperation of his prey. Hearing this Tan Lam shuddered. Fearful that perhaps the acid rain can't kill it at all. Meanwhile the young man was doing voiceover for the live stream program. The audience was extremely delighted. Silently observing the shop owner saw this scene and became very excited. The audience's satisfaction was now ablaze. The manager assessed based on the current situation the audience's satisfaction is extremely good after the sound system was restored. Soon this will be the hottest live stream. Hearing this the girl's face beamed. The hottest this kid Yap V Min is really talented. It looks like this time I bet right. Just now Bok Vu realized the bald guy had been hiding his negative state. He asked Tan Lam the negative state of Duong Chan is chaos isn't it? Luang knocked then told him you mean he's emotionally disturbed right? Tan Lam replied exactly even though they seem to still be in control. Bok Vu thought to himself the true negative state of Luang Nok is clearly depravity. The information from the notes can't be wrong. So why did he lie? 
Although I do not know what the specific attribute of depravity is, it can be inferred that it possibly means a will subdued by evil. That means if we do not quickly remove the negative state from Luang Nok, a traitor might appear among the three of us. Therefore, the injection must definitely be used. Thinking this, Bok Vu had finished answering the selection puzzle. He still handed the umbrella and the roulette to Tan Lam to hold. Although they are misleading clues, but conversely, they can also be exploited to misdirect Dandelier into our rhythm. Now, only the final question remains: If acid rain can't kill Dandelier, then what can at this moment? Tan Lam wondered, Mister Constantine, why don't we take the injection? Bok Vu holding the syringe goes out the door. It's okay. We are about to use it. Let's go. The rain has started to fall. We have to find another shelter. Meanwhile, the acid rain is pouring down. Under the tree, Luang Nok is going through mental agony. That evil creature cannot die. There's only one roulette returning. Who will Constantine give it to? It must be Duong Chan then. Duong Chan is the team leader after all. He is the one who killed my second brother. That bastard Duong Chan deliberately sent my second brother to scout ahead. Even though both were scouts, my second brother was more strategic, and I have better senses if I had gone to investigate. Maybe my second brother wouldn't have died. How pitiful for the third brother just because he secretly said a few words about Duong Chan's beautiful wife when the evil struck. He even sent the third brother to the back. The youngest is nothing special, just survived by luck until now. A useless guy. Why did I fall into depravity while he is just slow? Depravity is actually an extremely rare negative state. Once it appears, it generates feelings of hatred towards one's peers. If we don't return to the tower soon, I might even turn into an evil being. At that moment, taking advantage of the gap, Bok Vu plunged the syringe into Luang Nok's neck. All sounds ceased after the injection. Luang Nok's mind suddenly became empty. Those chaotic thoughts also dissipated. Bok Vu remained indifferent as usual on a rainy day. Don't think nonsensically. Your negative state has been removed. Take a deep breath. We are about to set off. Luang Nok thought silently, removed. Ha!、Huh? So this is the use of this syringe. What secrets has this Constantine been hiding in the end? If this drug can be mass produced, perhaps the investigation team could have entered the purple zones by now. At this moment, Tan Lam helped Luang Nok stand up. Are you feeling better? Luang Nok answered, "I am feeling better. I almost made a big mistake just now. Did you find this syringe in the house?" Tan Lam explained, "Yes." Mr. Constantine took one look and knew the use of those things. Luang Nok was utterly shocked. One look means Constantine knew the use of the injection. It seems that he had seen this type of drug before. Perhaps it's thanks to the effect of the Wheel of Fortune. Despite losing two old teammates, we gained a character with real combat power in return. Now all the clues are nearly connected to each other. However, there is still a missing key piece. Just need to find that piece to explain the secret of Dandelier. I have completely grasped the terrain of this area. This is a symmetrical chessboard. Our confrontation with the evil is like an asymmetrical game. One side plays the role of a giant monster, and on the other side are the weak trying to survive. In the safe house before, the notebook with strange symbols was exactly like at Hospital Number Nine. At Hospital Number Nine, you stepped into the memories of Hong An. Perhaps it's related to Hong An's abilities, or related to those cloud tattoos. So the notebook is also a gateway into memories from the hiding places found before. Not only is the forest terrain divided very symmetrically, even the positions and distances between the hiding spots are very precise. It seems that Dandelier has, to some extent, obsessive compulsive disorder. The common saying is in all directions. Now we have reached the four corners of this forest chessboard, so there must be four more main directions containing clues. Now to unmask Dandelier. We only miss one key. Bok Vu looks towards the south. The Fu Loi Ai notes that to the south there really is a cemetery. Inside contains the skeleton of a mercenary. But you already know Dandelier's tricks, so there's no need to go there. It seems the guess about a shelter in the south is correct. However, Dandelier has laid out quite a few pieces of fake information. Bok Vu looks towards the east. He continues to look towards the west. Indeed, this is the path to take. After Dandelier dies, a gap will appear in this area. But first, you have to kill him. In short, this way is a dead end, although it doesn't reveal any information. The paragraph confirms one thing: Dandelier and this whole area are definitely connected. 
even as one entity in the end. Bok Vu looks towards the north when seeing the notebook full of annotations. Surely you must think like me. But fortunately in the nearby cave contains something you are familiar with. Inside is Dandelaire's secret. However that secret may change your view of him. Almost at the same time the acid rain also stops. Bok Vu heads north as the rain clears. Let's go Tan Lam asks sir. Where do we go now time is of the essence. Bok Vu doesn't explain but only says follow me. He constantly analyzes the last sentence in the healing notes. Perhaps Dandelaire has a complex past. In 10 minutes the truth about Dandelaire that the controller hides must be found. Meanwhile on the other side of the forest. The situation of Duong Chan is not very optimistic. He panted heavily behind the damn rock. Having pushed him out into the acid rain several times yet he still recovers with that terrifying resilience. Can the acid rain really kill him? At that moment Dandelaire who had been silent all this time suddenly said it's not me who will kill you. Duong Chan was stunned this was the first time he encountered a demon who could speak. Most demons are just pure predators. Dandelaire was expressionless. Just standing still looking in one direction. The master is waiting for the prey do not let my prey degrade. Initially thanks to the appearance of Constantine the fear was suppressed. But now Duong Chan felt a numbness overwhelming him. This demon always played with its prey. Dandelaire continued to emit the laughter of a saint this is a chessboard. I am pleased to become the peace of the master. Because he will lead us to destroy that damn tower. Seeing this Duong Chan started to flee in panic. But Dandelaire did not follow. Just kept repeating those same words with that terrifying laugh. No matter where Duong Chan ran. He could still hear the mocking voice of Dandelaire echoing in his head run away. Run it's not me who will kill you. This is the last refuge hidden in the mysterious forest. As a person with sensory abilities. Luang Nok could immediately feel the presence of a person inside. But it's strange that the door is clearly open. If there really is someone inside why aren't they coming out? At this moment Bok Vu feels a sense of unease. Since stepping into the forest he always felt like he was solving a puzzle. The strange maze resembling a chessboard is also like the belly of a monster. The notes about Dandelaire eating people and healing them. The spell-filled notebook including the sudden appearance of a person. Along with the three people Duong Chan Tan Lam. Luang Nok could affect the outcome. All combined make the puzzle become more complicated. From the moment he met the three people to the skeleton with a soul. He always felt that Dandelaire represented a form of pure malice. The hatred of demons for humans. Although Dandelaire has certain intelligence. But thinking back to Elijah before. Bok Vu always felt that the image of Dandelaire should not be that simple. Now he guesses a possibility. Every clue lies in this room. He instructed the two people behind to stay here. If there is any movement notify me. Having said this Bok Vu stepped inside in his mind. He actually did not trust those three people. From the outside looking into the dark house. But inside there was a faint light like a candle. Quickly a large chest caught Bok Vu's attention. Someone was hiding in the chest. On top of the chest was a set of documents placed there two days ago. My advice is that you should nt open it. But I know you want to know the truth more. When Bok Vu stepped closer a weak voice echoed from the chest Dandelaire. Is that you Bok Vu said nothing. Just walked over to the chest and gently picked up the set of documents. So it was arranged two days ago in your heart. Then the planner might be the owner of the treehouse. That is the professor in other words. This room indeed contains Dandelaire's weak point. As well as the professor's most crucial technique. Bok Vu began to read the set of documents greetings investigator. When you tried using acid rain but it was ineffective. I guess you realized this area is not the strange forest. And Dandelaire is a child who really likes to play dirty tricks on others. Its real age is only 6 months older than Elijah. Speaking of Elijah I originally intended to tell you about the girl's past. But in that hospital there was a work of art that even surprised me. You were quite surprised when you met the girl weren't you? It's unimaginable that in this area there is a life form stronger than me. I've come to realize that my actions were somewhat redundant. Perhaps from that artwork. You could learn a lot more. According to Bok Vu this is definitely the style of the professor. And that professor must be a supreme villain. Probably existing in what's called the purple zone. Even possibly the red zone however. The professor's remarks about Hong and are extremely high. He turned to the second page of the notebook. The content is about the salvation of Dandelaire. 
Through the seal I can connect Dandelaire with this child. Initially they were one now please allow me to leave this event as the penultimate riddle. Who can possess two different experiences at the same time? Although it's called a riddle the answer lies in the content behind this set of documents. I think after reading those contents. The distance between us will be narrowed. Bok Vu really doesn't know this riddle. He turned to the next page. A strange drawing appeared before my eyes. At the same time that familiar feeling reappeared. The rough scenery suddenly changed. The voice from the dandelier box echoed in my ears. Is it you everything has become vague. 1,922,017 The people dressed as doctors talk to me today. They say life is very fragile. And the greatest thing in the world is to sacrifice oneself to save others. Even though the process is very painful. But people will be grateful to me. I will be loved by many people just like the stars on TV. 532,017 Today I met a nurse. She is also kind like the doctors. Does not hate or fear me. She told me stories and said I could ask the doctors for some things I want to eat. Want to play want to watch stories. 632,017 Today the doctor was very surprised why I made those requests. But I remembered the advice of the nurse so I didn't answer the doctor. The doctor's mood was indeed quite good. Because she said the hospital has been very famous recently. Healing many injured patients. I am also very happy with the organ shortage. But she was still sad because the doctor had refused my request. I've been lying on the surgical bed for many days. The doctor's face seemed irritated. Because my growth rate seemed too slow. He complained that the demand for orders was growing. Many people were waiting for parts of my old body. But I selfishly resisted. I am in great pain and feel so guilty. But I am not selfish I have tried very hard to grow. If only I could recover a bit faster. I don't want the doctor to be angry. 04062017 Today I feel a bit weak. I told the doctor that I don't want to lie on the operating table anymore. The doctor's face was very stern. He asked about the many people in need of rescue. If it continues like this they will die. I know that death means falling into a deep sleep. Never to wake up again. It's so lonely I don't want them to die. 07072017 Today I got to rest. But I really want to leave this place. I miss my sister so much and want to talk to her. But my teeth and tongue have been removed. My eyes were also taken I've been very weak these days. I need some time for my eyes and teeth to grow back. The people dressed as doctors talked to me today. They said life is very fragile. The greatest thing in life is to sacrifice oneself to save others. Even though the process is very painful. Everyone will be grateful to me. Today I met a nurse. She is as kind as the doctor. Does not hate or fear me. She said I could ask the doctor for some things I want to eat. Want to play want to watch stories. But she seemed sad and told me to try to remember. Remember 11,052,018 today I feel like I have forgotten something. I asked the doctor if I seem to have forgotten something. The doctor's face was very annoyed and he quickly left. I must have said something wrong. But what have I forgotten I have to ask the doctor for some new things. Like toys books food but now the doctor seems angry. I can't ask for anything more. I am sorry I've done something wrong again. Sorry sorry 14,052,018 recently the doctor seems to be in a better mood. He even talks to me occasionally. He says I have saved many people. Everyone loves me even though he always says the same thing. But I am still very happy the nurse also told me that the hospital's experimental project was a great success. Many excellent doctors in the Lancet Medical Journal think that my existence has solved many medical problems. The doctor seems very happy but the nurse looks very sad. On 05072018 I lay on the operating table for many consecutive days. The doctor's face seems annoyed. Because my growth rate seems too slow. He complains that the demand is growing larger. Many people are waiting for parts from my old body. But every time I fail. I am in great pain and feel very guilty. But I am not selfish I have tried very hard to grow. If only I could recover a bit faster. On 10,012,019 she said she really wanted to celebrate Tet with me. Wanted to take me out to eat she said I had saved many people. Should NT be confined in this cold laboratory chamber. But I don't feel cold at all. I asked her about the people I saved. Whether they still remember me or not her face was very strange. Clearly it was a happy topic but she nodded and cried happily. They all remember me they all love me. 
On 11 million 12,019 today, she said goodbye to me. It's strange we will see each other again. I am just going for surgery. 12 million 12,019 today, I still ask the doctor if they like me. But the doctor does not answer. This surgery, the scalpel fell onto my forehead. Unlike before, it's not to take an organ but to take my brain. I hope the surgery ends soon. Because she is very sad and I want to comfort her. 13 million 12,019 today, the people dressed as doctors talk to me. They say life is very fragile. The greatest thing in life is to sacrifice oneself to save others. Even though the process is very painful. But everyone will be grateful to me. I will be loved by many people like the stars on TV. I remember outside my storage room there was a nurse. She seemed to be crying it all started from 03032018. I am weak or sick once again returning to school. The teachers are very happy but I don't like their look. I am healthy now so why do their eyes still contain pity? Those eyes should be mine looking at them right. That afternoon there was a test for each class. When the test ended the teacher seemed very happy and asked me if I wanted to participate in the provincial competition. I have no opinion on this matter. At least up to now the meaning of my life is to bring some added value to the lives of those around me. 04032018 today is still very boring. This afternoon I had a dream. In the dream I returned to the hospital. Lying on the surgical bed. There was someone very similar to me lying next to me. That person seemed to be calling my name. It was such a strange dream 04042018 the frequency of dreams is becoming more frequent. Each time I would wake up startled in the middle. And each time I only saw a part of the dream. It's like they are directing me to search for something. Today at school a female student confessed her feelings to me on the rooftop. That was probably the happiest thing that happened today. She stuck with me all day and I treated her politely as my parents. And teachers taught but inside I extremely disliked her. We rarely talk what does she like about me. Maybe she likes to rely on me to enhance her self-worth even to change her social class. But she does not know that in my eyes she is like a dish. 06042018 due to many weakened organs. I underwent surgery. But I always feel that after this surgery. I am no longer myself I dreamt that dream again. I gradually got used to lying next to him on the surgical bed every day. His heart liver lung spleen kidneys were all given to me. I even feel that he and I are one. Does he actually exist or not? 08042018 today I finally raised my suspicions to my mother. But she said the organs in my body came from different people. Told me not to think too much. Just focus on studying well. In the future to earn more money for the family. 22042018 she makes me feel increasingly disgusted. She saw the stray cats by the dumpster and said it's filthy. Their skin all ulcerated how disgusting. But on her personal page she posts a lot of pictures with cats. Along with charity money she also dislikes stray dogs. But with the hunting dogs from other homes. She even thinks they are worth more than the lives of underperforming students. She thinks she succeeded in conquering me. Even brags about using me as a topic to show off. That makes me even more curious. What does it feel like to eat human flesh? 04052018 The scenes in the dream are becoming more and more realistic. I seem to see his face a person of the same age. His appearance also very similar to me. He tells me no one likes him. No one loves him it's all fake. Honestly I don't understand what that feeling is like. Until now everyone around has always liked me. I am obedient study well. And am also loved by female friends. My father earns little money but I also don't worry about the future. Everyone loves me likes me. Everyone welcomes me. Shows friendliness to me perhaps for that reason. They can demand some benefits. But I really hate them. 09052018 in previous dreams. He and I talked and laughed happily. Sometimes he complains why everyone is afraid of him. But today he doesn't recognize me. As if he remembers nothing today when returning to school. A girl pulled me into the fencing room to kiss. But I accidentally bit her lip open. Blood slowly flowed into my mouth at that moment. I suddenly felt the diversity of the world. Life is truly amazing I seem to hear the organs in my body praising the fresh blood. Until being pushed away strongly by the girl. She screamed fiercely looking at me with horror. As if seeing a monster. Hey what an ugly expression it's just a torn half of your lip. Your mouth says you like me but can't endure it. 
14,052,018 my father compensated a lot of money and scolded me for causing him to lose capital, affecting the reputation and stock of the company. But what I regret is only tasting a bit of fresh delicious blood. Still it's not bad no more having to see her ugly face that disdains life. I feel something awakening inside me. Perhaps I have found the meaning of life. 20,052,018 what an interesting day. Today I met someone very interesting. The school arranged a psychologist. They want to find out the reason I only have too much pressure. Doing things I should end teeth that's not my true nature. And this psychologist also came up with a similar reason. He is a very interesting person he says his name is Kane. He tells me Dandelaire from now on I will call you Dandelaire okay. You are not a well behaved child at all. Actually don't you just enjoy the sensation of flesh and blood. The name Kane Dandelaire is really strange. But it seems to be surprisingly interesting. 22,052,018 For my birthday I received a car as a present. But I don't like it I am increasingly tired of pretending to be this well-behaved child. In my dream I became friends with that guy again. But I have a feeling he will soon forget me. That afternoon Kane unexpectedly appeared in my yard. He came as a psychologist. Saying he wanted to consult for me my parents were very happy to welcome him. It turns out he knew about my birthday and came to give a gift. He took me for a walk to the garage. Opened the trunk of the car which I originally did not like. It was a sack inside came the moaning of a girl. He asked me if I liked this gift. So on 19,092,019 Kane became my mentor. I told him about the dream where the boy donated organs to me. But Kane said that the dream was real. He also told me that there is another Dandelaire suffering in this world. The world still owes him a great debt. And the purpose of my existence is to reclaim all those debts. 412,020 more and more people are starting to mutate. In the suburbs of the city a species called the evil affliction was discovered. At first I was a bit scared but Cain gave me courage. He said I was born a predator. Everything in the world is my food. Whether it be evil afflictions or humans. But I just want to save that other dandelaire. Kane says that the other Dandelair still has good will towards the world. It's not time yet 432,022 the number of evil afflictions in the city is increasing. Although they still don't pose a serious threat to humanity. Kane also allows me to hunt some evil afflictions. As well as some people I don't understand which side Kane is on. But he says we only belong to ourselves. If evil afflictions are evil we kill evil afflictions. If people are evil we kill people. As long as it's like that it's good 1,572,023 the changes in my body finally can't be hidden anymore. Due to eating too much human flesh and evil afflictions. I have undergone some transformations. So I asked Cain if I am still human. Cain asked me back if it's necessary to cling to humanity or not. Eventually humans will also be driven into the tower. Only with this form can I stay outside forever. Eventually my parents and teachers also revealed their true forms. People began to fear me. It's funny they're angry because they can no longer exploit me. But they still pretend to be pitiful and scared. They want to put me in psychiatric hospital number 9. I know that's where monsters are confined. So have I become a monster already. But their faces are much uglier than mine. 1,192,023 a guy wearing a mask appears in the city. What a nuisance the city was already at peak fear. But now it's decreased because of his appearance. Kane tells me that he is a troublemaker. It's best not to provoke him. When everyone wants to lock me up in hospital number 9. Kane saved me from that fate. He tells me to wait until the masked man dies. Then we will act to save the other Dandelaire. 1,472,024 Kane says the world's rate of change is too fast. People line up wanting to enter the tower. Now anyone left outside is just waiting to die. The masked man seems to have left the city. Or he's hiding somewhere but now it doesn't matter anymore. The city is two chaotic monsters stronger than me start making trouble. They roam all over the city. People begin to flee in disarray. Every day you can see crowds fighting at the supermarket to scavenge for food. However some organizations also begin to build underground shelters. Kane says the world may last another three. Four more years but after 34 years. It will be very difficult to see anyone outside the tower. If you want to live outside the tower not with those creatures. The only way is to become a devil. 
So in the end, Kane and I went to the hospital in the city center. Many times I wanted to rush in. But Kane stopped me and finally I was able to meet the other Dandelier. The door to the laboratory opened. He ran to where he could be exposed to the sunlight. Here no one knows him, no one loves or cares for him. He thinks he has saved others. A hero in everyone's heart. But in the chaotic hospital, no one noticed him, some even looked at him with disgust. He yelled the name of some kind nurse. Maybe a nurse here, but Kane said there has never been a female nurse here at all. Since the surgery, this hospital hasn't had any women at all. The boy used his organs to save others. But he lived in the cruelest environment. Meanwhile, some people living in the best environments become monsters that terrify everyone. There is no justice in this world. And the memories recorded in this diary also end here. Bok Vu doesn't know what happened after that. But he has understood the sequence of events. The transformation of the world didn't start with the appearance of devils. But rather with the environment first. For the world 700 years ago, traveling outside the tower already existed. People with innate gifts would awaken certain abilities, such as Dandelair. At that time, Dandelair was not a perfect devil with a mutation spectrum. An absolute recovery, but was a sequence of gifted genes 42 belonging to humanity's infinite nirvana. From 2017 in the diary over those seven years, Dandelair was treated by the doctor as a human organ. The storage was constantly slaughtered, constantly witnessing memories, constantly saving others. Until the summer of 2024, that terrible cycle finally had a loophole. And the loophole came from another child who had been saved by the organs of Dandelair. The two people, one absolutely gentle, the other absolutely evil, even more ironically. The kind-hearted person lives in the cruelest environment. No one loves, welcomes, or cares for him. While the nurse is like the comb of grace, always preserving the kind-hearted nature of Dandelair. Until everyone abandons him, he still does not harbor resentment from beginning to end. He is still human if Dandelair had met Grace. Perhaps they would have been close brothers while that creator of evil lives in an environment many people yearn for. Possessing wealth resources relationships and a great appearance. But he became a devil too soon. Of course the appearance of the professor. Namely Kane had a very large influence. If at that time there had been a real psychologist. Not Kane perhaps that Dandelair wouldn't have fallen so far. The fragments of the diary are the power of Kane. Linking the two lives of Dandelair. Now Bok Vu knows the final puzzle. At that moment suddenly some words appear greeting the investigator. After all I think both of us realize the evil of human nature. Let me reveal more secrets that you must be curious about. You must want to know how Duong Chan. Tan Lam Luang Nok made it here didn't he? Actually it's very simple I just needed to give them a little guidance. Bok Vu thinking evilly cannot enter the tower. Will be destroyed immediately by some power. Is it so this guy Kane Bok Vu answers Kane you're not evil but still in the tower. It seems you want me to choose ethics right. To use my ethics to threaten me. The critical hit is not Dandelair but me. Right so will you accept my riddle. Bok Vu speaks gently then go ahead and bring it. Alas you guessed a bit wrong. Ethics will not bind me. The order of talent and mutation are naturally two corresponding things. However the order of talent is slightly stronger. It's just that very few people can awaken it. Although in the tower the rarer the gene sequence the higher the position. But actually there are still some exceptions. For example certain numerical sequences. If placed close to each other can create a special combination. Even those sequences that are behind. But appear in certain circumstances. Their effect can be stronger than the rare sequences. Bok Vu's thoughts are actually quite easy to understand. It's like skill combos in a game. The letters of Cain continue to appear for instance the sequence 777 rotating wheel of joy and sorrow. Combined with 666 Satan's kiss. Can cause an unexpected effect. Within a certain period of time. It will make those who do not possess these two sequences encounter bad luck. While the possessor will receive blessings like gifts for others akin to a sacrifice. Bok Vu also guessed that among them there must be someone who knows this secret. The words continue to appear it turns out that among three people. Only Duong Chan knows about this secret. And is also the only one who knows the cycle of seizing fate. Under Kane's guidance they also learned that this area. Contains an extremely rare treasure. At the same time Kane also told Duong Chan that if such a union exists in the group. Even if they obtain the ultimate treasure. 
The one to benefit from it definitely won't be him. Kane asks Bach Vu so can you guess where the owner of the sequence 666 Satan's Kiss has gone. Bach Vu silently thinks that things have come to this point. Perhaps that person has already been devoured by Dandelaire. It could be Tan Lam or the other person. Kane continues Duong Chan's group has committed many sins. In fact the five of them once caused a series of mining collapses thanks to the combination of these two sequences. Every time Duong Chan prepared to carry out a mission, he would send the person with the gene sequence to the white region to absorb good fortune. The death of others would bring them great fortune. Therefore thanks to the strong fortune from teammates. Duong Chan completed many difficult missions and accumulated a lot of reputation. Hearing this Bok Vu suddenly recalled what Duong Chan said when he wanted to retrieve the rotating wheel. He was confident in his reputation. Kane continued to explain that no matter how good the fortune is it's not omnipotent. In the position of Dandelair after losing the rotating wheel they could only be helpless. I also roughly estimated that Duong Chan's group thanks to this combination has killed about over 200 people. The irony is that the mining teams thought they were experienced miners. Knowing how to subtly avoid danger. They survived many dangerous environments. And gradually Duong Chan's reputation in the world of freelance mercenaries grew bigger. And life became more prosperous. Unfortunately in this world there are only evil spirits that eat people. Not God some people who were deceived by Duong Chan's group and died outside the tower were eaten by evil spirits. Some turned into evil spirits but evil spirits can't enter the tower. Even if those tormented spirits go mad and scream outside the tower. It cannot affect the abundant life of Duong Chan. That's why Duong Chan feels so bold. Do you think Tan Lam and Luang Nok are innocent? Although the secrets are not clear. They are also involved. If you don't kill someone but someone dies because of you. Are you still innocent after that? Kane also leaves Bok Vu with a choice question. Which is also the last question for now. Phase 2 of Dandelair is about to complete. A large amount of liquid will spill out from the ground. After 700 years he still likes to watch the prey being slowly digested by acid. I tell you to the west of this area there is a boat that can resist acid. But you have to keep dancing on the stage to get closer to the boat. However if you slip carelessly. The acid will immediately hydrolyze you into a white skeleton. The final note is that the boat can only hold a maximum of 4 people. Of course you can also refuse this question. Turn the rotating wheel back to the tower. I will assume you choose to let them die. And I will continue to hold Dandelair. Or you can't bear to see them die. Wanting to save one two or all. At that moment the image of Cain suddenly appears. Patting Bok Vu on the shoulder and whispering in his ear I look forward to your choice. Then disappearing into thin air. The content of Bok Vu's file also ends here. He contemplates carefully according to the way of speaking. It seems that Kane really resembles that professor. But if he is human. It means he has lived for over 700 years. At that moment the system speaks up Bach please pay attention. If Kane also possesses the 42 Nirvana infinite gene sequence like Dandelair. Then when his body develops to its peak. He will no longer age and achieve immortal longevity. In the past 700 years has Kane acquired any other gifted sequences I wonder. Moreover according to the current information. It seems that he has also been to the red zone. Up to now the highest strategy that I have ever seen involves only him and the dwarf. The eye of Polaris emits signals that could be interpreted as such. But now there's not much time left. The nefarious Dandelair is completing some phase of transformation. Stop thinking randomly. Focus on figuring out a solution. Bok Vu is thinking of a solution. He recalls the eye of Polaris once suggesting that two days ago someone had made arrangements here. And at hospital number 9 there was also an artificial setup. It means the leading roulette could go back to scenes one has been to. Even if it exceeds the effective 3 day deadline. However the first scene I arrived at was not directed by the leading roulette. Moreover with the existence of the eye of Polaris that can avoid all surveillance. Why did I still encounter Kane's disciple? All of this proves that Kane did this intentionally. Perhaps to target a specific person. Furthermore according to the records at hospital number 9. At that time he still did not know who I was. So originally Kane's target was definitely not me. However the first person to enter hospital number 9 was the dwarf. Thinking up to this point Bok Vu suddenly freezes. 
It must be the dwarf according to the recent rumors. The strongest warrior in the entire tower is indeed the dwarf. As a human if Kane wants to destroy the tower then the obvious target is the dwarf. So there is a high possibility that the dwarf has been marked by Kane. Bok Vu can't help but smile. It seems like things are progressing in an interesting direction. He starts to speculate about Kane's intentions. With his current attitude towards me. It seems not to be hostile. Perhaps he wants to test me before deciding to confront. Bok Vu now feels very troubled. Because the question Kane posed is not difficult. He has spoken the answer. For Bok Vu to choose whether to save one, two, three, or all. So whether Bok Vu chooses or not it's all the same. Can't escape from his scheme. Bok Vu can even imagine if he uses the leading roulette to the next scene. He will see Kane's triumphant smile. Thinking here Bok Vu slaps his head to stop imagining that hideous scene. In terms of morality Duong Chan deserves to be torn to pieces thousands of times. But if he dies like that. He will also die with the name of a hero. Thinking of those 200 innocent lives. The hatred has not yet been avenged. Perhaps only the justice that Nak Chu advocates can truly punish the likes of Duong Chan. Moreover according to Lokar's law of quality exchange. The three people Duong Chan Tan Lam. Luang Nak who were deceived here must surely carry clues about Kane. So the three of them must be protected. The eye of Polaris wonders but if only the three of them are saved. Bok Vu secretly thinks that this way he can't save the pitiful person in that box. He says that I must deal with the last thread first. Having said that he opens the box containing Dandelair the human version of Dandelair. How have you lived for the past 700 years? Do you know any secrets about Kane? At this moment Dandelair comfortably shields his eyes from the light after many years. You are asking Dandelair who are you? Then looks at the man wearing a mask. Who are you where is Dandelair where is he? Bok Vu secretly thinks he's not used to being passive. Should also take the initiative to attack sometimes. Only then does the game feel interesting. A note pops up gene sequence 42 eternal nirvana. The power chain stage 3 9 segments. For 700 years you have lived through countless years in the tower without meeting anyone. You witnessed Dandelair killing one person after another. Seemingly reclaiming justice for you. But you are not happy and to make you happy. Dandelair doesn't stop killing. They are close companions but also the most distant. Bok Vu finds the human version of Dandelair very interesting. Kindhearted using his own organs to save the tortured version. But under the tutelage of Cain. The evil tormenting version has completely turned into a monster. You always hope in the same loop. She was very kind unlike the other doctors. But unfortunately that nurse never existed. It's simply another personality of yours. Because the nurse once said you must remember if you truly lost your memory you must remember. How could a nurse ever say such a thing? So the truth is you never forgot. Even though you remember everything you don't hold a grudge. What caused you pain wasn't the severed organ. Nor the stitches nor being imprisoned. Nor the repeated torture but when you stepped out of the hospital. None of the scattering doctors and patients looked at you. I've met many people with dissociative identity disorder. But they all split into different personalities. Some good some evil some cowardly and some arrogant. But I've never seen anyone like you. Where kindness and benevolence coexist. Even in darkness you still aim for the light. I can't forgive those people for you. But after all that suffering. For 700 years you still haven't become a wicked tormentor. Deep down you surely yearn for the day when everyone will love and welcome you. Even if some people want to tie you to Dandelair. Making you believe that he is your other half. But the truth is not so. We all know he is the wicked tormentor. And we are human that is a mutated tormentor. Duong Chan fond of cruel games often carrying out tasks outside the tower didn't dare to continue the confrontation. He immediately turned back to regroup with the team. Duong Chan's face showed utter astonishment the devil can actually speak human language. Where is Constantine why hasn't he come out yet? Our remaining time is not much. At that moment Dandelair didn't pursue. He stopped and said to himself that the transformation phase was complete. Now just waiting for that person's decision. He merged himself into the forest so he could easily kill all beings within the white zone. The sight of humans destroying each other is truly interesting. Hoping that person manages to save only 12 people. And watch the rest despair as they wait for death. Resentful for being abandoned and betrayed by their comrades. That's the most delicious emotion. On the other side in the secret room. 
Bok Vu was still persuading Prometheus that Dandelaire had killed many people. Now outside there are three people about to die. Of course there will be many more in the future. I believe if there's one person in this world Dandelaire cares about. It's you not Cain. For hundreds of years even though you've been in the tower every day by Cain's arrangement. But there was no one else there. No one knew you existed nor did anyone love you. Cain was nothing but a complete scammer. He deceived not only you but also Dandelaire. Dandelaire survived thanks to your organs. Originally he could have enjoyed everything you desired in the tower. But now he can no longer return to the tower. Bok Vu stood up reached out his hand and said join me to stop Dandelaire. And then leave this treacherous place together. Prometheus immediately froze who are you? How do you know so much about my past? Bok Vu said seriously my name is Constantine. Perhaps for a long time to come. I will be by your side I will be your most trustworthy person. I promise to bring you back to the tower. In the future you won't be confined in that narrow space anymore. You can stroll on the crowded streets people coming and going. Reach out to touch the warm sunlight. Although I can't feel the dark loneliness you've had for hundreds of years. But it all ends today. Having said that he helped Prometheus to stand up. At this moment Prometheus could no longer hold back his tears. Do you really exist? Or when I step out of this house? Will you disappear as you have over the years? I have always seen many warm people but in the end they all left me. You're one of them aren't you? The eye of Fullo suddenly lit up noting what a pitiful child. It seems that for the past 700 years he has imagined many people. Not just the nurse he really hoped those people were real. But 700 years of continuous broken hopes. Bok Vu held his hand tightly trying to give him a feeling that everything is okay. Let's stop Dandelaire. Then I will take you home to the man ready to become a monster that eats people. Hunting humans for 700 years. Just to bring joy to the boy who gave him organs. But that's not what you wanted. You once begged that professor. Not to do evil things. You hoped he wouldn't make Dandelaire kill anymore. But unfortunately you couldn't persuade him. That only made Dandelaire kill more crazily. According to Bok Vu the villain in this Bible has deceived two children. He not only failed to convey the wishes of Prometheus, but also intentionally incited Dandelaire's hatred for humanity. Therefore under misguided leadership, Prometheus gave up advising. This only made Dandelaire more determined to reclaim justice for him. However Cain miscalculated one thing in his plan. That is my appearance thanks to the eye of Fallo. Although these eyes only provide incomplete information. It's enough for me to deduce the whole incident. Let's pull Prometheus out of the secret room and go. There are a few words you have to say directly to him. The professor you mentioned is not honest. Let's go out and meet Dandelaire. Prometheus is not accustomed to sunlight. Instinctively using his hand to shield his eyes but still longing to see the warm sunlight. He slowly opened his eyes his vision revealing a dense forest. At this moment Duong Chan shouted out Constantine. You finally appeared. Did you find any clues? Bok Vu glanced through the forest the notes lit up Dandelaire mutant level 7. Psychic mutation rare environmental camouflage. Perfect mutation infinite regeneration. Gigantism pathological transformation debilitation. Although he is higher than the contrary demon by one level. But the disease mutation has limited his speed. His strength is therefore now he can only compete equally with the contrary demon. But you don't have the dwarf beside you. I advise you should return to the city. Back to the city the eye of Fullo starts analyzing. The surroundings in this area seem to be Dandelaire's body. Otherwise the notes wouldn't appear. It's just not clear who Dandelaire has fought with. Both the phase 1 form and phase 2 state have pathological mutations. Theoretically Dandelaire's regeneration ability is not weak. But it might leave a permanent wound on him. Could it be caused by another stronger evil? Moreover a super evil that can transform into a large area. Can immediately kill all its prey. Yet it's only at mutation level 7. So how strong would the grace at level 9 be? Duong Chan interrupts your thoughts who is the child you are holding. Bok Vu speaks softly now is not the time to explain much. After saying that he shoots out a rope. Straps Prometheus onto his back and climbs up the tree trunk with this rope. Stop standing stunned hurry and follow me. The ground now is very dangerous. At this moment Luang Nok mutters why does the boss always do such strange things. Duong Chan wakes up and says hurry up and follow. So the three of them blindly followed Bok Vu towards the west. 
jumping from one tree trunk to another. Bok Vu suddenly says there is a boat in the west. That can take us away from here. Hearing this, everyone hurriedly sped up. But Tan Lam was hindered and unfortunately slipped. Fortunately, Luang Nok reacted quickly, stretching out his hand to pull him back when they noticed that the previously calm ground suddenly erupted with a stream of invisible corrosive liquid like a stream. Thanks to the foul smell, everyone quickly realized it was acid. Bok Vu standing on a tree branch says, You guys should be careful. Do not fall down or you will immediately turn into a skeleton. This is a forest about to be covered by the evil stomach acid. Duong Chan at the back thinks it seems like this guy has discovered some secret in that house. Otherwise, how could he have anticipated the changes of the illusion? To survive, one must keep up with this person. Perhaps the clue to the treasure that the wealthy merchant hired us to find is also in that house. Two days ago, the wealthy merchant could not refuse the very high price to hire us to retrieve a treasure. The advance payment alone was enough for me to live without having to work hard for the rest of my life. Unfortunately, that night the wealthy merchant mysteriously died in his home. And of course, the mission was also cancelled. But what does it matter? I already know the zone number. Just need to get to that area within the validity period. Finding the treasure means it can be sold for a good price. The death of the wealthy merchant has nothing to do with me. Such a case will, of course, be investigated by the Guard Corps team. Thinking so, he urgently asked Bok Vu Constantine, What exactly is this area? Why is acid erupting from the ground? But Bok Vu paid no attention at all, just continuously jumping on the tree branches ahead. Everyone stood frozen and the air also fell silent. Tan Lam broke the silence, perhaps he is the type of person who is cold and arrogant. Hey what is that huge backpack he's carrying? Is it some mysterious object that could save us? But as soon as he finished speaking the backpack that bulged on Bok Vu's back suddenly disappeared. Like an illusion melting into space. The three of them witnessed this scene. Swallowed dryly could it be remote spatial movement of objects? Or is it telekinesis maybe most of them are already level 6 sensitives? Polo's eye lit up with a note I really admire the imagination of the three of you. In the sequence of talents there truly is a chain that can move objects with the mind. And at level 6 sensitives can indeed use special psychic attacks. But the truth is that the backpack was sent by him into a bag equipped with outdoor travel necessities from the tower. Items sent into the bag if not exceeding the size of the bag will not occupy space but there is a weight limit. Currently the stage is 205 kilograms but don't think too much. Living things cannot be stored. 15 second spirit binding in the heart of Bok Vu. So it's off again last time it was the camera. This time it's the backpack I wonder when will my electric rice cooker be able to be spirit bound. Anyway the lucky effect of the happiness and sadness wheel far exceeded expectations. It is a state that just by speaking it can indirectly change reality. If the chains 666 and 777 really exist in combination then that would be a mind-boggling consideration mister. The water on the ground is increasing. Are we going to be submerged? Bok Vu also doesn't hide the fact that we are inside the monster's stomach. Don't ask too much after returning to the tower there will be a place specifically for questions and answers. Right now you all just need to be careful not to fall down. This entire forest is the monster's stomach. That acid is the stomach acid of the monster. Upon knowing the truth Duong Chan's face was filled with horror what? He said this is the monster's stomach. Tan Lam looked up at the sky if this area is really the monster's stomach. Then how enormous must that monster be? Then the three of them did not speak any further. Concentrating all their strength on moving. Clearly they were shocked by the truth at this moment. Bok Vu's attention fell on Prometheus. What follows depends on the past relationship between you and Dandelaire. Although the two are not twins. One cannot deny that in Dandelaire's heart which represents pure evil there still lies kindness. And that soul kindness is the attitude towards Prometheus. After jumping continuously for 10 minutes. The five people noticed that the amount of water on the ground was increasing. And occasionally acid would splash up. This is a sign that Dandelaire is in a state of chaos. Duong Chan slipped but fortunately managed to hook his weapon onto the tree trunk. Otherwise he would have turned into a white skeleton. After that he leapt back up onto the branch. However half of his cloak had been corroded by the acid. Duong Chan glanced down at the pool of acid at his feet. 
Cursing damn why is this water shooting all over the place? At that moment suddenly a drop of water fell from the tree branch. Bok Vu astutely realized that the environment had changed. Clearly it was time for the acid rain. He shouted to everyone everyone converge towards me. Hurry Tan Lam prepare to open the umbrella don't hesitate. He immediately pulled out the umbrella he had found in the treehouse. Quickly the acid was not only spreading from the ground but also pouring from the sky. At this point Bok Vu and everyone temporarily took shelter under the giant tree. Despite the torrential rain it did not penetrate this acid-resistant umbrella. Bok Vu said the rain is too heavy even the total rainfall of several previous showers combined is not equal to this one. It seems we can only wait for the rain to stop before continuing. But in his heart he was very anxious. The speed of the rising water was terrifying. He estimated that in less than 10 minutes. They would all be dissolved by the acid. At that moment Prometheus beside him was muttering something. Looking very anguished Bok Vu gently patted him on the shoulder. Consoling him don't panic express your true desires. Dandelair is your reliable companion. You just need to tell him your true thoughts. However at this moment deep in Dandelair's mind. He could clearly feel the emotions of Prometheus. While continuously recalling the words Cain had said to him over the past 700 years in his role as Master Dandelair. In a few days an investigator will follow the child entering this area on the trail of my prey. And pass the test of choice I have set. Dandelair asked Master. What if the intruder chooses to save the other version? Cain laughed heartily as long as they leave this area on the course I have set. Soon you and he will meet again in the form of evil spirits. But if the investigator gives up on saving that person. And chooses to save those wicked people instead. Then it means more time is needed. Either way I assure you. That you and your brother will ultimately be together forever as evil spirits. The man who is ready to become an evil spirit. Hunting humans for 700 years. Just to bring joy to the girl who gave him an organ. But now realizing that everything he has done is a mistake. You've deceived me you've deceived me. Deceiving me that he has never been happy. He has never wanted me to harm others for his sake. At the same time the voice of Tan Lam was trembling we are really going to die. Duong Chan shouted quickly give me the roulette table. In case the monster doesn't react in time. I will return to bring an army to save you all. But White Mist remained calmly silent. Everyone was silent their composure starkly contrasting the dire environment around. Even the ruthless Dandelair had a heart of compassion. And that sole compassion belonged to Prometheus. Now everything should come to an end. White mist reflected on this brief journey. If summarized in one sentence in this area besides Tan Lam and you. No one else is normal. Duong Chan committed terrible crimes. Murdering more than 200 innocent people. While Luang Nok has malicious schemes. And Tan Lam is actually just a tool like Prometheus. On the other side deep within Dandelair's mind. He was clutching his head crying and apologizing. I am sorry I just wanted you to be happy. But no one likes us at all. No parents girlfriends teachers really love me. At that moment Prometheus appeared behind him it's okay Dandelair. It's alright surely there are kind people who love us in this world. It's just that you haven't found them yet. This made White Mist feel that Prometheus seemed to be even more noble than Dandelair. It's hard to imagine that someone after being subjected to inhumane torment could still retain a benevolent character. Perhaps his brain had been damaged when dissected. Like a child incapable of hatred. Knowing only kindness and innocence. Prometheus said softly look now someone who loves me has appeared right. Dandelair I want to go with him. Hearing this Dandelair turned and hugged Prometheus tightly don't. I don't want you to leave me. I only have you white mist thought silently. If I am not mistaken perhaps Cain promised Dandelair to turn Prometheus into a demon. To keep them together forever to persuade Dandelair. But if it could be done he would have done it long ago. But Cain failed despite enduring so many hardships. Over 700 years Prometheus never harbored resentment towards mankind. Finally in the struggle within. Prometheus decisively pushed Dandelair away. Returning to reality the level of acid on the ground had risen to the position of the branches. Shoes began to sizzle. Duong Chan couldn't help but curse Constantine. Even as a ghost I want spare your family. At this moment Prometheus shouted loudly to Dandelair. I beg you let me go I don't want to be trapped in that dark room anymore. I want to live like a normal human. Let me go your words seem to touch the heart of Dandelair. 
A stream of energy powerful enough to destroy this entire area burst forth from the forest. A beam of light pierced through the layers of the forest. The heavy rain also stopped at that moment. Everyone looked up at the sky in astonishment. Although everyone's mood was filled with negativity, the rain had stopped and the corners of White Mist's mouth slightly lifted. The tug of war between the two had been decided. Just now the sky cleared and the clouds dispersed. People couldn't believe their eyes as they looked up at the sky. The corrosive acid rain had suddenly stopped. Duong Chan pointed to the ground not only that. Look the water level has also started to recede. At this moment the three of them also relaxed their tension. Luang Nok being sensitive. Reacted the quickest what just happened. The child shouted a sentence at the sky. And then the danger passed that statement contained longing and frustration. Who did it finally shout to could it be to the master of this region? Such a malicious child it seems this area is not as simple as Duong Chan said. Moreover Constantine seems to have read the script beforehand. Feeling like he is the dark force behind this. How did he know that information? Right then a gigantic tree grew from the ground. And quickly twisted together to form a sky-piercing colossal tree. The scene made Tan Lam tremble with fear. Stammering what what is this? On top of the tree a malevolent face appeared. The entire scene resembled the dark fairy tales of a man tree. But Bok Vu remained calm not at all scared. He positioned Prometheus behind him. Greeting hello Dandelair hello Dandelair. It seems before letting us go. You want to say a few things right. Then the hoarse voice of the tree sounded you can take him away. But why not kill those other three as well? This I don't understand Bok Vu wanted to correct that this child no longer bears that name. But he hesitated for a moment before saying all right then. No matter what Dandelair has survived. And the remaining three lives represent evil. Feigning sympathy and ignorance your teacher really wants to see how I will choose between the three of them. But I am too lazy to choose at this moment the eye of Thor seems very dissatisfied with the swindler. Clearly all the information superior to others was provided by me to you. Information is everything and yet you are not grateful to me. In his heart Bok Vu was silent then finally thanked you all right then he asked why. They do not deserve to die Bok Vu said softly who deserves to die or not. Is not for you or me to decide. The giant face got a bit agitated the truth has been revealed to you already. Your teacher is right Bok Vu did not want to argue about this all right. That is the truth but even if it is the truth. Even if I am in a dark environment. Where people die every day I still do not like to complicate things. The giant face showed skepticism. Thinking that killing Ha is not the simplest choice. Bok Vu then stated plainly I know what you are thinking. Killing the evil to save the good Ha is not that the simplest choice. A truly lazy person should choose the judicial system. The judicial system has been perfected for thousands of years. Why don't we put aside the bold ideas in our heads and trust in a complete legal system? Seeing Dandelair silent Bok Vu continued to launch a psychological attack your teacher has deceived you already. How do you know these people were not fabricated by him? Hearing this Dandelair immediately closed his eyes. He does not want to argue about this anymore. Because Kane has indeed deceived him. After a moment of silence Dandelair spoke slowly if you can't fulfill the promises. I will definitely eat you. Bok Vu stroked Prometheus head. And said gently don't worry I will make her happy. At the same time I will also help you understand that not everyone in this world is evil. Dandelair once again sized up Bok Vu we will meet again. You are very special even more than my teacher imagined. He will definitely look for you. At this point Bok Vu deliberately sighed I thought you would give me some information about him. Dandelair became heated why should I do that? While you even took away my best friend. Bok Vu then explained that it could not be said that way. To steal a lover is to steal. But friends are just to share. Moreover you have leaves growing on your head not horns. Hearing this Dandelair was also very speechless. Get lost before I change my mind he said then he untangled all the vines. Seeing this Bok Vu said all right then. All right but in his heart he regretted not being able to get information about Kane from Dandelair. Although he has not yet been able to break the relationship between the two. There will also be a little crack between Dandelair and Kane. That is also not a small harvest. Seeing the tree man disappear Tan Lam finally breathed a sigh of relief. He asked Duong Chan we survived right. But Duong Chan still stood frozen. Is it over now at this moment? 
Bok Vu gave Prometheus the spinning table he found in the treehouse. And at the same time taught him how to use it. Seeing this Duong Chan was very annoyed wait a minute. Constantine give the spinning table back to me. What do you mean Bok Vu said indifferently don't worry. I will find someone to rescue you. Now he and I will return first. You guys just stand here don't go wandering around. Of course you also cannot move. After saying that a series of giant vines suddenly tightened around the three people. Causing their legs to go completely numb. Bok Vu was still indifferent as always don't scream anymore. I am different from you I always keep my promises. Hearing this Duong Chan began to panic. Damn it does this masked guy know about our past. Indeed it's a trap there's no treasure here at all. The wealthy merchant did not die either. At this moment the smile on Constantine's face looked truly terrifying in his eyes. The boy opened the spinning table and a strange power began to spread everywhere. At the same time Bok Vu also opened his spinning table. And returned with Prometheus to the tower. A note popped up the current area exploration rate is 74. The number of remaining calamities one piece of the regional apocalypse map has been transferred. My assessment is excellent. You have stolen the light within the soul of that mischievous kid. You must take good care of him. That is an SSR card see the note. Bok Vu thought to himself that a child would never become a calamity. And has the potential for infinite regeneration. It seems that with just a little training. The boy could become an unkillable flesh shield. Truly a rare SSR card. This trip's harvest is also quite big a rare SSR card. A ring that cannot increase affection. And a backpack that cannot change the difficulty of going home. It's a pity that my time outside the tower is too short. The chain of power has hardly increased. Still at level 1-9 segments it seems that later on I have to think of ways to increase the continuous living time outside the tower. Moreover always mentioning the apocalypse map. Surely that is very important. But Kane has transferred those pieces to the most difficult areas outside of control. The world outside the tower is random. Kane also only grasps the layout of some areas. I can no longer use the spinning table to lead. If not I will encounter all his disciples. The escape technique is not always successful. Outside the tower there are still countless vast places to explore. Why be stubborn with Kane? Moreover those areas are all carefully arranged by Kane. Should not follow his rhythm. At this time Prometheus speaks into the Dandelaire forest. I have to go thank you for taking care of me all this time. I will remember you the image of Dandelaire appears over the forest remember to take care of your health. If anyone dares to harm you come back here. Here I will protect you even the master is not allowed to hurt you at all. Prometheus smiles don't worry about me. I will be alright but those people. Can you not harm them? In a bit the man with the mask will bring people to take them back to the tower. Dandelaire sighed I originally intended to eat them. But seeing your face so tense. This time ill let them go Prometheus waved his hand forcefully then I am off here. Goodbye Dandelaire the note from the eye of thunder lit up congratulations. All four were brought out safely. This successful conclusion I forgot to ask you. When you return how do you plan to arrange for this kid? Will you let him join your investigation team or your mercenary squad? Considering you only have that useless daughter. From the name it seems that the kid is quite suitable. The image of white mist gradually disappeared. It's indeed a problem however. If he wants to join the investigation team he needs a more common name. Such a complicated matter still have to think carefully about it. After that the two disappeared leaving the other three trapped. Meanwhile at the smuggling port on the bottom floor of the tower. The livestream also stopped. Thanks to the boy's great storytelling ability and speaking skills. The audience was extremely eager to know what would happen next. But everyone was cursing and making noise damn it. Why stop at the most thrilling part? Is this the end when will the next chapter come out? The man brought the 700 year old child to the investigation team. But Captain NGU criticizes that it looks rather ugly. But it's memorable so your name is cloaked masked knight. The note from the eye of thunder lit up haha. -ha. Unexpectedly the dwarf has a talent for sarcasm. You're right errant you cloaked masked knight. White mist gets straight to the point captain. I want him to join our team. Hearing this NGUQS gaze suddenly became sharp give me a reason. This made Prometheus. The child who hasn't met anyone living for hundreds of years. Even more frightened he shivered behind white mist. But white mist still smiled don't be afraid. Wait for me a moment then he walked slowly to the desk of Ko Tan Nok. 
at the same time using the eye of thunder to check if there were any eavesdropping devices in the room. After confirming there were no listening devices, he took County Tan Nock's pen and wrote on paper his findings from this live broadcast outside the tower I found this child in the forest. According to estimations and conjecture someone with a code number in the tower took him outside. Above is the information about the child even his limbs, internal organs and even his head were cut off. He survived and regenerated in a very short time. I don't know if this is the ability of some gifted sequence or not. If so that sequence must be at a very high position. I think we should be cautious and report back to the captain. After some training, he will become the strength of Team 7. Seeing this County Tan Nock quickly picked up the paper, frowned and thought for about three minutes. Finally he lit a fire and burned the paper written by White Mist. Then he instructed him to keep this matter a secret. White Mist pretended to be surprised I understand. The note from the Eye of Thunder lit up conveying the investigation results this time in writing showing trust in the dwarf. While also cleverly explaining the abilities of the kid. After that he acted naturally. Not overdoing it to conclude really wonderfully. But why did you think of revealing the kid's true strength to the dwarf? In White Mist's heart he thought do you still remember when we first came back to the tower? What information did you provide me about Prometheus? Just a few hours before the two of you returned from the tower to the teleport hall. The Eye of Thunder reminded you that Prometheus had lived for hundreds of years without encountering living people in the tower. But now thanks to your help, he is about to start the life of a normal investigator. Although Dandelaire is still killing people. But that no longer has anything to do with him anymore. Hey the kid carries a secret that interests the sixth floor of the tower. Although he knew at that time White Mist had realized the secret that made the sixth floor of the tower interested. And had also previously made a similar suggestion when meeting the dwarf and Don Suong. If all three people have that in common. It's surely a talent sequence in the top 100. Moreover the dwarf's gene sequence is stronger than Prometheus 42 sequence. Don Suong is noted as the Avenger. From this it can be inferred that the nobility at the sixth floor of the tower may be looking for people with rare talent sequences. However whether to deal with these people or to entrust them with responsibilities. I think the first possibility is higher. Therefore as the leader of the external tower investigation team. A future deputy team leader. I firmly believe the dwarf can hide his and Don Suong's secret. So certainly he can also hide Prometheus' secret. The man wanted to ask for news about the leader of the heretical organization. But the captain of the new continuously shook his head I have never heard that name. White Mist was very surprised because Kane's initial target was new Ku. However Prometheus also did not know anything about Kane. No idea about the voice appearance or even the floor the boy was imprisoned on. White Mist thought carefully in the history of hundreds of years before. How many fates similar to Prometheus were there? What exactly was the chaos in the world outside the tower during the years 2023 to 2027? Is there still a supremely evil force hidden within the tower? At this moment the notes of the Eye of Poloi popped up incidentally. For some reason I suddenly remembered Magneto. An extremist mutant leader. Striking without convention leading to becoming a cult for a long period. After reading the notes White Mist also thought that Cain was perhaps some kind of wicked leader. Evil righteousness because in the files outside the tower. Amidst the text there always emanated the disciples reverence for Cain. Even Dandelaire called him master. Despite knowing Cain's deceptive schemes. They still continued to follow his arrangements. Does that mean the other disciples did as well? White Mist guessed that Cain seemed to have promised to lead them to destroy a certain tower. The note popped up is it possible that this tower is the tower in question. White Mist said that currently everything remains unconfirmed. But now I must stay away from Kane. Can no longer use the roulette to lead anymore. While he was thinking Ancient Blue Jade quickly approached Prometheus. Bent down and asked what's your name Prometheus startled. Then awkwardly replied that his name is Dan Nutt. My name is Prometheus now I am called Prometheus. Ancient Blue Jade still frowned too hard to pronounce. Writing it into the investigation report will be suspected of fraud. Change to another name at this moment Prometheus was slightly disappointed but I really like this name. Ancient Blue Jade then stood up. The attitude was very firm in your disguise missions. You can continue to use this nickname. But in the mission of the investigation team. 
Your name will be White Little Feather. The eye of Poloi could not help mocking the naming skill of the dwarf as too awesome. The person White Mist brought back is named White Little Feather. Next time, probably have to name it White Understanding Wind. At this time, White Mist's face was gloomy. He felt wrongfully insulted, but Wu Ju didn't care. Happily, decided to always remember. If there's a mission, will inform you. Besides my order, all tasks assigned by others are forbidden. Do you understand? Then instructed White Mist further. The identity of your cloak should be kept secret. Don't reveal it anymore. White Mist nodded, thought to himself how convenient the storage bag was. Changing identities was also easy. It's just that later everyone will know Constantine and the investigation team are on the same side. Then he said to Ancient Blue Jade to entrust White Little Feather to the team leader for arrangements. Kane might become aware of his existence. Team leader, remember to be careful with the man who is only one meter Ancient Blue Jade tall, but can give a 700-year-old child a sense of security. This little brother is truly strong, but unlike the oppressive feeling from Kane. This is an indescribable sense of safety. He is a trustworthy person. Ancient Blue Jade silently walked slowly back to his seat. White Mist smirked, thinking that entrusting White Little Feather to Ancient Blue Jade was good. That way, if Kane discovers, it will also misdirect him, making him think that his opponent is the dwarf. Ancient Blue Jade told White Mist to remember, "You need to build your own force. Ensure that key elements can be trusted. I can keep a secret for you here." But on the other side, you need to be sure that girl is trustworthy. White mist stretched leisurely because Lemon Child has revealed the secret of the camera. It means she has become my person now. Then he asked the team leader if there were any more instructions. Ancient Blue Jade, indeed, there is still a matter I have arranged for you. A student named Yi Wei Ming. Meeting your girl, you will see him. Previously, the things you did were too noisy. Reports about solving a hundred cases were submitted, which made the higher UPS pay great attention. White Mist really wanted to explain that Lemon Child was not his person, but still is being highly regarded by the higher UPS. Not a good thing. But Ancient Blue Jade said that it is a good thing. Yet the Tower Guard Corps is not very happy. White Mist is somewhat different. The investigation team manages the lower levels, while the careful guards manage the noble realm. They are not happy that Ancient Blue Jade frowned on the third floor. A major case occurred due to our team's overly high efficiency. I received a message from the fifth floor telling me to send only four people to assist the careful guards in investigating this case. It is said that the careful guards will send their most talented advisory group. At that time, my brother, along with Lin Wu Nian and Yi Wei Ming, will assist in the investigation. White Mist received the documents and put them into the backpack. That's fine. We are always seen as low-ranking soldiers. The careful guards completely look down on us. If this time we surpass them in the case, it will enhance the prestige of our team. It will definitely make them lose face. Ancient Blue Jade continued to flip through the documents, although the careful guards have internal corruption. But do not underestimate their talents. Moreover, they have much more information than we do, meaning they have already solved half of this case, and they will absolutely not reveal information to us. Therefore, this case is not ordinary in difficulty. If not handled well, the recent achievement of solving a hundred cases in one day would be in vain. White Mist grasped the main point, meaning I will have the opportunity to go up to the third floor to see. Ancient Blue Jade said, "I will give you a week off. For the remaining two days, you can still operate freely. But after two days, you must follow me to the third floor." White Mist slightly smiled. It seems I still have time to go out for fun one more time before returning to instruct the careful guards. Afterwards, he said goodbye as it's getting late. I also should be going. Little Wu, remember to listen to the team leader's arrangements. He will take good care of you. Wait for me to complete the mission, and I will come back to visit you. Little White Wu, like an enthusiastic fan, nodded continuously. You also take care. After leaving the office of Ancient Blue Jade. White Mist suddenly pushed the door back open, blurted out in panic, "Not good, Captain. I almost forgot about this matter. Please, Captain, send a team to the forest earlier to bring back the other three people." Ancient Blue Jade is extremely helpless. Quickly, give me the number of the location area. The girl flirting with men, just because she wants to take his jobs payment. But Yi Weiming still extends his hand, saying, "You are the most beautiful person I've ever seen. So please settle the payment for me." Lu Lemon acts as if she doesn't hear the latter, even provocatively stroking his hand. 
Be my girlfriend, but Yi Weiming is completely immune. Continuing to extend his hand, asking for his payment. Fine, then, girlfriend, please settle the payment for your boyfriend. Upon hearing this, Lu Lemon is very angry. What's with this kid? She plans to put him into her fish pond. Turning it into an IOU unexpectedly, he just simply wanted the money. Thinking that Lu Lemon attacks again, she intentionally throws herself into Yi Weiming's arms. Both fall to the ground with Lu Lemon creating a seductive pose. She uses her finger to draw circles on his chest. The atmosphere becomes ambiguous Ah Ming. We are already boyfriend and girlfriend. How can you ask your girlfriend for money? But Yi Wei Ming is still calm and rational Oh is that so? Then let's break up boss please settle the payment for me. Lu Lemon slowly stands up. Beginning to doubt her own charm. Perhaps she should try another way alright Ah Ming. I feel my heart pounding when I see you. We must have been adversaries in a past life. Remember to come and visit me often in the future. But Yi Weiming's resistance grows stronger. I also offer companionship services. However there will be an additional charge. The phrase there will be an additional charge immediately destroys all of Lu Lemon's illusions. This kid is completely blinded by money. Initially he hurried to find her. Appearing highly skilled but eager to make a living. But when others realize his irreplaceability, he immediately demands the initially mentioned fee which was supposedly not necessary to be paid. Now he insists on getting paid right away in fact Yi Weiming is not simple at all. He is completely a pretentious actor. Lu Lemon is totally turned off. She realizes that she has misjudged him. She sits up straight and seriously says alright. Let's stop pretending now let's discuss the long term cooperation and future salary for me. Elsewhere White Mist just returned to the smuggling port when she heard many passers-by whispering. They praised Duong Chan and his associates as great heroes. Because they wanted to help the masked person and the old child of a deceased to buy more time in the tower. They fought with the tree demon. But in the end it was thanks to the masked person leading the army that Duong Chan was rescued note the eye of Thor lit up to the heavens my. Who would have thought you'd suddenly become so famous. But the content of the story sounds odd. Wonder who C Emperor had edit this story. White Mist is also genuinely impressed by Lu Lemon's ability to stage things. Note continues don't let the ugly girl deceive you next time. But saying that why did you tell the dwarf to send Duong Chan and the other two back to the interrogation team. Yet instructed to keep Tan Lam there. White Mist thought to herself although the interrogation team had confirmed what Kane said. The truth is Tan Lam is not a bad person. He is just too naive and completely unaware of what Duong Chan has done. In the future when going out of the tower she could bring him along. So he could redeem himself then his mouth would be wide open like a spotlight. Maybe the effectiveness of the skill would greatly increase the probability of signing the spirit. The eye of Thor sarcastically turns out you've noticed that point about him huh? Upon stepping into the store the girl. White mist saw Yip Wee Ming haggling that's all there is to it. It can't be any less this is my minimum condition. But Lu Lemon decisively refused this price is too high already. No way however Yip Wee Ming used the excuse that a bad mood would affect the effectiveness of the live stream. To press Lu Lemon to increase his salary. Note the eye of Thor lit up the successor of the organization of the ex-lover the dwarf. Seems obedient but is actually full of cunning schemes. Besides investigating and fighting outside the tower. He can do every job well. You should devote yourself to training him. In the tower he is more useful than your SSR card. White Mist was quite surprised a Lu Lemon. A Yip Wee Ming from such a small lower floor could train two talents like Lu Lemon and Yip Wee Ming. After a while of arguing Lu Lemon finally conceded alright. Well go with the amount you just mentioned. At that moment White Mist approached and asked how's the income from live streaming. Lu Lemon became more excited brother. We are rich now while in the meantime. Yip Wee Ming acted like a diehard fan of Lord Constantine. I am so happy to meet him in person. You are truly fantastic when outside the tower. But White Mist didn't smile at Yip Wee Ming's enthusiasm. He thought to himself about the office of ghosts and goblins. Rumor has it that the organization of the dwarf had been active before joining the investigation team. They take on every petty job a style suited to the mindset of those from the lower floors. But it's all pretense he's actually a good actor. Because this kid was sent for you to train. White Mist coldly said you are rejoicing too soon. My name is White Mist not Constantine. 
If I hear you call me Constantine again, I will fire you immediately. The smile on Yip Wee Ming's face vanished at once. Elder brother Jade voice told me that our new boss is kind. Easy to approach so why do I feel oppressed by this atmosphere? At this moment White Mist no longer looked at Yip Wee Ming. But spoke to Lu Lemon you've worked hard Lu Lemon. Keep it up with the live stream. Then White Mist talked about official business after returning to the tower. It takes 10 hours before one can go out again. Now it's been 3 hours since I returned. So there are 7 hours left prepare for the next live stream. Lu Lemon asked in return you just entered the tower and now you want to go out again. This is the first time I've seen someone so eager to leave the tower. White Mist coldly said this time going out is not for exploration but for survival. The earnings from the live stream outside the tower are considerable. It's hard to avoid drawing the attention of villains. We should still enhance our strength as a precaution. Demons are terrifying but humans are no less so. Then he asked Yip Wee Ming if the dwarf had talked to him about the third floor hadn't he? Yip Wee Ming was stunned the dwarf. Who is he the man who only calls superiors the dwarf? Which almost made Yip Wee Ming choke beside him. He thought during the live stream this guy didn't seem that great. But now this person gave him a very strong impression. Back then at the office of ghosts and goblins even the lady boss didn't dare call him dwarf to his face. At this moment Lu Lemon felt something was not right what's the matter with the third floor. Do you guys know each other White Mist replied you could say that. When I return to the tower later he will work with me. In two days I will go with him to the third floor to handle a case. Upon hearing they would go to the third floor Lu Lemon exclaimed what. You guys are going to the third floor fantastic. Then she grabbed a pen and paper and said wait a minute. I'll write a list here could you buy some things for me. White Mist wondered why can't you buy items from the upper floor yourself. Lu Lemon while writing replied of course it's impossible to buy. Even if sometimes you have the chance to work as a worker on the upper floors. You are only allowed to follow certain routes. And not allowed to enter entertainment stores. White Mist looked at the list of items Lu Lemon had written. A note popped up with wow. This gift list seems like the girl knows very well the preferences of the little fish on the lower floor. Now White Mist understood why despite the large population on the lower floors there was still rare access to entertainment needs and no factories. Because the workforce was all on the third floor. White Mist even guessed that perhaps the first people to enter the tower went directly to the highest floors. Holding some power that allowed them to dominate the lower floors. Because only when they discovered they had dictatorial power. Did they start to establish such a primitive social system. And now they have become accustomed to this system. Lu Lemon continued so. When we from the lower floors go up to the third floor. There are many paths we are not allowed to take. To go to relevant places you must have the corresponding travel permits. Additionally you have to wear a positioning device. That's it White Mist took the paper. Anything else Lu Lemon excitedly said are you really serious. Opportunities to go to the higher floors are rare. I will try to bring as much stuff as possible for you. Lu Lemon suddenly thought of the issue of bringing too many things afraid that you can't carry all. Can you manage it White Mist said as long as the weight is not over 20 kilograms it's fine. Then I will prepare additional gifts for your Lord Simp Lu Lemon said. The scene shifts to 4 a.m. White Mist wearing a Constantine outfit. Seeing no one around he went to observe the green stone. The eye of Polaris also indicated everything was normal. This time White Mist went to the blue area. Wanting to avoid Kane for a while to level up quietly. Meanwhile at the smuggling port. Yi Weiming and Lu Lemon also started to get busy. At this moment on the huge TV screen at the center of the port the words next part awaits live broadcast appeared. This is the ruin of a zoo from 700 years ago. Also part of the green area outside the tower. White mist was randomly teleported here. Note from the eye of Polaris master. It's not only inside the tower that human reality is confined like animals. Outside as well this was once a zoo. But now we can call it a human detention place. Current area exploration rate is zero number of remaining monsters 744 apocalypse map pieces of the area not yet obtained. My assessment I've already told you. You better turn back right now. White Mist wondered what kind of body his was. Difficulty 100 plus 1 huh last time the white area was equivalent to green. Now coming to the green area according to the notes it is perhaps equivalent to purple. 
There are still 744 monsters for someone who needs to accumulate experience points. This is really the hardest lair. But there's a saying where you land, you call home. Anyway, since I am here, might as well stay. He remembers his father once said that humans consider themselves more noble than animals. So they think they can freely eat them. To animals, we are like gods. They cannot comprehend our world. Everything called a god is imprisoned in a cage. Keeping gods in captivity will provide different resources based on their rarity. But there might come a day when the captivity falls upon us. Memory ends there at that time, White Mist didn't understand these words. But looking at the current situation, father's words were eerily prescient. Note from the eye of Polaris, what do you mean? White Mist responded, Don't you see that the tower by nature is no different from a zoo? The eye of Polaris, it indeed has similarities. Speaking of last time, you simulated your father's words, easily leading Elijah to commit suicide. Now again, predicting the possibility of humans being imprisoned. I don't know what to say, I feel like your father is really a mutant. In many aspects, sometimes I wonder is there a possibility that your father and Cain knew each other? Could it be that the world you lived in is actually 700 years before this apocalyptic era? But after two confrontations with Cain, White Mist rejected that speculation, not that he underestimated Kane. On the contrary, he found him an interesting opponent. It's just that Kane's level is still inferior to his father's. Furthermore, I noticed that you call this staff. Zoos are usually managed by humans overseeing animals. So here are animals managing humans. Moreover, zoo staff cannot possibly exceed 700 people. So the 744 fiends mentioned above are surely animals. But can animals become fiends? If they are really animals, then surely any speech is completely useless. Note from the eye of Polaris, haha. Your guess is not wrong here, your words are completely useless. White Mist immediately turned away to avoid the panda, thinking to himself that this place had no arrangements made by Kane. He wouldn't intentionally leave any clues. To find the pieces of this area, he must go inside to search for notes. Anyway, he came here just to gain experience points. Should NT be too curious and explore too much? This is a survival show outside the tower after all. But the audience will not endure it. Why has Constantine left? Hurry up, I want to see blood flow like a river. Quickly switching scenes, anxious screams are heard. Look over there. The fiends are heading towards Constantine. Hurry up and fight now outside the tower. White Mist watched the fiends intently. A note popped up level 2 fiends dong tam mutants. They can share their vision. Though with your strength, you can protect yourself. Facing three, I advise you to prepare your will just in case. If you didn't bring paper and pen, it's best to step back a bit. Seeing this, White Mist slowly stepped back a few steps. Although he had no negative emotions, so the fiends couldn't sense his presence. It couldn't be ruled out that if too close, they might detect him with other senses. Therefore, White Mist chose to stay far away from the three ostriches. However, this scene left numerous viewers baffled. Why don't the fiends attack him? Some believe Constantine to be an unparalleled hero, completely calm with no negative emotions. At this moment, in the upper floor where the live broadcast is happening, the organizers were also very surprised. I always thought only the dead could see the fiends without panic. This person has a rare calmness. It seems investing in him could yield unexpectedly large benefits. After that, this person ordered his subordinate when the live stream is over. You help me contact Lou Lemon. Well, discuss a long term collaboration. The scene returns to outside the tower. White Mist is resting against an electric car. He's thinking about where to explore next. He rummages and finds a zoo map from the electric car. But at that moment, a strong wind blows. White Mist hurriedly looks up to the sky. Suddenly, a vulture flies by. It feels like seeing a fighter jet fly past. Note Eye of Thundara Owner. A rare mechanized mutant, a level 3 fiend, prefers to live in packs scavenger animals that feed on carrion. That was the habit of birds 700 years ago. They are the new birds of the new era. Now they like to eat engine oil. At the same time, right before White Mist's eyes, the resting area of the spotted antelope suddenly spewed oil. White Mist smelled the strong scent of oil. This smell is definitely engine oil. There's no doubt that usually. Zoos in the sweltering summer would spray water on the ground to cool the animals. Unexpectedly, now they are spraying engine oil. At the same time, the ground suddenly exploded with loud noises. Ahead, a vast area was engulfed in thick smoke, like thousands of horses galloping furiously. 
In front of white mist was a herd of spotted antelopes that had mutated into fiends. Note eye of Thundara owner these are all rare level 3 mutated fiends. With mechanized bodies I think you've heard the sound of engines inside the antelopes. Seen the intricate circuitry on their horns. But they are not machines created by someone. They are still truly living creatures. Now white mist understands what mechanization is. Different from human diseases. These animals seem to have become mechanized hybrids of machinery and life. It seems like the green zone is more distorted and strange than the white zone. There's some mysterious power mutating human genes outside the tower. Previously I always thought the cause was radiation-induced gene mutation. But now it seems the world outside the tower is more complicated than imagined. If the spectrum I is correct, that means the term evil mechanization has a more complex meaning than I thought. This is the first time I've seen evil mechanization. So information about mechanization could very well be in this area. Everything I've found about evil at the 9 o'clock hospital has been completely overturned. The doctors certainly didn't think that evil doesn't just limit itself to gene mutation. Finding information inside might help me understand the nature of evil better. Note Spectrum Eye Owner. It seems like you can hardly control your strong desire to explore. Just act according to your feelings. White Mist took a deep breath to remind himself that he was just there to gain experience points and power up. The Spectrum Eye agrees with that viewpoint. The Spectrum Eye just needs a safe hiding place. In theory you could accumulate experience points over a long period without negative emotions. That's a very strong gift indeed. White Mist walked for about 20 minutes. Finally saw the cable car system. So now the goal is to find a safe hiding place. He intently looked at the cable car. Note Spectrum Eye even though it's a device from 700 years ago. But thanks to the mysterious power of the world outside the tower its quality is unaffected. However you can't climb any higher with it. To curb the desire to explore. White Mist chose to hide inside the cable car. He thought to himself that this way was also good. Just sit and concentrate on accumulating experience points. At least he must surpass his own survival record. Level up to 2 and feel the mystical sensation of leveling up that King Vu spoke of. Then White Mist took out the bracelet with a camera and stuffed it straight into the spatial backpack without saying anything. To avoid doing a live stream that's too boring during this time. I ask for permission to disconnect the stream before the audience. Meanwhile at the smuggling port seeing the live stream image. The audience kept cursing just seeing the evil mechanization and you cut the stream. Feeling deceived Yi Weiming was also very worried. No matter how good his live streaming skills are he didn't know how to handle it. Lu Changza and He Kong said he must have his own thoughts. Let's observe first after three hours. Lu Changza finally panicked after three hours why hasn't he started broadcasting yet? The audience is making a racket hurry up and start the broadcast. At this moment Yi Weiming turned his head to look at the screen. Seeing that white mist had started broadcasting again ma'am. He's continuing the live stream now. Outside the tower white mist looked at the dawn sky. Spectrum I couldn't help but burst out laughing haha. This luck should I say you are extremely lucky or what kind of misfortune is this? Spectrum I truly unfortunate. You again drew the most counteractive negative attribute of your desired warfare. If not in combat state. Every 12 minutes you will receive a random negative attribute. White Mist also found it unbelievable that when the dwarf had more than 100 negative attributes he didn't draw the desired warfare. How come it's my turn and I hit it right away? Spectrum I continued to mock haha. Is this the hand of God or what? Or is it super luck after two risks? According to the description of the desired warfare. If not pursued by evil spirits. Or fighting with them. Then the intervals of hindrance every 4 hours will be reduced to every 12 minutes. Meaning every 12 minutes you must attract the attention of an evil spirit. Thinking so white mist clenched his fists tightly. This is truly a hellish style of play. Not being in combat state. Not being chased by malevolent spirits is an unbearable situation. This is not your fault it's heaven forcing you to explore. The more difficult it is the more excited white mist becomes. He slowly pushed open the cable car cabin door. This feeling is like the first time a person blocked is sent out of the tower. The more he sees the harder it is to contain the desire to explore. He looked towards the northern grassland area. Note on Spectrum I when going through security. 
The detector kept beeping. The security lady told me to take everything out for inspection. After the inspection, it kept beeping, and then she asked me what my job was. I said I am a grass eating animal at Box Suyen Zoo. She said, Damn, no wonder it detected metal. Good morning, you useless piece of iron. Take this road. The malevolent spirits you meet will not attack proactively. They crave lubricating oil but not blood. After reading the note, White Mist pondered. If he goes north over the iron fence, he will reach the survival area of the herbivorous animals. This path is relatively safe. He does not feel fear. They will also not attack you. But the note does not mention whether this area has useful information or not. Thinking this, his gaze shifted to the west. Following this road will lead to the outskirts of the animal area. It is a park that includes an amusement area and a haunted house. The distortion there is even greater than at the zoo. Your current strength is too immature to challenge that place. Or you could try, who knows, maybe this time if you die, you can start over again. White Mist feels this direction is too dangerous. Perhaps the answer is wrong, an area more distorted than the zoo must be the true purple zone. His gaze once again focused on the eastern rest station. The note said the southern iron fence had a hole, allowing the dim witted iron rhinos to run out. They occupy half of the rest stations along the way. If behind you is scrap iron, then ahead are the dim witted iron dumb but very strong. You cannot equate mechanization with mechanization. Their energy reactors can absorb both oil and flesh. After reading the three directions, white mist slowly stood up. He also felt very vague about the notes provided. Ultimately, one must still assess for themselves. However, among the four directions just now, there are still some clues worth exploring. Now he must choose the most effective direction. No longer hesitating, White Mist went straight towards the east. The note mentions that this is a place with many human rest stations. So the textual information may not be hidden in the grasslands but in these strongholds. Not long after he arrived at an observation tower. This is a 22 meter high observation tower, with a restroom in the middle for tourists, and a pair of binoculars at the top. White Mist looked up. The note popped up, got it, got it, got it. Having decided to come to this eastern observation tower, I have both good news and bad news to tell you. The good news is that the binoculars inside are a telescope charm that can only be used outside the tower. The bad news is that you cannot take it with you. At the same time, as a talent of conscience, I would like to add another piece of bad news that there is a small rhinoceros sleeping inside the observation tower. After reading the note, White Mist pressed his face against the glass. Sleeping is an advantageous situation already. However, he now has seven more minutes until it's time for the next negative attribute. At the very least, he must check out the effects of that telescope. Therefore, he pushed the door and entered, with the thought that having no negative emotions would not be detected. At this moment, the evil beast sleeping is a young mechanized rhinoceros. A level 3 evil beast, though thick skinned, is still a rare mutation. It's dreaming of frolicking happily across the grasslands. Ahead is a plump female cow, winking at it like humans like dolls. Rhinoceroses also like other species. The eye of Apollo is really good when you're an educated person. A cultured person would not interrupt anyone's dream of spring. White Mist took two minutes to sneak past this rhinoceros. When preparing to move on, he accidentally stepped on an advertising flyer. White Mist glanced at what the heck is this? The note says, Don't, 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 it's just a circus advertisement. Despite the vast world, but as long as you continuously go outside the tower, then you will encounter this circus. White Mist indifferently picked up the old flyer. It seems this circus is from another region. Also, don't know how long the program has been advertising for what's next. Around also doesn't have anything useful. Never mind, let's go up and see. He began to climb the stairs. A sentence on the wall piqued White Mist's curiosity. The note pops up just in time, be aware. This sentence comes from the year 2022. White Mist suddenly understood. From 2024 onwards, it is the era when the tower started. Meaning it's the most chaotic period in human history. However, a few years before that, many strange phenomena occurred. In 2022, the animals in the zoo became mechanized. Their food was no longer feed but various types of oil. But strangely, according to the hospital's nine o'clock report, Many evil beasts appeared in the suburbs. But the people in the city still had leisure time to visit the zoo. Actually, the gray wolf here looks like the iron wolf in the superhero series Brave Rangers. No boy could resist this temptation. 
After reading the note, White Mist also secretly agreed in his heart. He quickly went up to the upper floor. The Eye of Apollo reminds that in four more minutes the next negative attribute will appear. Must make the most of the time the Eye of Apollo compared to me. The telescope of gaps is more profound and sincere. It only gives you a hint about the opponent's weakness. White Mist nodded that's it the content of the Eye of Apollo is simple and clear but can provide a lot of information. Meanwhile this pair of glasses only provides a single piece of information which is the weakness. Alright let's see what interesting things it can detect. Through the telescope White Mist discovered the next stop is one. 500 meters away there indeed is a house. A public restroom for workers. Note mechanical creatures do not need to use the restroom. So the restroom here is no longer a restroom but has become another fueling station. Inside it contains a useless sequence 799 with many frequency bands. The telescope only needs to kill that evil beast. You will have 45 chances to acquire this talent. Its weakness is fear of fire how interesting. The effect of the eye of Apollo and the telescope resonate with each other. But the petroleum creatures you mentioned that fear fire are probably these creatures. Although they have been turned into mechanical bodies through evil transformation. They still retain the instincts of animals or creatures. Then white mist twisted into the telescope but realized he couldn't take it with him. Such a useful object but it's a pity it can only be used once. This mocking eye of Apollo. You haven't suddenly fallen in love with it have you? Oh fickle white mist he steps back a few steps. The distance from here to the public restroom is about 1. 500 meters with the power of half-life level 1-9 segments. He can run there in 3 minutes and fight the fire-fearing evil beast. This thunder eye you're also a bit afraid of you're consoling me a bit right. Wait you say to run at this time. White mist jumps over the railing down to the lower floor. Thunder eye wonders what are you planning to do. I was wrong I know you love me. Come back to save me I don't want to die yet. The loud thud upon landing awakens the evil beast. Even though its normal sensing abilities are reduced. Seeing white mist land safely. Thunder Eye mockingly says level 1-9 segments so jumping down is fine. But next time give me a heads up will you. At this moment a mechanical rhinoceros charges fiercely. But only crashes into the glass shattering it. Thunder Eye oh my god your action just now pissed off a level 3 evil beast. Run but white mist is very calm. Don't forget the structures outside the tower are very hard to destroy. Just like the last time at the 9 o'clock hospital building. Even if it stomps and breaks the lock it's not easy to infiltrate. I also have enough time to escape. But the jump also simultaneously cancels my non-combat status. 12 minutes once receiving negative attributes also starts counting from the beginning again. Now I must hurry to the next place. Quickly after 3 minutes White Mist arrives at the public restroom he just saw through the telescope. At this moment he's hiding in a corner. Covertly observing the evil beast hiding in the restroom. The level 4 mutant evil beast erodes and distorts mechanical waves. Has a rare mechanical transformation. But now it looks no different from a steel sea dragon. It likes oil but is afraid of fire. White Mist thinks to himself so that's how it is. 799 is the corresponding wave distortion the mechanic evil beast's distortion is mechanical wave. Thunder I thought you were interested in this sequence of numbers. But White Mist asks do you remember its description in the talent sequence chart. When released it can cause interference without destroying most mechanical devices. Thunder I then what? White Mist says succinctly cameras can't film it. Listening devices can't hear it. All mechanical devices have the potential to malfunction. So this talent is almost useless outside the tower. But very useful when I enter the tower as Constantine. Even on the third floor I can avoid many cameras thanks to it. However taking it down now is also a bit troublesome. Although I know it's afraid of fire the oil storage area is near where it's hiding. Approaching it to ignite the oil would mean with my level 3 speed I couldn't escape at such a close distance. So how to burn it but still escape safely. Thunder Eye suggests why must you ignite it there. These words awaken white mist. That's right it's currently an oil depot. Thinking this white mist turns and heads towards the animal dining area. This is the ruins of a zoo from 700 years ago. And all the animals inside have been mechanized. White mist decides to search for clues in the animal dining area. At this moment a note from Thunder Eye appears if I were you. I would quietly leave this place. Not far ahead there's a big cat dreaming. 
Indeed, in front of him is a feline creature sleeping soundly. From the dense brown fur, one could tell it's a mechanized lion. White mist slowly approaches, notes continuously appearing a Mons dream mount. Riding a mechanized lion on the streets. Only a Gundam pilot could be on par with you. Level 5 Evil Beast Level 5 Mutant Evil Beast. A rare mechanized mutation. The metal nemesis with paralyzing roars. This mechanized lion is enveloped by a type of mysterious alloy. But not entirely covering the mechanics. A part of its body still retains the form of a living creature. In fact since childhood White Mist has always envied Tai Chi for being able to sit on the shoulders of mechanized dinosaurs. Roaming everywhere while at that time. On the huge TV screen in the tower. Every audience member was astonished. He is too reckless as he also made of iron like them. How dare he approach that evil beast. Even Yi Wei Ming the person in charge of dubbing is trembling Miss Boss. What is he doing there beside? Lu Changza is also confused biting her lip saying just trust him. Meanwhile White Mist has come next to the mechanized lion and knelt down. He reaches his hand towards the lion's brown fur. Thunder Eye asks my friend aren't you afraid it will swallow you in an instant. White Mist silently thinks I have experimented before. Finding that the sensing ability of the evil beast has a significant problem. They only sense negative emotions. But have lost the ability to sense normally. Therefore the ring from Dandelion can play an unexpected role. Although it is also very risky it is still worth a try. At this moment the mechanized lion is dreaming a beautiful dream. 700 years ago it was still a lion king on the savannah. Every day watching the beautiful lionesses in the pride. Imagining during the mating season. They would actively come to seduce it. And every day it would be exhausted dozens of times by those lionesses. But now they are no more. It again longs for the simple and high-speed life of the past. But the next second the lion's mind starts to become chaotic. The lionesses in the dream start to transform. Suddenly turning into a strange man with a smiling mask. Right at that moment the 700-year memory abruptly ends. The mechanized lion opens its eyes followed by earth-shaking roars. White mist only feels his body suddenly go numb. Controlled by a terrifying sonic wave. Note the Thunder Eyes opponent uses paralysis. Our side is paralyzed for 10 seconds. Congratulations you've successfully provoked a level 5 evil beast. To break out of its non-combat state. At this moment in the eyes of the lion white mist is a beautiful lioness. Licking all over its body. The Thunder Eye is also back in action. I admit you took a gamble. But it has paid off now the mechanized lion entirely sees you as a female. Trying to show itself off to win you over. You just need to tie a ring to the brown fur of the mechanized lion. It immediately knocks white mist down to the ground. Even regards you as a mate and performs certain actions. Gently white mist steps back a few steps. Orders the mechanized lion to kneel down. And it obeys immediately. Following that white mist directly mounts its back. However throughout the process. The mechanized lion cooperates very well. Meanwhile on the giant screen in the tower everything that is happening is being broadcasted live. Leaving countless viewers completely stunned. Damn Constantine is really riding the evil beast wildly outside the tower. Or is this a machine left behind by some civilization outside the tower? Even Lu Changza secretly thinks in his heart that this guy is really handsome. At this moment in the heart of Deep V Min's company maximizing profit as the first principle of action is always the goal. But now dubbing is no longer possible. And even less so for live commerce. It seems necessary to find a new way to turn traffic into revenue. The shot returns to White Mist. Who is riding the mechanized lion swiftly towards the public restroom. With a terrifyingly high speed. Note Thunder Eyes Master. Now I just want to say that the sports car's Lamborghini. Ferrari of the past are too weak. With this mechanized lion I am sure this entire expedition. Whoever wants to provoke white mist secretly agrees. Indeed a level 5 ferocious beast is already top TA in the green zone. Level 6 is a crazy level like Elijah. However there is still an unstable factor now. This lion is overly excited. If I remove the ring now I don't know if it can instantly turn 180 degrees. And bite me to death but in the current situation. White Mist doesn't think further. The lion in the zoo like an experienced person. Just needs a pat on the back to know what to do. This lion is the same just needs a signal and it happily dashes off. 
Thunder Eyes Master says don't worry unnecessarily. For now just enjoy the moment. After all there will soon be a new talent sequence. The next moment a mechanized python with a look like an ugly sea dragon suddenly rushes forward with its mouth wide open. However the reaction of the mechanized lion is even faster. Just one leap back is enough to avoid the attack. Then it turns around and uses its sharp iron claws to grab the python's neck. And slams it down to the ground at that moment. The mechanized python takes advantage of its huge body to tightly coil around the mechanized lion. However the battle does not last long. Only to see the mechanized lion look up and roar. Electricity running along the roar spreading around. Before the strong paralyzing electric current. The mechanized python immediately loosens its grip. Not only the python but white mist on the back of the lion almost falls off. Clearly this was an indiscriminate paralyzing wave. Next the mechanized lion bites through the python's neck. And rips out a glowing purple energy core from inside its body. White Mist immediately recognizes that it is the python's gallbladder. But even the gallbladder has been mechanized. The mechanized lion without thinking. Crushes the gallbladder with its teeth and swallows it into its stomach. Note Thunder Eye says mechanized creatures are hard to kill. Unless the energy core is destroyed. But as you see the energy core of the crispy fried chicken is. Fortunately even in death it still gives you a series of useless noise frequency band numbers. This makes White Mist even more certain. Just like when killing Elijah. Because Elijah's suicide means death at the hands of the ferocious beast. Python dies at the hands of the mechanized lion. Also means death by the ferocious beast. But the end result is still that I received the sequence of numbers. This shows that the rules outside the tower seem to not only encourage the extermination of evil beings by force. Killing evil beings through others. Or deceiving evil beings is also considered a valid extermination. The 12 minute countdown starts over from the beginning. White Mist steps down from the back of the large and sturdy lion. Deciding to check inside this restroom. This is a public restroom that still retains characteristics from 700 years ago. But now it has become an oil storage. White Mist steps inside to check. Inside there is no longer any foul odor. The entire zoo seems to have undergone a huge transformation. Not just the creatures but also the environment. The rules of the world outside the tower have changed. Certainly not as simple as he thought. He walks past the toilet stalls. Suddenly discovering some strange writing on the wall I told you that dog had a problem. But why don't they listen to me? They should have dealt with it sooner before it came back. It's come back for revenge on us. Incoherent sentences. Even with the good reasoning ability of white mist the meaning could not be deduced. But right then a worried growl. Even somewhat fearful of the mechanical lion was heard from outside. White Mist hurried outside and that was when he noticed the ground trembling slightly. As if an extremely large creature was approaching slowly. All around the zoo various mechanical evil beings simultaneously ran outside. As if warning of something extremely dangerous getting closer. Quickly a creature the size of a super battleship appeared before their eyes. Its head still had a bit of flesh but its body was only skeletal and the bones were covered with machine guns. Many mechanical evil beings who couldn't escape in time were blown to pieces on the spot. At this moment, the organizers inside the tower were watching the live stream stunned. What is this what kind of monster is this? And the audience at the foot of the TV wall. Their emotions were getting higher and higher. Satisfying the extreme needs of the senses. Level 7 evil being level 7 mutant evil being. A rare mutation mechanization. Infinite fuel perfect giant mutation. Overloaded operation thermal armament. As you see this as a dog. You could even recognize it as a husky from its not so bright eyes. But in this area it is the undefeated lord. He is also the one carrying the apocalypse shard. To take this shard you need to receive its approval. White Mist believes that the strength of this evil being is above his two disciples but below Hongan. The Eye of Thoris reminded that previously even without a gigantic mechanism Dandelion also had a similar stage 2 form. Its strength multiple times more than the previous stage. So a perfect evil being with three mechanisms is surely even stronger than Dandelion. White Mist knows with his current strength he cannot confront it. But the note from the Eye of Thoris just mentioned this dog is the one carrying the Apocalypse Shard. This means each shard has its own keeper. Thus at the 9 o'clock hospital and the strange forest there are also keepers of the shards. 
The keeper at the nine o'clock hospital is definitely Hong En, but previously it was suggested that the shards had been transferred. In the forest as well, perhaps this is related to Kane. But to find the shards of the two areas before, you need to use the guiding roulette to find Kane. But before increasing his power, he doesn't want to come into contact with him again. It is a giant husky as big as a mountain. Its body covered with machine guns seemingly patrolling its territory. White Mist hides and observes he knows the husky is not a stray dog. This dog definitely has an owner. And that owner is surely closely related to the zoo. From the information on the wall it can be seen that the zoo staff once wanted to deal with this dog. But the result was that it came back for revenge. Why would a dog take revenge on humans? It seems that behind this zoo there is a mysterious story yet to be known. But intuition tells him that something is not right. Up to now he has not seen any evil being that is human. All are animal evil beings. Meanwhile Cain in the linked areas before always left stories about the disciples. Perhaps each area the keeper of the shard and the very area itself all have their own story. But the current information only guides me to obtain the shard by receiving approval from the keeper. Not by destroying the keeper. After the husky dog left for seven minutes. The mechanical lion next to white mist raised its head high again. Standing upright as if the creature that had just cowered and trembled was a different cat not it. But for the animals here. Fearing that giant hunting dog isn't a thing of shame. After that white mist mounted the back of the lion again. But when he pointed in the direction of the dog. The mechanical lion clearly resisted. Clearly the affection from the ring wasn't strong enough for it to risk its life for him. White mist inwardly sighed in regret. He had intended to closely observe that hunting dog. Notes popped up in the past 700 years. The kitten knew one thing that dog must absolutely not be provoked. It is the lord of this entire zoo area. So don't be sad anymore actually. You still have the chance to observe other evil beings firsthand. At the place where the giant footprint was there is a mechanical scrapyard. Hurry and see perhaps there will be unexpected findings. Seven minutes later White Mist rode the mechanical lion to the scrapyard near the footprint. But the mechanical lion still roared steadily. White Mist soothed it stay calm. Don't move forward hide and watch the reaction of the mechanical lion. White Mist realized for sure that there are still evil beings living nearby. Quickly a mechanical chimpanzee its body entirely clad in metal armor appeared before them. It seemed to be carrying parts of bodies that were broken. However this mechanical chimpanzee played the role of a rescuer. It even grew several mechanical arms from its back. The next scene left White Mist astonished. The mechanical chimpanzee was actually repairing the damaged evil beings. It swiftly reassembled the body of an antelope. It was like welding the shattered body parts together. Finally it inserted the energy core it held into the inside. White Mist now understood that as long as the energy core remained. The mechanical beasts even when completely shattered could be reassembled and function again. But the strangeness didn't stop there. The mechanical chimpanzee played the role of a rescuer. It began to look at the antelope with a chaotic gaze. Then started stroking from behind. Occasionally emitting stimulating growls. The next scene was extremely hard to watch. Leaving white mist very dumbfounded. He had not expected that when becoming beasts. The animals would still retain those instincts. Even more so across species and it seemed that the antelope with horns was a male wasn't it. At that moment the eye of Thor reminded that there were 30 seconds left until the desired negative effect of the war. Having no other choice White Mist had to interrupt their actions. He commanded the mechanical lion that's enough. The mechanical lion suddenly charged in from outside with a paralyzing roar. Causing the chimpanzee and antelope to short circuit. Following that with an overwhelming posture the mechanical lion quickly tore the two beasts into pieces. A level 5 beast easily destroyed level 3 beasts. But White Mist now had new doubts. Through this observation, he could confirm that mechanized evil beings and genetically mutated evil beings are two completely different types of mutations. So could he rightly suspect that the ancient apocalypse was actually caused by two different forces? The moment after White Mist leveled up to level 2 section 3. The values of five different colored attributes appeared before his eyes. The eye of Thor said now tell me quickly. Which secondary attribute do you want to enhance? White Mist was very surprised with two choices. Half-Life Force had reached level 2 section 3. 
Or does each different colored area have its own time coefficient? Is 4 hours in the blue area equivalent to 8 hours in the white area? Before when I moved from the white to the blue area at the hospital for 9 hours. The time coefficient of increasing half life force did not change. So it means only when choosing to enter the blue area through the tower gate. Does the time coefficient change? It can be inferred that the coefficients in the purple and red areas later will be even higher. However, for now, it's best not to come into contact with those areas too soon. Regarding the two skill points from the level jump, with the eye of Thor and a physique nearly unaffected by evil beings, the sensing ability doesn't need to be enhanced. Facing a strong enemy, even if one increases max health, they would still be quickly killed. The ability to heal could help recover quickly from non fatal wounds. And strength is a necessary skill. The Eye of Thor was quite surprised you really chose those two attributes. It seems like you are preparing to pursue the warrior's playstyle. Oh, I forgot there's one more thing to tell you. Eight hours in the tower have passed, your second obstructing attribute has appeared. The obstructing parasitic grudge can sense the hatred of an entity through the five senses. Even if it is a person pure of heart. Quickly, the world in the eyes of White Mist was completely distorted. The mechanical lion in front suddenly turned into an ocean of grudge energy. As if it gathered all the hatred of the entire zoo. It was like finding a loophole to escape through. They were fervently trying to invade White Mist's brain. Unexpectedly that little kitten turned out to be like this. It seems that Black Dance is actually a huge aggregation of grudge energy. If it were an ordinary person who received this negative attribute. They would have probably been paralyzed with fear but White Mist doesn't have any negative emotions. Only feeling that many things are invading his brain. Initially he thought that because this area has no cane he couldn't read the evil being's memories. But now the problem has been solved. Usually when encountering parasitic grudges one would quickly activate the return disc. But White Mist doesn't need it he just feels everything is very strange. The mood of humans and the torment of evil finally meet. The noise of them only helps White Mist to realize the truth about this zoo. Two hours later White Mist found many text documents from the checkpoints. Although they were fragmented he was still able to piece together a part of the story from 700 years ago. The secret that the giant dog was searching for. With the support of the parasitic grudge. White Mist could even more feel the despair and hatred of the people who wrote these lines. He told the mechanical lion to let him see the documents. If there's danger remember to call immediately then White Mist opened a diary from 700 years ago. The grudges within it directly invaded his brain. The surroundings changed. A woman pointing in front of him. Shouted how many times already every time we date you always make me wait. Quickly the main character in the memory ran over. He is Lao Tiu Bin the caretaker and veterinarian of the zoo. Sorry Heen Luang today I discovered that the Sika deer is pregnant so I had to change its nutritional diet and conduct a comprehensive health check for it. It's just because of that I was late. Heen Luang immediately gets angry Lao Tiu Bin. You're late for our date because of a zebra. Making me wait like this ill make you regret it. Come on you should quit the job as an animal caretaker. The pay is low and you even volunteer as a veterinarian. Do you want to do charity work the scene shifts to the second half. One day Heen Luang suddenly comes to Lao Tiu Bin Mr. Tiu Bin. Is there a job opening at the zoo? My brother and I are both looking for work. Can you help us out? Lao Tiu Bin pats her head rest assured. I will take care of this. Although the future is uncertain the number of people wanting to stay at the zoo is decreasing. In the condition of severe staff shortage. Plus his assurance. The siblings were hired. One is in charge of administration. The other is in charge of the gate at the end of the first memory segment. Lao Tiu Bin is assisting a zebra giving birth. He often names the animals in the zoo. This baby zebra is named Hopper. Lao Tiu Bin smiles brightly mother and child are safe. Sa Lan is truly a wonderful mother. Quickly this record ends. Then Bok Vu flips through a few more pages. He is very surprised why does it end. What about the dog since the keeper of the peace is a dog. Why don't I see that dog in this file? Currently there are still many unclear things about the past of the zoo. Because the diary has no clues. So let's move on to the second document the work log. Bok Vu opens the work log the scene appears to be the zoo's accounting room. Lao Tiu Bin followed by Heen Luang's younger brother rushes in. Heen Luang you must properly discipline your younger brother. 
Do you know today he intended to secretly sell the zoo's young animals to the black market? If I hadn't discovered it early, those little ones would have fallen into the hands of the underground market by now. But the younger brother doesn't feel remorseful at all. He even looks at the guy with disdain why do we need to do that? It's just selling a few animals that's all. The words make Lao to you bin even angrier what are you saying? You son of a bitch the younger brother is still very indignant I said nothing wrong. Now calamity is rampant the whole world falls into an apocalypse. Everyone is trying to get into the tower. Who will care about the disappearance of two animals? Do you know I have made contact with an official inside the tower? Just with this amount of money he can get one person into the tower. An unlimited quantity of things like deer velvet. Rhino horns tiger teeth leopard skin. This place is a treasure trove just need to sell at a good price and all of us can enter the tower. Or don't you want my sister to have a good life in the tower? Hearing those words Lao Tiu Bin suddenly falls silent. He lets go of his younger brother's hand I also want Heen Luang to enter the tower to take refuge. But this younger brother is so self-satisfied. Forget to tell you all that I do. My sister knows it all not just that. Even the tycoon in the tower was contacted by my sister. So don't expect my sister will punish me. You just worry about yourself Lao Tiu Bin kindly let the brothers work in the zoo. But they only think of selling animals to the black market. Although Lao Tiu Bin firmly opposes. Most people in the zoo are deceived by the brothers. One day the younger brother Heen Luang talks to two other employees have you heard. There was once another tower that existed. But later disappeared for some reason. One of them also knows a little bit that's right. It is said that the previous tower was related to the apocalypse of this world. I only know that those above have erased all information related to the old tower. And have determined the subsequent tower to be humanity's means of survival. Hearing this the elderly gentleman beside began to worry if it's true. The things you two brothers told me before need to be reconsidered. The younger brother says the budget sent down from above is getting less and less. Not enough to pay the wages anymore moreover. The daily cost of feeding the animals is also causing a headache for the finance department. Better to sell them to the officials in the tower. In exchange for tower entry tickets for everyone. But Lao Tiu Bin is stubborn. He has now quarreled with Heen Luang. All day he runs around the park on an old bike. Whatever he discovers he reports to the police immediately. That young man then says do it now. If it doesn't work then let it be. Just tie up Lao Tiu Bin already. So he won't disrupt us anymore. Otherwise well be dragged down by him. And perish together in this apocalyptic era. I still want to live a few more years you know. Meanwhile Lao Tiu Bin is still enthusiastically welcoming each animal. Completely unaware of what's happening behind his back. Those who were once kindly treated are about to make a move against him. The content of the second diary ends here. But Bok Vu still sees no sign of the dog in this document. In the zoo animals are still animals. But humans are no longer humans. Lao Tiu Bin goes to great lengths to protect the animals. But compared to the ambitions of everyone in the zoo. His resistance is pathetic and hopeless. But my intuition tells me that Lao Tiu Bin is the owner of the monster dog. But what role does this dog play in the story? Bok Vu continues to flip to the next diary. But the content that starts is a pitch dark room. It turns out Lao Tiu Bin has been locked up like an animal. Every day someone still brings food. But they only shove the food through a hole at the bottom of the door. Like feeding a dog in this pitch dark room. An unpleasant stench rises due to Lao Tiu Bin's excrement not being cleaned up. Heen Luang the younger brother is extremely disgusted sister. Let's go it's too smelly here can't stand another minute here. Heen Luang is a bit troubled Tiu Bin. Recently the orders for animals from the tower have been increasing. In this way in no more than three months. We will have enough money to buy tickets to enter the tower. At that time we will enter the tower. And live peacefully for the rest of our lives. But Lao Tiu Bin kicked away the food tray. Roaring angrily who wants to survive with you. The animals in the zoo are national assets. You sell them illegally. The state will not forgive you. Someone will surely stand up to stop you. The law will punish you. Lao Tiu Bin kindly let the brothers work here. But they locked him in a dark storage without light. Every day he can only be with his own excrement. But in return the treatment becomes even more brutal. The younger brother Heen Luang kicked the iron door frantically telling Lao Tiu Bin. Those above are now all jostling to get into the tower. 
Now no one cares about us anymore. The one who can't see the times is you. At this moment Heen Luang holds back his brother. Then says to Lao Tiyu Bin it seems like today you need a good rest. Next time I am free I will visit you. After the brothers left Lao Tiyu Bin collapsed on the ground. Filled with regret for ever letting them in. At this moment old Lu came to persuade him. Outside now just as Li and Yi said. The monsters on the outskirts are becoming more numerous. The city has also started to see strikes. No one cares about the zoo anymore. At this point if there is a chance to survive you must seize it. Don't miss it even if not for yourself. Then for the family now besides you. Everyone else is following the two brothers to work right. Lao Tiyu Bin's voice was very weak but I understand everything you said. But what's right and what's wrong? Old Lu still has to distinguish clearly right. We must live with a clear conscience. Old Lu felt a bit helpless you know. The top has cut the budget for a week already. These animals are about to lack food. They're about to die anyway they'll die. Before dying making a bit of money to help us survive what's bad about that. To you Bin you protect these animals. But do they even recognize you? Lao Tiyu Bin's whole body tensed up. Pleading with old Lu please let me out. I want to go see Sa Lan and the other animals so much. I am really worried about Hopper he's still young. Old Lu who had worked with him for many years bowed his head it's not possible. I cannot let you out. According to white service Lao Tiyu Bin had to endure such inhuman torture while alive. Although some people still have a bit of conscience. In the end they still cannot resist human greed. So he continued to turn to the next diary. This is an event that happened two months after Lao Tiyu Bin was imprisoned. The animals in the zoo also gradually transformed. The first half of that panda has become mechanized. Perhaps because of the lack of food for too long. As well as not seeing familiar people. Their mood gradually became uneasy. But accumulating to a certain extent. Animals transform into evil creatures sooner than humans. Seeing them angrily banging the iron bars. The caretakers panicked and ran away quickly. The alarm is raised we can't stay here anymore. Run quickly but Li Yi remains very calm. Even using his phone to take a few pictures my god. Are you guys so scared calm down. Did you guys notice that those iron bars are also changing like those beasts? No matter how hard they ram and roar those iron bars still don't move at all. Not only that think about it. If these transformed animals could be displayed safely. There will certainly be many people willing to buy. Hearing this the zookeepers feel that this plan is feasible. Rare goods are precious certainly the officials in the tower will also be interested. One person waves his hand and then leaves that would be good. Just do as brother Lee says I guarantee you guys will make a fortune. By then the ticket to the tower won't be a problem. Hey old Lu in the past two months has that guy caused any more trouble? Old Lu bewildered which guy? Li Nhui glanced at him who else but Lao Tiyu Bin. Lao Tiyu Bin old Lu sighed that storage is not ventilated. You don't allow us to go in to clean. Now inside is like a bacterial breeding environment. Tiyu Bin can't endure much longer. Li Nhui looked at him indifferently all right then. As long as he is still alive that's fine if not. Mix antibiotics into his meals. Boost his immunity. My sister said at all costs keep him alive. Meanwhile Lao Tiyu Bin's body has begun to rot. His skin is covered with disgusting blisters. Flies are even sucking blood from his fingers. Now he is like a piece of cheese left out in the rainy season sun for a whole week. This body has reached its limit he knows he is about to die in here. But he still does not want to die so quickly. Although he is at death's door he still wants to visit the animals he loves one last time. In his dying breath he begins to hallucinate. Seeing himself appear on the prairie. The two animals he once cared for. Two lions appear before him. He still remembers the male lion named Fire Flame. 